You want to hear a sad story? I heard this today. It's how sad. It's a little depressing. So, in the 60s, uh, this uh, this guy became the first person to ever circumnavigate the globe in a rowboat, not a rowboat, a, a, a sailboat solo. Mm-hmm. And um, he made a pit stop in Australia. He, he left England, went all the way down to uh, Africa, um, past Australia, around Cape Horn of South uh, um, America, and then back up. Right? It's by himself. And Nobody thought it was going to be a big deal, but the public really clung on to it. It became a big news story. And uh, the newspaper that had paid him a very small amount, actually, for his story did bonkers sales because they had the guy's story that they could print and publish. So they were like, we got to get some more of this. We've made a ton of money off this guy. It didn't cost us anything. Let's sponsor our, a new race around the, around the globe. Um, but this time, no stops. That'll be the new thing. And... Will we'll, like whoever gets the best time gets seventy thousand dollars in adjusted monies, and mm-hmm. uh, money. So it brought out the best in the world, like a dozen of the best um, solo fucking uh, sailors in the world. They had these wild accomplishments that they had all achieved in various um, fields of, of sailor sailing. Uh, one of them had been in the navy for many years. Just all sorts of stuff, except for one guy. This guy needed the money. Okay, this guy was an, an Englishman who uh, he had a business selling navigational gear for boats. It was failing. And the loan that he had taken out to start his business that fed his family was being called upon by by the man who'd given it to him. And he's in this real pinch where he can't pay that man. He can barely feed his family. But here's this opportunity. He's an engineer by trade or or by education. And uh, and so he tells the man who's wanting the money back, I don't have, but here's what we could do. I can win this race. I'm an engineer. I can design a boat that's better than anyone else's boat. I can sail it more uh, efficiently than anyone else can. I can win this $70,000 and more. And the guy thought about it and was like, yeah, all right. I will pay for your boat. I will, wherever, wherever you need, I'll build your boat. You do the race. But if you don't win, you pay me back for the boat. So now it's a no-lose situation for this guy. You know, he's it, whether whether he wins the race or not, this guy's getting his money back. He's he's happy to do it. So he starts building the boat. But it's quickly getting to the deadline for when he needs to leave. Everyone's left at different times, but there's a, a window. Oh, they're okay. going to time you. But they're like, all right, from May to October, you know, in those five months you leave. And I think the prevailing winds or currents or tides or something have something to do with it. It's like, hey, you know, this is our window to do this thing. It's sure. a 10 month race, a 10 month race. So low. Okay, because we're not stopping in Australia this time. So the newspaper wants to make a big deal of this thing. They, they get everybody fired up. They got like 100,000 people there to crack bottles of champagne and see this guy off. And he is fucking terrified because the boat's not ready. The boat's not ready. And he's begging his wife without saying it out loud to give him an excuse not to go. She says he cried all night the night before in bed, weeping aloud. And I said nothing. And she, 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 she's like, she's like, I should have said something because he kept saying, boat's not ready. The boat's what a not bitch. Ready. The boat's not ready. Mm. So they're like, hey, how about we want you to leave from this port, not that one. And he's like, why? It's 100 miles extra for me. They're like, yeah, no, but that's where the crowd can get biggest. We've got we can put every, there's a hotel there for everybody to stay. And there's a big there's a big port that everybody can stand and see you leave. So they did that. 100 miles is nothing. We're going around the fucking planet. Supposed to take three days. Two weeks later, he hadn't made up those two weeks. And everybody's like, oh shit, this is our guy. This is our guy. Because everybody else is like halfway to the bottom of Africa. So he takes off and he's right away, something breaks. Like as Hmm. he's leaving, they're like, oh, look at that. That broke. He fixes a little, takes off over the horizon. It can things continue to break. They have his Hmm. journals, his 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 logbooks. It's just like one thing after another. Another screw fell out of the, the wheel down to two. Just all this <laughs> crazy shit. Like, like he, he's using Morse code. Um, I don't know how that works in the water, but somehow he can, can, he can communicate with that back to England. Mm-hmm. I, I really don't know how that technology works for the, in the 60s, but basically he's taking on water and he knows he is. He's, he's, getting, he's getting like 30 gallons a day uh, in, in its trimaran in, the, in one of the uh, morans, whatever you call them, the pontoons or whatever. Yeah. And then 75 gallons are leaking into the boat every night when he rests. He, but, but he can't quit because fa- 
It's it's this huge embarrassment. He's 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 terrified to fail because they've got the whole country invested in him. They're cheering his name back home. So he realizes he can't win. He realizes he can't even make it to the to like around Africa. So he basically decides that if he fakes his logbooks and pretends like he went around the world and just hangs out in the southern Atlantic for for months and months, then when the other guys come around, he can just fall in behind them. And he doesn't want to win. He just doesn't want to be humiliated. He just wants to finish. He wants to finish. And and there's and he figures like nobody's gonna look into my logbooks that heavily because I'll be like eighth place. There's a dozen of us in the race. Four drop out right away. Then three more sink. Then finally, the four remaining make it around Africa. And this guy's losing it. He's been at sea for months and months in the South Atlantic by himself, treading water basically, chilling. And and he's like, oh, finally, he radios back home, lets him know, like, oh, I'm in fourth place or fifth place. I, I can't win, but I can finish. And they're like disappointed, but it's OK. And then the Frenchman who's in the lead says. Making sailing a contest is against everything that sailing's about. And he turned around mm. and he started sailing around the world in the opposite direction. He said he wanted to do it again. And he did. Um, badass. <laughs> motherfucker, Damn, the first guy was cool. Uh-huh. And then, so now there's like, but now there's like an Englishman and like some other guy still ahead of him. Mm-hmm. One of those guys, they both like sink or quit. And so now it's just him. Oh, one of them makes it. The other one sinks. And now he, everybody's looking at him. He's going to win. He, it, like based on where he's, he's telling him he is. He's because one guy it. was prepared for it and took a smarmy French approach and turned around <laughs> like the, the other and 11 so, sank. And so you can see in his logbooks, he realizes they're going to find me out. I can't go home. So he sells west and he slowly goes insane. And his writings in the logbooks are like something. It's like poetry mm. mixed with the insane ravings of a madman and a mathematician. So he's, he's so smart that, that there's like these there's equations everywhere. And, and I'm sure they mean something like they, they said that the cognitively speaking, it was much more difficult, all of the for, forging the logbooks than actually just navigating around the planet. They're like, that's a hard thing to do, navigating around the planet. But what he had done, forging all those logbooks and all the, and the math required was way more difficult. They found his boat, wasn't in it. They got his journals and they sold them to the newspaper. And, <laughs> oh, my God. His family got Damn. nothing. <laughs> of course. And, uh, what what shitty newspaper was this? Somebody to boycott. Them. Recall, which, <laughs> 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 it was so sad. But, but they've got Taylor will never buy that paper. <laughs> Not once will I buy the Washington Post of 1805. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, that sounds it like, like no one was ready by for this race. It's 1960 something. It's like mid 60s. Oh, so like well into the time that sailing around the world is like whatever. They were the first people to do it. Like like you're yeah, doing oh, it. Oh, in a sailboat. In a sailboat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, well no, by yourself. In a cell oh, phone. Kyle's saying that people hadn't been doing it solo until then. Oh, yeah. by the way, uh, ham radios can bounce the signal off of the atmosphere, and it just ping pongs off the Earth atmosphere and goes far beyond line of sight. Did they use Morse code v- using mm-hmm. that? Yeah, it's part of the ham radio. I, I have a ham radio license. I'm kind of a if, renaissance man. <laughs> and uh, you have to learn Morse code to get some of the higher levels of ham radio license. Oh, if he's already cheating his it. way through the entire race, like, why c- wouldn't he just be like, you know, easier than forging these books is just pretending to have lost them. Hey, I was taking on so much water, it soaked my oh, log a, book and totally it destroyed it. Like, like that, that is so much smarter than, but also I like the idea that if I'm ever in a situation like that, I'm absolutely making up math and writing it all over <laughs> whatever place I am. And like, yeah, how long do you think? And he'll be like, no. Nah. <laughs> like there's there's a lot of threes in that section. You can honestly, tell that he just kind of got honestly, bored. <laughs> honestly, if one of us was writing the crazy math, they'll call Miss Jones, the third grade math teacher, and she'll be like, Nah. <laughs> yeah, right. All they need to know is like order of operations, and like this guy's retarded. He doesn't, he doesn't know what he's doing. I would draw something that looks like math. Yeah, yeah, yeah like like, like, like you imagine math. Like. Just doing basic algebra. Well, um, yeah, was it Into the Wild? Chris McCandless, the oh, guy, the one who, where like, the guy like yep. dies yeah. in the woods. I, I made remember, a video. I made a video about that guy. Really? Did he I remember eat my, uh, poison my, potatoes or something? He there's a lot of there's a lot of theories. Uh, you're talking about why he died, right? 
Yeah. Uh, that's one of the main theories, the poison potatoes, where there was a kind of like beetroot in the area that he ate that there was like a specific strain of that would make you sick or whatever. I mean, really what killed him was that it got a lot colder than he was expecting. Yeah. But I thought like, you were going to say pride. Yeah. I mean, in essence, it's, it's like Chris McCandless is an interesting one. He didn't really value his life as far as like the actual living or like the the longevity of it. He was very clear in his writings that he just valued the experience, like to, to do say- something others haven't. My favorite mm. of his writings is that sign he left by his van that says, please fucking help if you find this. Not a mm-hmm. joke. God save me. Very yeah. weak. Can't, can't, can't hike out. Foraging for berries. <laughs> it's something like that. Yeah. Bears are yeah. salivating. Yeah, he yeah. Said, it says like, uh, if I'm not here, I'm out foraging, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, did he his, his his journal so sad like the last few days of his life like oh man breaks I, my heart, I but, don't know his story very well but I choose to believe his journal has story after story of him diddling himself in honor of Anne Frank <laughs> I can't spare the liquid but let's shake one out loads that. getting smaller and smaller I'll, I'll forage tomorrow it's me day <laughs> down to my last down to my last bottle of lock and load <laughs> <laughs> yeah that i just remember like that guy wasn't a wildlife <laughs> survival expert uh-uh. it would be like me going out there and starting a journal and being like day one i'm avoiding the very colorful plants but i'm starting <laughs> to get hungry it's, it's like it's like day one hour four it's hunger setting in <laughs> I haven't seen a sun barbecue in an hour. <laughs> the twenty piece long. nugget I brought with me is running low. <laughs> well, don't you just hate it when you get a twenty piece? But they only give you one dipping sauce. And who thought that ranch, warm ranch, was a good dipping sauce? I, warm ranch. I wish I had service. I give them one stone. <laughs> yeah, that's basically what his nowhere. fucking book was just fail after fail we're going to hunt for rabbits today those fuckers are quick like, <laughs> no, the, gra- the, craziest, the craziest thing is while he was in uh, he took pictures on a handheld camera all he had with him was a 22 rifle while he was in Alaska he killed a moose he like took yeah, pictures right. with it. Like how how on earth was this guy like hiding in a tree and like yeah. could drop down on yeah. it? <laughs> You'd have to shoot moose. it in the fucking head or the heart or something. Yeah, but, like I, yeah. I don't, I don't even. I've never seen a moose in person, but mm-hmm. I understand from the internet that they are colossal beyond. They're like their backs like you, seven feet high. Yeah, they can yeah. fuck. So I I, I don't yeah. know if a twenty two rifle can cut through enough thick muscle to get to the heart of a goddamn moose. So yeah, you might yeah. have to shoot it in the eye. I don't know. Because if you hit its skull at the wrong angle, I think it'll literally skim off. Like, it'll just ride mm-hmm. under the skin and d- dink off its head. I mean, oh look at that. Gosh. Because big, like, keep parts <laughs> of its skull not. are extra armored by the, the antlers and, and, and where they grow under the skin. Shooting that thing effectively and killing it with a twenty two rifle, let's say we've got five shots, not 50. Yeah, it's not like a yeah. Ruger, if we got a Ruger 1022 with like a box magazine. I think he had he a might bolt have action. a bad day. I think he had a bolt action. Bolt yeah. action would be it would be like in the video games when you try to do something like that and it, <laughs> yeah. you anger it and it kills you, <laughs> or more likely it just run away and you'd never see or hear of it again. Yeah, it would be. Yeah. A, well, it's a crazy accomplishment would get to the get the kill job that. Done. I mean, slowly, but where? Oh, he'd run he away. He hit it in the eye or like You'd the hurt, side of the head. How far would it get with a bullet through its lungs? Oh, I think. I'm pretty sure hit Chris ha- a long way, a long yeah. way with a 22 bullet through its lung. It would run beyond it. You'd never find it. Like I've shot deer and and lost them, you know, with a bow hunting. Like and that was a deer. This thing will yeah. run further than a deer. I can run upwards of yeah. eight miles an hour. That won't keep up with a. I, I think Chris <laughs> in, the, no. in the wilderness. And what if you catch it? <laughs> That's a wolf on the right. Like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and those wolves are pretty big um, with a collar. Yeah, the people keep pet wolves up there. That's a thing you can do. Uh, Chris, uh, I'm pretty sure he killed it with a knife, if I recall correctly. Really? Which, like, uh, good on him. Like, I, I'm you good. know what I have seen that's really big? Bison. I've seen those in person. <clears throat> those yeah. are huge, yeah. Yes, I've seen those, too. Yeah. I think maybe uh, in the Smoky Mountains, they have uh, like a nature reserve park mm-hmm. thing, and they have bison there, perhaps. 
Yeah. Um, I, I may have been to the same place, but I've also saw them when I did that motorcycle trip on the tat. They're just mm-hmm. wild. Like they're yeah. free grazing uh, bison. And out in Texas, I've seen dog. a bunch of, I, I don't even know the names of like. <laughs> right. The various, the discover- like the things that aren't antelopes, but kind of are. Exactly. So the uh, according to like childhood like science or, or science class, there's like there's antelope and buffalo. Let's move along. <laughs> there's like there's like fifty species of hooved animal in Africa, and so mm-hmm. that dude had it's like, oh that's a kudu, and that's a <laughs> that's a Himalayan kudu. You see how its horns are black and spire? It's like all these weird what, fast and jumpy or something deer. like that. That's what it, that's mm-hmm. what his name. So many different kinds of weird goats and deer and 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 stuff there that I've seen. The coolest what? thing was that fucking camel. I wanted that camel. It was eight thousand dollars. What are you gonna do with a camel though? <laughs> what a where, nightmare where'd you see that a camel for sale? <laughs> eight thousand dollars, and then keeping Texas. it alive is a thousand dollars a month. Yeah, you can. Mm-hmm. So for eight grand, you could shoot it and like. That's what it's, you know, if you wanted to, because it's on a hunting preserve. It's like, I mean, if you want to. Camel hunting. That's exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Are they even um, good to eat? Oh, sure. delicious. It's what the most the succulent name? meat in Arabia. <laughs> okay. I, probably, but are they, they good? They say a sultan <laughs> would trade five slaves <laughs> yeah, right. for a camel steak. <laughs> it's not good. It's camel. <laughs> I mean, it I don't know. Be good. Horse I don't is probably know. good, and it's just like a shittier horse. Yeah, I, I don't know. I I, I still think horse, horse would be awful. Dry. I, I, I thought, dry, of, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I I guarantee you, it's like jerky texture. It What's cannot in the be hump that good. of a camel? Really? Is it just fat? It's it's fat. Yeah, yeah. it's fat. Yeah, it's not with water. a lot of. <laughs> no, <I'm laughs> Do you think it was like a canteen? Yeah, I thought it was like a canteen. I mean, I didn't think it was literally like you could pop the side of it with a straw. Yeah, it sounds but like I you did. But I thought it was some sort of. Like, <laughs> yeah, you thought. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, was so impressed with I the didn't think thing, that it was like a straw. A ball with the camel. <laughs> You're having your own chickens don't fuck moment. <laughs> 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 That'll never happen. You don't. You still don't know where chickens come from. I'm Nobody almost does. positive. Titties. They come from eggs. Zach says they're vertical titties, and I'm no, they're that. they're not mammary. They're not mammary glands. Those oh, are still they on are. their belly. They no, are. no, 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 no. Yes, don't try that either, desert. Kyle. Yes, don't they try that. The they desert. will you not like it. <laughs> Maybe um, they like it when you. So the, the but the camel's name was Sushi, and it was like Sushi, and the fucking thing would come running like a dog, and you could feed it carrots. And you it wanted to shoot pretty. it? No, I wanted to own it. I wanted <laughs> oh, to okay. like live at my dad's farm, and like I wanted to go. I thought you said it was on a hunting preserve. Fifty. It, it was, was, but the, he has his pets on the reserve too. Oh, know, okay. Well, that's a horrible a idea. <laughs> Why leave your pets on a hunting reserve? Well, no. But, all right, let me just say this: if you accidentally <laughs> shoot, shoot the camel, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck, Dave? It's a camel. <laughs> <laughs> what were you here to shoot again, Mike? I forgot. I, I forgot. thought that's what you were describing. I thought you were like, you were it's here, a camel uh, hunting trip. <laughs> deer hunting. Mike, you're not going to believe here, it. Mike. Mike just killed the craziest boar you've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mike, Zach's that? right about the vertical titties thing, because I bit it without foreplay, and it didn't go over. Yeah. Well. <laughs> camel was definitely lying. mad. And for what I know of women, probably. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why you guys are down on horse meat. I bet horse meat tastes good. The French eat horses no, and they're great no. at cooking. Isn't the fat content? Have you, uh, for one, have you like had like French cuisine, like true French cuisine? That's I've never been like, to France. I've yeah. had horse. Yeah. It's like they're the people who thought eating live snails would be a great idea. <laughs> like, I feel like that was just like arrogance on their part. They were like, <laughs> we're so good at like, cheeses and, and like desserts that we're going to make <clears throat> snails good. And a, mm-hmm. still they probably are good. I, I'd eat snails, I'd, I'd give them a go. No, um, you no, my, no, I don't. I, I don't think I could bring myself. I don't do think like I could oysters? bring myself to eat anything alive. I do like. Yeah, oysters. I love oysters. I, w- I would eat dead snails, but like the way I hear escargot traditionally served, they're always alive. Oh, really? Oh, hey. I, I would. I would prefer them to be dead. I, I thought they yeah. were all dead. Ah, oh, wow. we're gonna. I've had that escargot. escargot. It was definitely not alive. I'm gonna check that. Am I wrong? Yeah, you I've, I've always alive. heard that traditional, like French so, escargot in the U.S. is cooked. I'd eat cooked escargot. I would yeah, wager, and, and again, I, I only know what the YouTube people teach me. Um, I would wager that snails carry some sort of weird parasites, and eating mm-hmm. them raw, well, you could end up with some sort of a fucking worm in your brain that tells you that you're the devil. 
Yeah, yeah you so should cook I'm going to only eat baked. Escargot. And, then, and then we've got out, got to get out the key of Solomon, and it's going to be a whole deal. And it's uh-huh. gonna have, yeah, you have yeah. to go See, through, and make sure you're not possessed. Imagine exactly, if yeah. Wendigoon went crazy, like legitimately, like wearing clown makeup and showing up crazy. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> and and that crazy utilized all of the weird darkness that he's read into all the theology, all of the demonology, fictional and non-fictional. Not that some of it's real in the like brick and mortar way per se, but some of it was meant written right, right. At, to mm-hmm. be real. They're like, yeah, this is how I fucking call on demons. And they, mm-hmm. it really was, you know, he could be a real scary guy. Like if he ever <laughs> snapped and had that, that, that cold sweat down his brow moment where he's just sort of <laughs> fucking twitching so, out and then you would. Just scary I, uh, I Googled it. I couldn't find any source that said they were served alive. They all talked about how they were, like they, their intestines were cleared while they're still alive, and they're cooked alive, but not mm. served alive. It, okay, all right. I don't care right. about a snail being <laughs> cooked alive. They don't even feel. They just feel. <laughs> 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 just, <laughs> just put that True. quick cement in their mouth. Wait, wait, wait. What? Air escaping. <laughs> 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 just escaping. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd rather have horse than escargot anyway. Lots of cuts of lean meat. Are still good, like it, it's, okay. I'm not saying that horse would be. You in are the same on this horse train. Cow. You are staying on it, bro. They look. use horse in sausages, like like hard salami like sausages. Like they mix it in with pork and lamb or whatever. In a lot of countries, I've had sausage, and then I was like, "Where'd this come from again?" I got like a sausage sampler, and it had horse meat in it. It said horse on the back, or or maybe it didn't say horse, but it said like the food industry word for horse, and it was like, <laughs> "Wait, what? What's that? What's that meat? I don't know. I don't remember." But I. Who I bet cares? Taylor, you live in a major city. You could get exotic food if you wanted. I could. I could, I could get meats. some some exotic meats. I would try horse. I don't even know how it's served. I doubt it's like horse steaks. I bet it's something something else. Zach, find us some horse steaks. I would like personally. I would like horse sausage, or like like I could do sort of a charcuterie with, um, or maybe some some sort of breakfast sausage with that's like fifty percent horse, thirty percent pork, twenty percent. You know, just pork fat or something. I don't know. I bet it looks it, almost exactly like a. You know, well, you know what? Now that yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, of, you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, I could eat a horse. You, thank you. <laughs> um, I was, I was like ragging on horse meat for being lean, but it can't be that much leaner than like deer meat, right? I bet it's like the same nothing level can, of lean as nothing that. can yeah. be leaner than rabbit meat, though. That's true, and rabbit can be pretty good. So. Mm-hmm. You got to sauce oh, no. up rabbit, though. Maybe, like maybe nice you've turned me sauce. around a little bit, Dale, or maybe I'll go hunt a horse. That's not uh, how you eat it. a brace of conies. <laughs> Jeez, that's <laughs> not how you eat a brace of conies. <laughs> a at, brace of conies. Right, at, I need at, to rewatch uh, that. Yes, uh, add time. I keep saying, I, Thank you for the, the leanest meat available is Kyle's Tinder profile. <laughs> <laughs> he is lean. He's so I'd, lean. He's like, I'd, so I'd eat a, lean. I'd eat a slice of Kyle. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't I want, want to eat him alive all the, because all, he's probably rife with parasites. Like all that want, test that you'd get in there, though, I don't know. That'd be pretty, 2022 you know, Taylor is where the good aggressive. meat is, right there. That's that's what you oh, want. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you want that just an absurd amount of marbling, the kind of steaks that you have to turn right. on its side just to render down that giant <laughs> band. Is this human cheese fed? <laughs> yes, yeah, he's entirely cheese fed. It's like, that's cruel. That's cruel. How could you do that? It's like he did it to himself. <laughs> we found him this way, trust me. <laughs> you held down this poor man and fed him nothing but cheese for you, man. It's like, no, he's a free range cheese man. <laughs> we gave him all the freedom in the world and he free, signed his own death certificate. Free range cheats. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Spanish it depends, on, your it depends on what you're on your point of view. Yeah. I thought I, I was reading about that. I thought that was a way bigger thing. Like I, I thought Yeah, not as a, big as you. It went on no. for centuries though, right? The Spanish Inquisition? No. I don't no, think no, so. This, I guess no, I'm thinking I th- more I thought of it was like an enormous, burning. like huge. Yeah, thing, no, no, witch it was burning, much smaller yes. Than I thought. Like vague random uh Catholic witch burnings and 
what is it, heresy prosecutions, blasphemies, digging up the corpses of old popes and put them on trial, all sorts of shenanigans. Oh, that's oh, that's different though. Yeah, I watched the whole. Maybe it was. Um, it's one of those animated history channels on. YouTube they dug that, up. They dug up bodies and put them on trial. Yeah, yeah. Pope of, did. Of former popes. So, so, do, do, so are, is that gallant behavior? Wild. By the way, would that be no? Gallant? That's no. I'd that's say it's pope gross. behavior. Uh, that's some badass shit. There's been crazy popes. One pope. They made him pope, and uh, he went through so much money, fucking whores, and doing drugs that he that he was broke. So he had rich buddies though, because you know he's the pope. So he's like, hey, give me let's call it twenty million in real in today's money, and you'll be the pope. He's like, are you serious? You'll sell your pope hood? Totally sell my pope hood. Sold his pope hood. Twenty million. Two years later, you know what? Give me the hat back. I want it again. No, for real. Give it back. Took the pope hood back. At one point, he dug up the former pope, who he didn't like, obviously, put him on trial. And I'm, what I mean by that is the corpse was sat up in a chair and accused. And the corpse had a court defense court lawyer, the devil's advocate. On. There was a defense for the accused who smelled because he's been rotting for, you know, the last year and a half in a hole in oh, Europe somewhere. They found him guilty, believe it or not. <laughs> they threw him in the river. That pope's body was thrown in the river. <laughs> what was he guilty of? What did they... Oh, uh, who knows? Some kind of heresy. <laughs> so, some buggery? <laughs> no, he probably duggery. said something like Jesus was an independent gallantry. person from the Holy mm. Trinity, and that was just pff, too much. Yeah, I, I, I like the... Uh, the popes have been Man. some of the most evil people who existed. I bet that was like a really weird day in Vatican City, because I guarantee... Pretty much nobody was on board for it other than the Pope. But if the Pope is like leading the charge of it, everyone else has to be like, they're like, hey, Saint, what are you doing today? And he's like, you're not going to fucking believe this. I have to defend Pope uh, Pope uh, John V. And they're like, the guy who died? He's like, yeah. And if I don't, he's going to burn me at the stake. So I'm writing arguments defending a dead guy, right? Like, but they can't be can too good them? arguments because you know <laughs> you need them? to lose. You you yeah, just you'd yeah. have to play into it. I, I would play yeah. into it. I'd be like, you're you're right, Pope. We got to get this shit under on lock and key. We need to be safe and let's throw him in the river. I was just at a, a Vatican City actually. This nice. is hitting for, this is hitting for me because I was at Vatican City like two weeks ago. Yeah. Just to how say, was it? Just to say sorry. Just to say sorry. Just to be like, just to check out what you guys are up to over here. Um, Seeing what the Christians That has nothing to do with us. Actually, more to do with him because you said Italian Catholic, blood. didn't you? Who said Catholic? <laughs> didn't someone say uh, Catholic? Well, that's the Vatican my, my, City. My they're, family's they're Catholic, Catholic, most uh, of them, but isn't that uh, isn't that really? Catholic? Isn't that like isn't that like you're supposed to laugh. Most that. most Catholics. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> most Catholics. I get most baptized. Catholics. I give I get baptized, by the way. I know, I know some people like that solemnly like, offended. I need to frown like Drifter. <laughs> My low hanging lips. Yeah, yeah. I no, mean, most Italians than... are like most secular Jews in that. Like they're it. like, yeah, we're we're you know we're part of it too. And they're like, really, when do you do the thing? And it's like Easter, Christmas, and I'm sure for Jews, it's like, oh, I do Yom Kippur, I do Hanukkah. Like, when do you go to temple? Never. I never. Do you ever go to Temple Harley? Uh, yeah, here and there. Like, uh, when I mean here and there, I mean like once or twice every five years. For and like, you can't drive on high holidays. So like, the amount of times I've gone because my grandfather's there, and it's like a six-hour thing, and I park like a ten-minute walk away, and then I walk up and I hang out in the back, <laughs> and like I see my grandfather after, and I'm like, fuck. Like I only go for like the last thirty minutes when he's walking out. I'm like, she's a long one today. <laughs> like, yeah, so and then I like I'm like oh, gotta walk all the way home now. He's like, yeah, I'll see you later. And I'm like, bye. And then I like walk ten minutes to my car and drive home. Wow. Uh, but like, and then it's like, so like, yeah, I'm here because it's important. And that's like really what yeah. religion is to me. Is that like it's important to him and like the family gets together here. But I like the sure. rules of it. I I would never impose that on someone else or on myself. Like, would you do? Would you? Like uh, if you had a, a friend who was a Muslim and they were like, oh, come to a, a mosque with me and, you know, face Mecca and, and you know, uh, the the I don't excuse my ignorance, go on the, the rug, the carpet yeah. thing and the prayer rug and do the ritual with me today. Like, would you do that? I mean, I have friends that like I they know people that, that would. I don't think they'd want me to do that. They I think they'd see that. that. They'd yeah. probably like, see that as like cheapening say, their religion. 
Well, no, let's say I, a, a right, Jew you asked fact, you to put on. You do that. If a Jew asked you to put on tefillin, let's say, which also a Jew wouldn't do, but then oh, again, I'll do whatever a Jew, a Jew, a Jew wants Jew me could. to do. Yeah, I, well, so, you have so no I, choice, buddy, because you know what yeah. we'll do to your bank account. I, I, I don't in, want yeah. any more trouble out of y'all. Shut that <laughs> right down. Y'all sucked go it to me pretty good about four oh, years FPS ago. FPS Russia <laughs> passed me in subs, and I got him in jail. Leave me alone, <laughs> you and your friends. Dude, yeah, Kyle, you uh, got this. off light, Kyle. Uh, yeah, Kyle, it, did you see the public freakout video where there was a crazy person with a big sign protesting something about Jews control the world? And this dude legit walked up to him and said, excuse me, sir. I'm Jewish and I own this and you can't be here. And he's like, yeah, I figured. So I'll, I'll, it's like, he's like, yeah, the Jews don't own this thing over here. You can go over there. And he's like, all right, thanks for the heads up. Yeah, he, he, and he, he walks, walks away. over the guy's like, Jews yeah. control everything. And this like guy comes over. He's like, just like a chubby. He's like, you got to go. You got to go. He's like, who the fuck are you? He's like, I'm Jewish. I control everything. You can't be here. He's like, yeah, I can. He's like, you can't. I'm Jewish. I control everything. And the guy like <laughs> walks away and he looks at the camera. He's like, so there you have it. I'm Jewish. I control everything. And he's just like some like dude. Oh, God. <laughs> he he doesn't even own the Jewish. property. He's, <laughs> he's not even he looked Jewish. Like he could have been. He looked like he could the, have been. Uh, the Catholic and Jewish <laughs> version of religions sound a lot more fun than Southern Baptist. For Southern Baptist, it was not just like, at least for me, not just a cultural thing you do a couple times a year and celebrate Christmas. It was a you go to church three days a week, you pray before every meal all the time. God is real. God is watching you. He's keeping a log of every single thing you do. You make one mistake, you go to hell. Demons live just behind the walls. They're going to come get you like yeah. oh, fucking... I yeah, good times. Good times. Yeah, yeah. I, I like my I most of my family's childhood. Catholic, but my immediate family like didn't go Catholic. They were like regular like Protestant, Protestant. or whatever. And yeah, they they don't hit the the stuff as hard as the Baptists, but they're definitely big on hell, big on uh, sin. Don't do that. Feel bad. I think it's important too. Look, if God's real, they've got then the the people who believe in a yeah. hell and like like bad like it's I, I know. Some people, sorry, Harley, don't really believe in a hell and their religion, but 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 I I feel like there's got to be some comeuppance. There's got to be right. Or then if there's a really the good place, go there's got to be a really bad place. Probably if there's no mm. comeuppance for doing the wrong thing, then why would I do his right thing? Because I I just don't get it. If we're all going to the gold fucking streets and the clouds or whatever the fuck and the paradise. Then why shouldn't I be out for me until the last five minutes? That's probably what and a lot of Jews started thinking, and other Jews were like, "Yeah, we got to switch the system up. We got to come up with a new story because these people are." I don't know what to tell them. Like, we got to figure out something. Like, we got <laughs> to switch the system up a little bit. But if you told me that God was real and He wants me to live this humble life mm -hmm. where I'm trying to make others happy and live for you know and glory to His name or whatever and blood of the Lamb, such and such, then. I'd get right on board with that if I thought he was real, though. I could see doing all sorts of violent things in his name. You know, if there was okay, a real so God this, and he told the... you there were some bad guys you needed to go get, tell me They're you done. wouldn't go get them. But wait, yeah. but what's what's the like two things? Yeah. Like in that sense, like then it's just we're we're the heaven waiting room. Like we create us, yeah. we put us in the waiting room. And if it's all about heaven, like this is like really short. And like I'm being tested, mm -hmm. but you made me so like you did this. I like like we did this. This is a collaborative thing. Like, you know, like why'd you make my mm -hmm. brain this way and uh yeah. kill my parents? Uh and and expect me to like follow the rules. Like you did all this, like, you know. And also if they're like, mm -hmm. Yeah, if he was like, You gotta kill these these people, I'd be like, who are they? I'm just tired. I'm tired of being pointed at others and being like, that's them. And it's their fault that anything's not good right then now. Then he looks at all. over at me and he, and he says, see, Kyle, that's how they are. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> that's why they can't be. All us, these Kyle. Jewish goblins come from and, the underground. And and they're you, like, yeah. you realize that come, I had, come, hurry. Come, come. you realize that Kyle had begged God to give you and your people one last chance and you had just spoiled it. And I, I was like, uh, how much you gonna cost? Um, <laughs> no, I, the, uh, no I but like I it. said before the. Uh, sorry, I was. Uh, go ahead. I was gonna I talk know. about. I, I was gonna I, talk about it, Islam again, so like it's not important to. Yeah, you. I guess I'm kind of boarding on that because the, their whole thing is like they're like, hey, God hates these people and what they're doing. They gotta go. Like that's his thing. He told Abraham. And he told this guy, and now that's what we do. We kill them when they don't do that. When they do that thing they're doing over there, and they're out to get us, and it's. You know, 
with us or with us or the dead. That's how it is, you know. Man, if you believe that, it's time to get a fucking vest, right? Like, it's time to go, right? If there was a like real guy really telling it. me that some people had to go, it's like, all right, how do I do it? <laughs> what do you want me to do? Yeah, if you believe it's God, that's why so many people do things like that when God tells them. Because, like, if you really believe, believe in that, that God tells you to do something, like, people tend to do it. See, if, I, if, if God's a, if, the and real if a, deal, if a true believer like that just becomes schizophrenic or you know, loses their mind in some way where, where some, they're hearing a voice and they had this strong belief in a God already. And now the voice, because of their mental illness, is taking that role up on and it's saying, mm -hmm. hey, God here, you know, the guy you've been learning about and worshiping your whole life. Do I have some shit for you to do? <laughs> oh, <laughs> does your girlfriend do clown makeup? But does is God? That's, why no, is that's what God said. To, Apologies. Yeah. Uh, I, the dude, I'm, just, I'm roasting in here. It's like 80 degrees, and that is not here. an easy wig to be in. Can Sorry, this is this is latex paint. <laughs> Am I, the, I think it's scarier with your it, natural hair. Everything's been getting crazier. This the whole juxtaposition time. between <laughs> normal hair. The and headset and, too. Uh, yeah. Well, this is coincidental. I just got this in the mail because I'm sponsored by Logitech, and all the only color they had is white. Oh, they make it good looks good. Love yeah, yeah. Ah, thank you, thank you. The long it's hair, right. it's like if you dyed that green. Yeah, they love white on PKA. Looks yeah. great. We like it to pop. Um, I was saying, <laughs> uh, like, even if, so if you didn't go into a, a mosque or something, but if you had a buddy and he was like, do, I'm doing the daily prayer. Yeah, I'd love if you join me. And like, maybe that's not really Muslim of him to have mm -hmm. uh, someone an infidel yeah. like yourself. Yes. Uh, but like, I, like, you know, would you do that? Uh, because I I have I know lots of people like would not or or someone if a, a guy was like you know what let, let me baptize you I'd love to baptize you. I know a lot of people Ooh, that would be like absolutely big deal not mm -hmm. and yeah. then it's like it's interesting because like the people that like are really not Catholic or Christian or whatever. They're so not about it. Like, cause I don't believe in that stuff. No, do not touch me with that water. Motherfucker. <laughs> don't even it's bring it. In. It's like funny because it's like, you don't even, you don't want, you're going to get bad because you're yeah. scared. But I thought that's not, but I thought, you and your I thought it's just silly. Yeah. It's just water. No. It's not, you but, know, but like because for some people, water means though, like, like for those who don't know and yeah. fast forward, like it's, it's, you're taking on the new covenant with God and Christ. You're saying that no longer am I part of the Old Testament where we must sacrifice animals to uh, to get rid of our sins. Jesus Christ is my Savior. I wash myself of, uh, self of my sins here and now and forever because He is my Lord and Savior, and through Him I will be clean. You're making a big decision right then and there, and making a statement for sure, in, for in sure, public, yeah. in front of no, the No, but if someone if someone who is like, oh, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in all that. And another person was like, oh, cool. Will you do me the favor and let me baptize you? I'm sure a lot of those people are making this all up, but I'm sure a lot of the people would be like, oh, absolutely not. Yeah. And it's I'm like, sure well, let wouldn't. me just put a little bit of, right? I would assume, because why not logically, if you don't care, why wouldn't you let it? But I, yeah. still, there's it's still a lot of weight to the prayers. Like mm -hmm. doing like, if you put on like to fill in like the Jewish like leather thing, or you did like that mm -hmm. Islamic prayer, and it wasn't something that you grew up doing or committed to doing, and you were just like doing it as a thing for your buddy, it, it has like some weight to it. And this comes from it a does. person who's not, like that and maybe it's just because i walked around all these like cathedrals and churches oh, yeah. like in italy and stuff mm -hmm. that are like so crazy and magnificent but i was just thinking about like how just we've been with religion and all that and i'm that like i'm not powerful. a religious guy there's still there's yeah. a lot of weight to doing that stuff if you went down and like literally were on your knees and you know yeah. did the the whole thing this like, is you where would... woody and i really disagree because Yo, uh, he's we'll not here. He's demons. a bitch, though, right? Admit it. Taylor wouldn't so admit bad. it before. Say it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I'm filling in the role I'm of Woody. Kidding. Okay. I'm kidding. I can be your Woody. With the, with the demons and stuff. When we, it, we'll, I don't know. We'll, we'll find a story about demon worship or something, and, and Woody's like, sign me up. It's just gobbledygook, and it's like, ooh, the same way that if Taylor found out he was going to be dead in six months, he'd, he'd be fucking doing mission work and praying yeah. to the Lord. <laughs> um, I will not. Look, I don't believe I don't believe, but I don't disbelieve so thoroughly that I'm going to take any risks with demons. Okay. Wise yeah. I'm not Very so sure that the, I'm, I'm sure enough that there is no God that I ain't going to church and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to talk to him unless it's a code red emergency. 
But I believe in demons enough that I'm not gonna like offer my soul to them. And like, like I'll tell you what, I would say it here joking, like, take my soul, Darth Lord. But yeah. what I wouldn't do is like if someone sent me an old book with some Latin in it, yeah. I wouldn't be reciting like, sign it they're, in blood. They're like, like they're yeah, like, cut your I name agree. here, cut your name here, and write in 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 your own blood on this page out of a Orthodox Bible that you know this and that and the other, and then take this stamp and rub the blood on it and put it there. I'm like, nah, man, I'm not. Nah, yeah. I don't think so. I like, think I do any of like, that. I've seen I, this movie before. Like if I buy in that this is real, then I'm already buying into playing for the side that is going to lose. Yeah. Like why would you? Oh, no, that I don't believe. So I think that God uh, like lied to us. I like this theory too. This is what I hope happened. I hope that Satan uh, or the Morning Star, as I prefer to call him, was the good guy that he wanted mankind to to have all of the abilities of the angels. But also the 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 falsehood that man has. He wanted us to to be a, a, a because maybe like what God is is half what we are and half what an angel is, and he split his grace and made two different beings that he could lord over. And so if uh, if um, if the angels would come down, if it turned out that that Satan wanted to give us that power and he was the good guy. And that God was the bad guy, and the whole Bible and Christian religion are propaganda. And the devil's like, "No, read the truth, my son," and like show, showed us the truth. That's the movie I want. That's the and that's the reality I want. But that's I in bet, the Bible. I bet the devil, basically. Sick. That's the well, Bible. Like because okay, so I Bible yeah. study uh, background, whatever. Uh, Satan tempts Eve not with the fruit of li of life, but with the fruit of knowledge. There's a different, there's two trees in the garden. The first is the fruit of knowledge and the second is the fruit of life. They give her the fruit of knowledge and then she immediately realizes, I want the fruit of life. And as she is going toward it with Adam, I believe one of the angels or God say, we absolutely must stop them from eating from the tree of life or they will be immortal like us or something like that. So there is hmm. an element of that very much so in the Bible and yeah. even even earlier in like different translations and stuff, uh, Satan, the word Satan primarily meant adversary. He was sort of a devil's advocate in God's court. It was his job that God gave him specifically to tempt people to test them. So imagine imagine the afterlife and it's just like a character that. create screen and you're choosing like horde or alliance. It's like heaven <laughs> hell. You're like, oh, what's going on, though? Like. What's going on there? Damn, hell's got some you really talk cool Saint Michael. Hugo Boss suits. I was you really talk hoping you were going to say Michael <laughs> Archangel, and he's like, honestly, man, it's like pretty, pretty similar in a lot of ways. And you're like, what do you mean? He's like, it's like the same. Oh, I, I think that Satan probably did it out of out of jealousy, where he was created and to serve. one of his main, yeah, he was created to serve. All the angels were, and he pridefully believed. Well, it was jealous that the Lord then made humans because he thought you've already perfected creation with us. We're more impressive in every way than these beings. But they betrayed God and said, no, we're not going to follow you. And so he leaned into the humans. And so the way that Satan strikes back against God is by corrupting that which God cares most for, which is That's humans. the second movie, Satan Strikes Back. Satan strikes back. Yeah, it's a trilogy. It's pretty much, also pretty much accurate. That's how that works. Satan yeah. fucks with us just to fuck with God, at least according to most mm. theology. It's the way he can undermine what God cares about. Which That's is why, God. honestly, like at the end, Return of the, of the like, Magi, end of the Torah, end of the Torah, they're like, yeah, oh, people, people aren't buying this shit anymore. We need the story's great. They love the story, but we need on, a hero so and a villain. Yep. Yeah, we're gonna need a hero and a villain for part two here. Well, I mean, you got a great villain in Satan, the ultimate villain. Like, yeah, it's like, and you're one. you're not gonna knock Satan out in the first. Well, that's movie. why I'm I, I, I'm Jewish, but like, I don't know that shit. You guys got going on is pretty sick. Like, I became a GI Joe collector because I loved Cobra, you yeah. know. And I'm like, <laughs> Satan's like fucking sick Cobra. Like, like angels are pretty cool too, though. Archangels, they have like. Have you met the devil in Baldur's Gate yet? No, I haven't, but I will try ah. and fuck him. He does not be <laughs> good luck in that. I don't think, uh, but but he's pretty slick with the. That's all. That's not on brand. It seems like he'd be all about that. I think his name is Raphael. Uh, he'll he'll appear over and over and kind of be a 
a bit adversarial. He he really does seem like the Christian devil, though. Um, he sort of tempts you and yeah. takes you to well, a Well, that's paradise. definitely the most common devil. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I guess I it's like the biggest that. religion, so that makes Which sense. Which is based I on like the- Hades, kind of. Yeah, based on... Uh, did you guys play the game Dante's Inferno? It was kind of like a... Uh, a Oh, God, God of War clone, kind of. Yeah, I was like a God of War no, clone, but it was really that. good. I thought it was amazing that you get to you get to cleanse or murder unbaptized babies. They're like one of the key enemies. Uh, but you fight Satan as the final boss, and he's like twelve foot tall, and he's got this monster like twelve inch dong that's like flopping around in your character's face for the whole fight. It's... Have you, you seen? He has, to be, he has to be offensive even as he fights. That's yes. Satan's. Seen have you movie? seen the movie? You have Dante's to beat him Inferno? in a rock off. Uh, I mean, I think, yes, I think, I think, I think so. Inferno. So there's an animated movie from 2010, I ah. think, called Dante's Inferno. Uh, this is made for the same good. game, by the way. I think this is connected. Yeah. By the way, I think it is. Connected. It is. This. This is. It was a promo for the game. Yeah, and it is sick, and that's why the game is like that. That story too. It's it's cool. The book is yeah. good too. If you want to read the book, don't read Purgatorio or Paradiso. They're boring. Woody. Oh. I know you like reality shows, so I, I found out about this incredible Japanese reality show that existed in the late 90s. MXC. Uh, Nas- um, it's, it's, I, this guy, I think the guy's name was Nasubi. Oh, but okay. here's what they did. They locked him na- la- naked in a room with nothing, and they broadcast it live for 15 months. And the only way he could get food or any possessions at all was by uh, the big pile of magazines in the room had all those mail-in sweepstakes. So he had to continuously enter mail-in sweepstakes until he'd accrued like 10,000 United States dollars. But that takes 15 months. So he was just going insane. You know, no hair. He's got this beard. His hair's a mess. It's like old boy, except no like incest or craziness, right? He's going insane in this room. It, it's got 17 million viewers every Sunday night. It's huge. They edit it down into summaries that are played week uh, on weekdays. It's, it's one of the bigger shows in the country. And people people find the hotel the uh, the apartment that he's locked in. So they they come in the middle of the night and they kidnap him out of the room. The producers do. He wakes up, whole new apartment, whole new pile of magazines. Let's go again. <laughs> <laughs> it was absurd. It's the it's like how did this actually happen? I didn't believe it had happened the first time. I, I was like somebody made some shit up. But I started googling and yeah, it happened. It Wait, happened. 15, like, months? Fifteen months. Fifteen months. Do you remember this what a long time ago? Um, is it late 90s, 90s late so. 90s uh if you it's in the late 90s a japanese game show called the contestant it was uh broadcast a man being locked in a room for 15 months he was naked starving and alone he was also unaware that his life was being broadcast on national television the show was know? extremely popular <laughs> average why, why did he think he was there <laughs> million viewers every sunday night he thought it was a contest the, Day the 75 the i am a so scared like he was a japanese <laughs> comedian uh, who had who had won the lottery for a show business related job, and he was challenged to stay alone, unclothed, in an apartment for the show. Sasunu, S U S U N U. The only possessions he had were those that he'd won from the sweepstakes. You know, he'd mail in and get the stuff from the mail order stuff. Yeah, oh, absolutely wow. insane. The Japanese are su- on such another level with their game shows. That was probably the same time who want we were coming up with who wants to be a millionaire. Right, like we went the, the the massive bigger than life capitalist route. They went creepy hidden camera, naked man locked in a room. This is for a so year much route. better than than ours. This is, is way it? better than than trivia for a million dollars. I would. Would you, you watch, watch this trivia? Yes, I love trivia. Yeah, but I would. I'd like to play trivia. I don't want to watch trivia. Like th- this fair. is, and I wouldn't want to do this either. But this is at least interesting. It's terrifying, and I mean. He was challenged to enter until he won a million yen, yen? or whatever. That's eight grand. Yeah, but eight thousand. Got to get. It's like eight grand worth of free shit from the sweepstakes until he wins the show. I think was the deal. It's a little confusing. Yeah, but prorated. That's fifteen months of your life. He said that he didn't quit because of his like Japanese spirit of determination, and also he didn't have any clothes, <laughs> and also because of the lock of the door. <laughs> well, how much time have you spent on this show taylor when when will you hit that long of time being in this room that you're in right now uh, to it'd be a long time to to equate to 15 24 <laughs> hour day or 15 months of 24 hour days that'd be horrible yeah yeah especially if you have is like free magazines it would probably be like 
you'd be getting like chick tracks from religious groups and and all sorts of shit like that. Like, what else are you gonna win? Sushi, seaweed. I don't know what they sell on in magazines in 1998 in Japan. Other Japanese magazines. Who knows? It could be anything. They're a yeah, very strange culture, Taylor. Nukes really set your crazy to eleven, like yeah. for the next hundred years or so. Apparently, we beat or the maybe shit forever. out of them. We, you know why? Um, you know why they bombed Hiroshima and Nagasaki with the nukes? Why they picked those two? Well, yeah, there was a, no. a weather-related event, so like I think Tokyo got called up. But the reason that Hiroshima and Nagasaki were still standing uh, is because they they saved them. They saved those cities. All the other cities were destroyed already from conventional bombing raids and fire bombing raids. They saved those two to test on. <laughs> but then they didn't even too. not even it was the, the biggest like, L ever. Huh? That is a huge L. I was gonna say like that's. That's a lot to save two entire cities. Like not even because there was one person who's like, all right, we're going to save that city. And someone was like, no, no, you don't test things once. Like you, you <laughs> test things. <laughs> you no, they had a backup. Batman. So that means they what had to do with little boy? They were, Yeah, uh, that's um, that was a huge L they took. And now they've got like tentacle porn and they're working themselves like 90 hours a week until they die at 32 years old and stuff. I think they always <laughs> did that. Well, they work themselves 90 hours a week till they die at 102. I think they're trying to make up for like that L they took, trying to catch back up. I mean, they did in the 80s. They're still going, though. It's wild. What an industrial. And the worst part, people. they don't have any diversity. So it's not a you know, bit. Very, not or a bit. you could say 100% diversity. And how do they operate? <laughs> yeah, yeah, how do they operate all without minorities. all the food and music? It's 100% diverse yeah. by the NBA code of diversity. Like, <laughs> 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 where apparently everywhere but fucking uh, Switzerland their, is diverse. <laughs> their trains aren't crashing like, into each other. and Their airplane uh, um, companies aren't going down for no reason. That's true. That's true. They, they do know infrastructure. Yeah. They love taking care of it. They, like, they love gardens. I'd like to go to Japan. That'd be fun. Oh, you should. It's it's awesome. It's. Uh, I think all three of you guys have been. Yeah, I'm yeah. not allowed to go. You went me. with. Uh, didn't you go he to Japan? Go. For- no, he went with Joe and like was ringside with him when Joe mysteriously didn't lose that fight to Anthony Pettis in spectacular fa- fashion. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I this remember is, him winning that fight. This is like a Mandela Every time effect. I've I would have sworn you went to Joe Japan. Fight, it's been a, it's been an unfortunate. Le- yeah. I was telling my girlfriend the other day. I was like, there was this one time where me and Woody drove like 20 fucking hours to support our boy because he was going to fight in uh in, in an arena in Boston and they they beat the shit out of him and we felt so bad and we knew he wouldn't want to see us so we just went home <laughs> <laughs> I was like we hadn't seen him in like a year and a half two years before then and dishonorable I him since. <laughs> we're out of here dude I and saw that's Joe weird. Lozon fight in Japan now in Japan the crowds are different they don't cheer and stuff they watch in absolute silence. You, no one says a word. It's quieter than church, right? Yeah. So, so they're in there fighting. You can hear every blow land, and then out of nowhere, Joe's coach Steve yells, "Keep your hands up, Joe!" Everybody heard it except Joe. And then comes the kick. <laughs> oh. And I was like, every time I watch the replay, I hear Steve's voice now. You know, hands up. And I wish Joe heard it too. Was it weird that no one was cheering? Like I, I, I wouldn't have guessed that. Don't the yeah, Japanese no, like to drink, and or is that Koreans? That I do mean? think they like to drink, but they, but in sports they're just dead silent. Hear a pin drop. I've been watching these special forces podcasts, and I'm hooked on it now. I love this. Do you, have you ever seen the movie Zero Dark Thirty? It's it's about when they got mm. Osama bin Laden. I have heard I'm of not it. Not sure. I highly recommend it. It's it, it, it's, such, it's it's a fairly accurate telling true story shit of how they got to some of it. And uh, it was a woman at the CIA who was mad about some of her friends getting blown up, who made it her job to to like track down and find Osama bin Laden. It, it's it's her. It was her. It was her the whole way. And so it hmm. tells her story for a while. But then you've also got I think Chris Chris Pratt is on the SEAL mm-hmm. team, like SEAL Team Six. And then there's a there's several other characters like scattered along like uh, in the military and the CIA and everybody who like made this thing happen. And when they actually go on the raid and go in, it is really fucking cool. Uh, I just listened to a podcast, though. The, it was the guy who killed Osama bin Laden. Like he's the podcast uh, guest and he's telling the story of killing Osama bin Laden. And it was fascinating. And it's all the shit from that happened in the movie. But it's him talking about it. And being as graphic as you want, because his interviewer is also like a special forces guy. He's like, where'd you shoot him? 
shot him three times in the face. He's like, if you saw that, if you ever seen photos of it, those are my hands holding his head together for the picture. Those are, mm. those are my hands wearing the gloves. He's like, he blew his head apart. Like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Why'd you like throw him in the ocean? <laughs> oh, because <laughs> we lied about that. <laughs> because they didn't want to like have like a, a Mecca for terrorists to, to like visit and like put roses on Osama bin Laden's grave. Like you, you ever go stupid. to a place for John Lennon? Airdrop him into an enemy's land. Now they've got a problem. Osama bin Laden thought, I mean, Barack Obama thought it was a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys' names are similar. Barack Osama wanted to, yeah. wanted to um, do that. But, but that Middle was, name's Hussein, too. That was fascinating. That's he, so he talk, funny. <laughs> about going, oh, the crazy part. Um, he, he said that the woman at the CIA told them, she's like, that his last line of defense will be his son, I think Khalid, something like that. His last line of defense is Khalid. I, I don't know what it looks like inside the house, but there will be a staircase. And Osama will be on the second floor, and Khalid will be on that staircase, and he will be armed. If you get past him, you get a shot at Osama bin Laden. And so when they get to the staircase, one of the guys yells, Khalid, come here, in Pakistani. And Khalid pokes his head out, and they blew it off. And then they walked in and killed Osama bin Laden. It Heavy was, sleeper, that guy. He was... <laughs> Osama, well, Osama was, like, up, like, trying to get... They were kind of... They always say he was trying to get a rifle. Osama was staggering around with his wife in front of him, and they shot him twice in the face, and then once more once he hit the ground. That's, that's what happened. They went to kill Osama bin Laden, not to capture him. They killed him. What about um, his wife? Just let her She go. got shot. I don't know if she died. She, like, hmm. took a bullet in that uh, thing, I, I believe. I'm like, although I know what they... They shoot 77 grain hollow points, he said, and my goodness, that would make a mess even if it winged you. Like, if you got shot in the arm with that, in a room like you can very easily pull it out it's a five five six a heavy one it's a it's a yeah but the hollow point part that it's oh okay it, it's gonna like kind of it's really coming apart when it hits you and making i don't a think i've ever hole. fired a five five six hollow point i didn't know that was a thing yeah hunt, it, there's um the, oh. there's hunting rounds is it's where we would is where we get them but like I don't think um, I'm like 99.9% .9 sure the regular military doesn't shoot hollow points because you're not, they all shoot FMJ or, or green tip or something. But I guess those special forces guys just are, don't give up. They shoot hollow points. I've always heard they can have whatever they want. Yeah, but there's rules that, although on this raid in particular, like they had snuck into Pakistan. You know where that house is? Was like, I don't, less than a mile, I think a kilometer away from where Osama bin Laden's house is is like their West Point, like the Pakistani oh. West Point. Like he's not in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. He's right down the street from their military, like professional military training grounds, like where they where, where their top brass is. They got him in their back pocket right there, keep, keeping him safe. I wonder if and you can look at that house on Google Maps, like satellite view and check out the compound. Like and, a street view? There's I lots of Google cars driving think through the Google cars have been there, <laughs> yeah. but... Uh, I'm sure there's imagery of, of the place. I don't know if you can like like see like updated. Like who knows what's going I kinda on. I kind of want now. to like to drag around the city and see. Yeah, like, like see the neighborhood. Or... Yeah, yeah. No, th those stories are wild because these guys are fucking killers, all of them. He's like, I'm not gonna tell you the 200 different stories of we went through the door, we shot the bad guys in the face. Cause we did that every fucking day. Let me tell you some stories when shit went wild, and I'm like. Fucking hell yeah! Tell me what about when it went wild. <laughs> and he and and he's got stories about having like fight bounding down the street, wounded while his partner's dead behind him. He's got a saw busting off two hundred round bursts at like God. multiple assailants down the street in Iraq. Like all sorts of really crazy James Bond shit. Dude, stuff. I wish I could could tell a couple of the stories my close friend Marine buddy told me mm -hmm. when he was in action over there. But there are a couple of them where he was like we're all chatting and he's like, cause he listens shout out. And he's like, Taylor, this next one, you cannot say on the show. Like you can't say this one. Cause I don't want to implicate anything or say anything about this or that. And I'll be like, all right, I'm a professional consummate professional. You can tell me. Mm -hmm. And then he does. And I'm like, God, yeah, I want to tell it. I want to tell it. So bad. It's such a good story. People would love it, but gotta, gotta respect that. Maybe someday. I I have um the guy I did the tat with that long motorcycle rider around the country. 
he was an army guy and he told stories. The thing is, he wasn't an elite army guy or like anything good. And all his stories are like hilariously like stupid. Like, he's like, we're walking. There's enemy f- somewhere out there. We don't know where they are. We just we know that eventually we'll get close enough to them and there'll be a problem. And uh, they're supposed to have a buddy system. I think it was him who lost his buddy. Like his buddy's gone. And now we're all like, what the fuck? Oh, no. Oh, no. Fucking my friend is fouled up. He, lo- he lost the buddy that he was supposed to be accountable mm-hmm. for each other. Turns out this dude fell in like a latrine hole. And now he's <laughs> covered in smells like poo. And it, But they didn't let him like stop. You know, so, <laughs> so now he and his, and his buddy gets it on him. And like, this is his story. There's no hero, like rock star shit in any of this. Yeah, just, a, just smells bad. <laughs> just a comedy of errors in the <laughs> army. Apparently, yeah. Yeah. Well, honest, like, I, I'll find a link for this and like I'll find a good one to try to whet your appetite and get you on board with this mm, with this thing. Cause I like that. this guy I was just talking about, it was a comedy of errors for him. Like like he's like, the Iraqis knew not to fuck with the bearded guys and the AM ramps or whatever. I had some acronym for some big armor truck. And they didn't they knew not to fuck with the guys and the Bradleys. But here we were, two CIA guys. I mean, we were disguised, but we're just in a sedan. And he talks about getting ambushed. Hit they hit they shot him with an RPG. The car crashes, um, loses power because um, and and there they are. They jump out of the car. His buddy's immediately killed. And then he's running from people for so long. He's like, and, and he's been radioing the whole time for backup, telling, giving updating positions. And then he looks down and there's a bullet in his radio. He hasn't had a radio the whole fucking time. Nobody knows Fuck. what's going on. Uh, he gets up. It sounded like some Tarkov shit. He got on top of a roof. He's like, I get to the fucking roof. And it's just a flat top roof. There's no little knee wall to get behind or anything. It's not like in the movies, but I'm returning fire from up there. And then I decide, you know, I'm going to run back and I'm going to jump down to the down one floor to the landing. And then from there down to the ground. Well, that landing only existed on the front side of the building. So when I jump, I just fell two stories into the darkness onto the ground. <laughs> so there I am laying on the floor, quite stunned and a lot of pain. And here come two Hodges around the corner. I'm like, this is great. <laughs> I love it. They're, they're great stories. And and they're always so like weird about when they kill somebody. I wish they'd just be like, but then I killed the guy on the left. And then I killed the guy on the right. They're just like, they use euphemisms and they sort Neutralized. of nod. It's like, not even that. They won't even, they'll be like, uh, uh, they were sitting in traffic, armored Wetted car. They're in an armored car. Like he said, seven inches of bulletproof glass or something. Um, guy pulls up next to him in a, in a car. In the back passenger seat, a guy comes out with an AK, points it right at his window point blank, dumps all 30 rounds. He's like, he chews halfway through this fucking glass. And I'd like to say that I was brave and I like reacted or said something like, let's get him. But I actually went, ah! <laughs> <laughs> he's like, what am I putting my hands up for? Like, I'm going to stop the bullets. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he's like the thing was, though, they took off after he dumped his mag, but we're in heavy Baghdad traffic. He made it maybe 90 feet, and then they got to stop, and this real awkward kind of, uh-oh, kind of moment happens, because they had one AK and one magazine. So I got out. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, just, well, well, let's just say that was the end of them. And I'm like, no, <laughs> let's not just say that. Tell me, tell me what you did to them, bro. Like, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm here for this. Um, so I really like those special forces guys talking about, I, you know, special forces raids because we did so much crazy shit that wasn't in the news. They're talking about countries I didn't know we did wars in. I didn't know we had a war in Yemen and Libya in the early 2000s. <laughs> we were just all over the fucking world smoking people, apparently. Probably are now. Yeah, yeah, oh, Yemen's going to take off special forces again. in Israel right now or Ukraine. I hope. Like, I, I definitely in de- 100%, 100% Ukraine. Ukraine. We can't get caught, right? Like there can't be Americans there. That'll be a big deal. The, I bet the Americans that are there, if they are caught, won't register as Americans to whoever caught them, would be my guess. Yeah, I, I considered that too. Might work. I don't know. I, I, I don't I don't know anything that you that you don't. Um, I guess they're right. But, um, <laughs> I think you said it right. Yeah, yeah but uh, I doubt we have anybody in Israel because we're so weird about that anyway. Uh, if anything, we've probably got some like people back on like whatever the green zone is like. I don't know, maybe oh. there to help in some way. I went the other way. I thought we were more likely to be in Israel because we're closer allies, I think. And what's Palestine going to do? Like, we don't want Russia to get into a hot war with America. Mm-hmm. But the the PLO, 
who gives a fuck if they get into a? Well, hot it's not. War it's not that? really them. We they like, don't want to lose. They don't want to lose Americans. In it, that. Israel isn't like principally concerned with Hamas as far as a competitor in the region. It's Hezbollah, and so that's why they're gonna. I think, it's, I, think, I think it's likely that they continue to and like do a real invasion of Lebanon at some point in the future, because that's where. Well, they were, they're already bombing Lebanon because they're they, saying uh, they're taking out Hezbollah sites. And then that, you know, the Hezbollah alliance between those guys in Lebanon and in Iran, where kind of the, the meat of the power of Hezbollah comes from. I think it's going to I think it, it's a bit more risky than a, a lot of us realize over there. No, like I, I, I think I think it is. I, I one of those CIA right. guys, they asked him um, how will World War World War three begin. They asked him a question like that. He's, and he said that. He's like, I think it already started. I think it started when Russia invaded Ukraine. That was the beginning of World War III. And we're slowly, and, you know, the, the forces are all coalescing now with the United States and Canada and Germany. And this time, very, very seemingly Poland, like, like, like really beefing up, pulling together. And like, they're very proud to be communists these days. It used to be a naughty word. We have commissions. We dug them out and exposed them and blacklisted them. Those Ned mm -hmm. Isakoff looking mother McCarthy, the hero. You know what I'm talking Make about, Make it Taylor. a dirty word again. Remember Ned Isaacoff? Who? Ned Isaacoff. Oh, Ned Isaacoff. Yes. Yep. He of got course blacklisted. I know. Yeah, yeah, he got blacklisted from Hop Sings. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Named names. Named names. Oh, name, name. And then he <laughs> Dude, I'd name so many names under torture. I was watching this thing about Korea. I'd be pilots. making up crimes, selling everyone I know down the river. And and don't even think for a second that it would take more than a threat. <laughs> I'm, uh, uh, I'm not getting tortured. They say implied discomfort is plenty. Yeah. <laughs> they say, hey, hey, what are you trying to miss dinner? Like <laughs> <laughs> they come at Taylor with like hair clippers. He's like, no, no, no. <laughs> no Don't cut no. my hair. No! Like, no! Anything you want. <laughs> I can't. I can't reveal my, my chin. <laughs> no, I have a big fat face, and this is keeping it all together. Please, no. <laughs> these, uh, these two like, guys. This is why guys have beards to help. Facial like, contouring for men. It works. 100%. It works. It is, I, I will I, never not have a beard ever. <laughs> uh, on, th so, so these two American pilots go down over Korea. They, they capture them. They beat the shit out of them and stuff. And uh, the guy was talking about being in. They called it the Hanoi Hilton. It was where all the American POWs were were housed in uh, in Hanoi, obviously. And uh, for many years, John McCain was there. Uh, a lot of famous pilots that got shot down over in, in POWs were. But he said that only like five or six Americans ever gave more than name, um, like number, rank, rank, and whatever the fuck. He's like, only five of us out of 1,200. That's not so bad. And you know what? They didn't go home any earlier. They didn't get any special treatment. But when they got out, we filed charges on him. It's like, damn. <laughs> this guy, he was talking about the knock system that he had to use to communicate with another human being for years. He explained like putting the alphabet into this five by five block and excluding the letter C because you don't need it. And like knocking to communicate through walls. C so can be replaced with K like most of the time. Yeah. Okay. Um, or so he's, so he's, you know, knocking in these five by five sort of Morse code system through the walls. Somebody be like, just got tortured real bad, can't take it anymore. And they'd be like, we've all been through it. You can take it, like hyping each other up to like, and years they were there, you know, three, four, five, six years at a time, those guys were over there just getting tortured. They would hang them from their arms backwards and stuff. John McCain, no, that, dude, that's I'm, I'm doing like an hour long set of telling them everything I know. After, <laughs> after the thing about the San minutes. Diego air base is whoo, not a lot of anti air <laughs> out there. You know what I mean? <laughs> Black <laughs> cannon, <laughs> more like fat cannons. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you have your horn? Damn it. Oh, fuck. <laughs> God damn it. Where's my horn? <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, I, I would. I guess if I was in the military, maybe I'd feel differently. Um, but man, I don't want to get roughed up at all. It's in me. Like when I watch torture scenes, I'm always thinking, I, I can't take it, man. I can't take what are it. The like, ones that me. get you, like the torture, because I know waterboarding is hell, terrible. But that one doesn't get me because it's like your teeth aren't being pulled out. Mm -hmm. You're like you still, your fingers are still gonna work. I'd rather get my teeth pulled out than waterboarded. I'd rather uh mm. no. You've never done the waterboarding thing. So yeah, I've never had, I, 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 really, never had but, I, but I've had a taste. 
and it's uh it's very scary and you, the water is in your like windpipe and in your nasal passages so you're always just blowing it out you're covered with like snot and your eyes are you can never you can't see your 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 knees are above your head you're down and you you're just you can't get it out cuz they they're holding <clears> that <throat> cloth here so you spit but it doesn't come out it just falls right back in your windpipe and you get this gasp it's i even now i'm getting a little short short of breath thinking about it it's it's, it would, it's it would bad. Be terrible See, I, it's bad i'm sure it's terrible and i've never had it so i might change my tune if if i yeah. were to experience it but having never been tortured the things i worry about most are the permanent disfigurement you know mm-hmm. like uh even if it just cut off my one earlobe i'm like well fuck it i don't think i can get that back no oh, yeah. now unless i got some good he holds on to it for you i'd rather lose the ear than the nose though because i've yeah. seen those fake no, ears shit. those it's essentially like Mr. Potato Head now when you lose a nose or an ear. Man, the ears look good. Nobody ever know. Can you imagine a chick sucking on your earlobe? I pick the ear because it's Pop the, it right off. Because it's the like, <laughs> don't stop, bitch. It's, the, the, it's not functional. It doesn't I do anything. It. It's just a mild cosmetic thing. Yeah. Dude, we had a guy in my high school with a fucked up earlobe genetically. He was like ostracized. And it looked like bullied. like a hippo's ear, like this little thing. It almost looked like a cleft chin, like it had a divot in it that wasn't supposed to be there, like a pussy almost. In his earlobe? Uh, yeah, the lobule? bottom of his earlobe, and the I think so. Yeah, instead of being like a natural curve, like it's supposed to be, it had like a vagina crack in it. And Damn, y'all kids are so that. fucking mean. Oh my y'all, god, he committed was, suicide. It, how noticeable because was. of that. Well, because of his ostracized life, yeah. Oh. Dude, I'd have gotten that. Like during high school, he did? Mm-mm. That's he so was like easy a to freshman fix? in college. It was right after high school. Oh, that's terrible. It was maybe like the middle one. Yeah, yeah. Well, in dude, the middle one looks totally fine compared to that left one. What's going on there? <laughs> yeah, the left one's a boy, the middle one's a girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The one on the, the right, right, the right looks one like looks like you could just knock that, whatever that thing is, right off. It's Charlie oh, Brown, I, that thing sticks out sideways. Yeah, the, the one on the right. None of these are good ears. That guy on the right can't walk through doorways. <laughs> no. That's so gross. I'm glad I don't have any ear pussy going on. You got almost like an elf ear the thing. The funny thing, though, oh, you know what I just noticed? That guy on the left, that's not a genetic thing. I bet that he had his ear gauged and it blew. <laughs> oh, dude, I bet you're right. <laughs> I'm, probably, I'm probably wrong because I just haven't ever seen an ear with a tail. That's all. Have you? Do you know anybody who has gauged ears? Yeah. My girlfriend. No, no, I should, men. Do you know any men that have I'm t- I'm large gauge ears? You're supposed to make fun of my girlfriend if she has gauged ears. That's so gross. I, I, I knew you wouldn't date Don't a girl with back. gauged ears. <laughs> oh my God. I saw a bitch with a gauged mouth the other day. Like, you oh, you're drink. watching her fucking chew. You can see her, you can see her bottom row. It was as big Dude, as a nickel. A, she's like uh she's like the body exhibit at the science museum. You can see <laughs> <I'd> like how, <laughs> how masticated. I'm sticking works. my dick in there. Yeah, you would. you'd have to. Yeah. Yeah. Ear too. That's where the best blowjobs are, right at the lower teeth. <laughs> yeah. That's Those a, go. a quality angle. Yeah, no, I, I know someone who in college got gauged ears and they did that thing where they got bigger and they went a little bigger and now they don't want it anymore and they got it sewed up and it looks terrible. Yeah. Like oh, they really? they cannot like it's like almost like a folded up flower. Like there's like a, a like a scrunchie almost. Like a I scrunchie. They were, I, I wonder I if he it. went to someone not super talented. I, I thought they were able to really make gauged ears look okay. He probably could have, but these are people who make decisions to gauge their ears. So they're not like Touché. they're not on Angie's list, you know, like looking, <laughs> up, looking up reviews on these surgeons and shit. Yeah. I mean no. nothing, you know, to each his own. They're going right to not. the ER. I don't know. <laughs> so I, I don't want to fuck with us. But yeah, I was thinking of like the the torture <laughs> the stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I know that what we did, I've watched a lot of stuff about the CIA's uh, torture mm-hmm. um, early on and those two guys who wrote the book on it. Um, and um, so so the most effective techniques they decided was sleep deprivation and something called walling. So walling is when you shove someone against a wall real hard and they like flat against their back and knocks all the wind out of them. And uh, apparently there's some sort of fucking brain reaction to that 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 yeah, really makes pain. you bitch up no not just pain but knocking the the wind out of them and that that big blunt trauma and just they said that those two things were all they you really needed to do however um they would do they would they would waterboard for hours m- dozens of sessions um that one guy i'm gonna get his name wrong might have been abu sharib uh he's the one who they took one of his eyes out 
surgically as part of his torture and kept it. Jesus. Um, but they would put him in, and they would put you in this tiny box, uh, like in a little like pet crate, but it's not a pet crate. It's a plywood box made to torture people in because it's so, so tiny and lock you up in it. And they had slots to check on you with a flashlight. And they just pour roaches in his because he was terrified of them and leave oh. him in there for like a day. Um, they would, uh, um, what was the other thing? Lots of music, like playing continuously. They used Barney a lot, apparently, and lots of death metal and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Um, they wouldn't Kinda give like them clothes. Uh, continuous liquid diet for years. Liquid diet for years. Um, which meant they're like shitting themselves constantly because they don't get, all they get is a diaper maybe. But That's usually they would make the diapers out of duct tape. Ah, oh, like a burlap yeah. diaper? No, like you just start wrapping their ass with duct tape. And that, no you got a way. diaper now. Yeah. yeah. That's worse than waterboarding. This <laughs> is giving you a duct tape diaper? He would be, their room was, there was nothing in the room except for a drain and a, a hook on the floor and a hook on the ceiling to, to chain you to. And the length of your chain depended on how, how much of a good boy you were. This was what we did. This oh, isn't. Yeah, yeah. This isn't even when we sent them to like Syria or Thailand. These aren't even or, black box. Like uh, what no. they, black sites, black box site, whatever. Those I, are I, th- I think this was a black site, but it was one that that we were operating in. This is actually one that we were operating in Thailand. Another we were operating in Afghanistan. But the um the black sites when they sent when they send someone over to let Syria work on them, like hey Syria, would you handle this guy for us? Work on him. They pull your fingernails and rape you and electrocute you and beat you for a year until you're not a person anymore. You know, they're, they're super hardcore about it. Dude, there's a, I was reading this article, this, and you probably heard about it. It may have even been in the Syria black site that some poor, like, guy in his early 20s who was a taxi driver was like literally wrong place, wrong time mm-hmm. situation. And he was tortured ruthlessly at a black site for like, <clears throat> 10 months for like, time, yeah, like, like a year. And the, like they, they killed him. They killed him through torture. And like yeah. the, the body examination afterward was like on the Wikipedia page, it used like the term pulpified to describe his legs, meaning like there was no structure in his legs anymore after ha- like it was just beaten to a pulp, like just shards of bone. Who did and, this? Uh, the, like CIA connected black site, uh, I think okay. in Syria. What we would, what they would do, they would, they would have a name, and they'd have like maybe two or two or three other pieces of metadata. Okay, his name is Abu mm-hmm. Shah something, and he's got a beard. He's twenty seven, and he lives in Canada, but he's in Syria a lot. Unfortunately, there's like fifteen guys that that, that also do all that shit, mm-hmm. <laughs> and so they scooped up this one guy from Canada and did all the shit we talked about. Yeah, and uh, he he's at, he doesn't leave his house now. They said they said he's been in, in his house for the last six years because they tortured him in Syria for ten months and lied to his wife and told him that they didn't have him. And she's like, "Yeah, but he bought me sunglasses on the plane that was going from Syria to Canada. Yeah. You oh. took him off the plane yeah. <laughs> and flew him back to Syria. That was the professor, for 10 months. right? Yeah, that was a professor. He was a college, he was a college yeah. professor. Yeah." The Pretty fucked. one basketball player. Yeah, man, I'm 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 glad that uh you know I it's didn't knock me. down any, any towers or anything. Man, you you don't mess with the US government. Like even if you do have some bad thoughts out there, you, don't just let it go. Keep it, it to go. yourself. They're they play keep for keeps. They, they, they play for fucking keeps at that level. When you go to championship level law enforcement, <laughs> those are the Jordans of <laughs> the law enforcement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're there with the flu they don't care how many years did that guy get for days. putting his feet on nancy pelosi's desk is it like seven i don't know they're not gonna send him two. to a black site oh it's two i i don't know they all got mm. like two to six years it seems like a whole bunch of fucking people uh oh. they're still getting them those the, the people who took down big animals with like adolatles back in the back in the ancient times yeah eh. saber tooth tigers those are scary well, we're even yeah. alive at the same time as Saber Two Tigers. Yeah, the Mylodon. Yes, yes, we were. Yeah, the, they always, think uh... that. So I was taught growing up that all the megafauna died because of the change in climate, but now I think that they think a lot of that megafauna, the giant animals, died because um, of us that we hunted them to extinction. Extinction. Are animals fauna. Yeah. Yeah. Flora. Yeah. Floral. Oh, is um, that's what I'm mixing up. Thank you. Um, yeah. No problem. And so the uh, th- there was this one animal, this gigantic um, 
armadillo that used to live. And we, they think that we, we hunted those in particular to extinction because we were living in their shells. That's how big <laughs> they were. We would kill these, these. Their shells were big enough to live in. Well, that's what I saw Mike say. It's like, like today elephants. I said. saw the, um, the bones of a 600,000-year-old woolly mammoth. That's cool. Oh, in person. Yeah. I went to a little, I was in town. There was a little museum. And I was like, I can't not walk in the museum. Like, what is in the Shoshone, California Museum? I have to yeah. see it. Like, I had just seen the Bonnie and Clyde car and got like super into it. I was watching Bonnie and Clyde movies last night. I saw The Highwaymen with um, Kevin Costner. I'm reading the Bonnie and Clyde Wikipedia, like getting all into Bonnie. I'm like a Bonnie and Clyde aficionado now. I was watching one of those, uh, one of those things about our ancestors, and, and they were talking about um, how we competed with the, Neanderth the Neanderthals okay. and uh, how. They suggested that they were big and powerful enough to kind of take on a lot of those giant animals on their own. Like just three or four of them would just jump up rhino and just beat its ass with clubs and spears. And if it hit them, they could take it. They were just that big and strong. But there were more of us and we were more cooperative. And uh, we also, because they were so big and bulky, they didn't make the tech tree leap to ranged weaponry. Ah, we, that's a big leap. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we went to Adel Adels. Gotta invest that 400 gold into the yeah, no. edge, bro. <laughs> Gotta get those Adel Adels and those slings. Gotta go up to feudal. Yeah. Uh, and then, because obviously we wanted to take on game at a, at a range. Uh, What's range. an Adel Adel? You mentioned it a few times today. How does it Adel Adels are cool. So it's um it's a spear throwing device. And the, the oh. spear is kind of part of it. So it's, a, it's a mechanism, but there's this handle that um, you hold. And in the back, it's got a bit a, sort of a notch that holds the the spear the spear will have a corresponding notch and uh you're able to flick it and literally throw a spear it's not exactly a spear it's more of a a bolt or or or, or, or a javelin type thing but twice as far as, as a man can throw him with his arm yeah mm -hmm. i get it yeah yeah so i can throw a ball so fast but if i have like a lacrosse stick or something i can exactly do exactly yeah yeah i i've seen would, people that'd use be like them a perfect hunting weapon would be like a uh like back in those days would just be like one of those little fucking things that you throw the dog, the tennis ball with you know, just put, rocks <laughs> just put rocks in it, just start pegging it and shit. I mean, that's, that's <laughs> our ancestors. That. Like, like, like that was step one, right? Throwing rocks and yeah. sticks. Mm -hmm. Like, like, like yeah. that would be enough to fuck up a pheasant every now and then or, or, or knock a yeah. rabbit down. Like mm -hmm. I bet I if your you life depended on, a turkey on it or something you, with a rock, I mean, you could like, not like a turkey. A but if it's turkey, slow and you're lucky, no, not a turkey in particular, but but you know rabbits. From a height, yeah. There's a I'm lot of animals. Fuck. I'd, I'd end up killing my uh, killing my cave wife or something. I'd throw a rock and just hit her in the back of the fucking head or some shit. Yeah, what are they gonna do? Put you in jail? There's a lot of animals. <laughs> there's a lot of animals that their first defense mechanism is to freeze and try to not move and and be like, does he see me? Does he see me? And that works just fine as long as you don't have something to throw at them, you know. Mm -hmm. But but. All the all the things that do that would have gotten fucked up by our ancestors that figured out rocks and sticks. Yeah, <laughs> and then like after the Adelaide, like the bow and arrow must have been like, oh, oh Jesus! Like everyone's <laughs> blown away. Yeah, it's interesting. the The spear was the was the best melee weapon for all time until the then then the gun happened. Like, like they started out with the the Andertals started out and they're like, oh, spear, this is it. And we never really got any better than a spear. Like, like i think yeah. that like when they look at the medieval combat like even the height of like 14th 15th 16th century oh no, we lost you kyle. kyle we lost you after 16th century and i want to know because i'm curious about this <laughs> about what yeah. the facts are one two three you're good yeah, got, yeah. yes 16th century interesting why isn't he Suspense. talking we hear you oh he doesn't hear he us needs... fuck we hear you. Hear we hear you. Well, I know we you can hear me, but I can't hear, hear you. you. Okay. Is, he, is, he, he gets it. He gets it. <laughs> we don't need to hear me either. You don't know you need to hear me to tell your story. Tell your Guys, story. Guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna make <laughs> up the rest of his story. So, yeah. <laughs> I love this. Yes, the please. Spear so the spice man from, came. The, from the inception of weaponry up until the 14th, 15th, 16th century was seen as the penultimate weapon, is what Kyle would say incorrectly. Uh <laughs> The spear was you, you. You there? Yeah. Okay. Tell us about how the spear was the best weapon from Stone Age until the 16th. The gun. Century. Until the gun. Until the gun. It was the best weapon. 
because it's nothing beats a spear. Right? What, nothing, not even a, a bow and arrow. No, I'm talking about melee weapons. Like, like oh, bow, and oh, okay. bow and arrow beats all the melee weapons. It's <laughs> <laughs> <That's> like <laughs> you. <laughs> oh, does it hurt? Oh, it's hard to catch I, me I like, now, I isn't really it? I really like that. Uh, I got like thirty the of them. <laughs> evolution of armor. Like, uh, if you oh, watch cool. what, like, what people wore, like, because you had like no armor. And then everyone started using swords because swords were like, yeah, this is the dope thing. Like, we can now make dope swords. And then they're like, yeah, okay, let's wear, like, plate armor. This will work. And then they're like, oh, well, swords aren't really good against that, so let's start using different shit. And then they're like, oh, we'll, we'll use chain mail. And then they invented the crossbow, and then they're like, okay, none of this armor is fucking useful at all, so let's just not wear armor. And then it it just, like, went from went from wearing, like, fucking heaps of shit to just wearing nothing and then yeah. now we're yeah. like oh now now we have armor Let's... i think yeah. in like the like like those like 14 1500s pictures stuff like like war hammers and like mauls were more popular because you couldn't just punch through the plate mail so they would yeah. just like hit you with a fucking hammer with a spike on the end and like cave your chest cap at the end my yeah. my my guess would be that like what we're talking about is the the richest of the rich, the knights and the and the uh, and and the like the oh, badasses yeah. on the battlefield. I if you if you took like a 14th, 15th, 16th century bat- battlefield and you took a census out there of all the bodies, I bet most of them got poked with a spear. And then right below that, they got hit in the head with a stick. And then right below yeah. that, <laughs> they got like ran over by a horse. And like all the way at the bottom was those 18 knights who got hit with war hammers. <laughs> you know, you well, know, I because... mean, that makes sense though, because like the, like, it's not like every dude was walking around with plate armor. That was like exactly. a status thing. So like yeah. most of them were walking around in jerkins, just getting fucked up by arrows that were, you know, like yeah. bodkin arrows that are sharper. I think that and depends on their... the time and like how much money yeah. the army had though. Cause like, they like, say like Agincourt, like in the 1600s when England invaded France, like they talked about having like, thousands of armored like fucking men and like the french had fuckloads and they're on horseback and mm. then they got fucked up because the british were like well we got heaps of longbows but they didn't have shit loads of money so they were like yeah we'll just use fuckloads of longbows so oh yeah and that the britons were very good with archery. what was the famous what was the famous battle where um the, the it, england's invading france their king is invading france and they have the big battle where they go to the french right they go the french into coming through the muddy that's, field that's agincourt that is that's a yeah, battle of Ag- 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 that, Ag- yeah that's uh that's the one that's the subject of that movie on netflix i think it's just called the king uh, the king yeah yeah, yeah. It, they, they get a little creative with the history but not too far it's not like it's william wallace out there all of a sudden like like nah there's a few things that just didn't happen, but um, apparently, like how muddy and sticky that field was, is the quagmire of death it created was pretty cool. And yeah. Uh, but but yeah, they they basically goaded the French into charging across a really muddy field into archer fire <laughs> coming from three directions. Yeah. Well, I think yeah. um, uh, Robert the Bruce did that as well to the uh, to the King of England uh, at some stage during the Scottish Independence. They like the battle that sort of turned the tide was essentially they had some kind of bog or like mire and then they goaded them into coming down this like specific road where it was like oh. a bog on either side and then they had like fucking heaps of uh heaps of those like dug into the ground spears i didn't see that in the like, movie yeah they did try, do that uh, the they did the thing where they're like oh, oh no 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 oh no no this oh. isn't in brave this isn't in brave heart this is uh then no, it didn't happen bro, no, no. <laughs> All no, right, well, Robert, they don't need Mel to sign off yeah, on it for me. Robert the Bruce was, like, <laughs> the guy after... He, he like, sort of unified England after William Wallace died. But yeah. uh, Sorry, unified Scotland after William Wallace died. But they no, had, the, like, this the movie battle. He also movie has a movie on Netflix, but and they have uh, Chris yeah. Pine play him. I mean, and, I, he, I, and he hangs Don. Yeah, he does. He does hang on. I'm gonna be honest. I really, I don't like Chris Pine. Wait, I don't know why. I just watch that motherfucker, and I'm just like, you are it's so called, like, boring. It's called Who's like Chris the Bandit Pine? King or uh, something the Outlaw like that. King. It is the Outlaw King. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it Chris came Pine out. is awesome. I don't, I don't I'm still a fan. Guy. I don't know why. I'm a huge like fan. Star Trek movies. Star Trek is yeah. so good. Oh no, I'm, I actually I do like him in uh, Star Trek, but everything else he just fucking blows. Like he's just like he plays a great Kirk. 
Uh, I, I he's not a great he has any emotion. You're describing a guy who hangs dong and blows. I want to see this movie. I thought he was pretty good. <laughs> in the King. It was okay. I, it, it, like, he's Robert not Bruce I'm not, is the like, one. I'm not who... gonna write a letter to my dad and tell him about it. Like he's not that fucking good. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. In watching the Ukrainian thing, I realized how much I don't know about how war is conducted, and and the, from yeah. the tactics of how you navigate a tree mm-hmm. line to the strategy of what how you know when you might use a pincher movement, I still get baffled by like. Say there's a front line, someone makes some progress, and now there's a bulge in that front line. Why is that bulge good for me? Because I feel surrounded, right? And, and then on the other hand, when they make the bulge, they are surrounded. I get very lost as to who has the advantage. Like I, I know the basics, like high ground is good, but it has shined a spotlight on how little I know about how to conduct a war. And yeah. that's what he wants to know. And it also, like, to me, it, it, it shows how impressive like ancient warfare was and how they had to communicate like look how difficult communication is in a modern war with walkie talkies and radio and like instant things imagine like tens of thousands of people on horseback or on foot and the advanced relaying of information you'd have to do the anticipating of what moves you were having to do because you can't wait until real time to respond like Flags i just it horns. made me think about that and it was like god damn like there's a reason alexander the great is still looked at like that because he didn't just win with numbers he defeated people with way more numbers all the time because he was so good at that it, i've been watching incredible. um there's a mini series on netflix about uh i think it's like 16th century J- Jap- japan and this uh this leader who was like a minor leader in the smallest province who conquered like ninety five percent of the island of Japan um, with his armies, and those armies would be like forty thousand versus forty thousand samurai. And uh, this guy was really innovative. It, it, it's been a cool show. The first thing he did, he was like, "We need peasants. Fuck all these like highborn like this and that. It's, arm the peasants. They're with us. They'll fight for for everything. You know, mm-hmm. if they win, they're they're going somewhere in life. They'll fight harder than a rich man." And then um, he imported the the guns like the they were shitty guns they were the ones that have like a a a, bur- a a burning fuse on the back and when you pull the trigger the fuse touches the powder and yeah. we did start, who is this he was a the... japanese warlord who conquered oh, okay. all of japan in, in the 1500s and uh, so he set up these barricades with like spikes on the front and you'd have like three or four riflemen in each one and three or four bowmen in each one and then three or four spearmen at each one so the rifleman would be shooting, and when they're reloading, the bows are covering them, and if anybody gets too close, the spear guys stick them. And, and all the enemies are trying to ride on horseback, and they can't, and they can't run them over because they're behind the big spiky shields. And they just slaughtered, like, huge, huge amounts. Like, like it, there would be 4,000 versus 4,000, and 1,200 of the enemy would, would die, which is apparently a, a huge number. They talked about presenting him with 5,000 heads at one point. It was, uh, oh. It's been fun. I can't I always there's so much ritual suicide back I, I don't know it but but for 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 that to be true like every historian on every continent would be be exaggerating right because this is the Jap, this is the Japanese and their records saying 30,000 versus 30,000 oh, yeah. and, and stuff I, like I was that. meaning like like a lot of people th- like in the Macedonian histories or whatever it's like Alexander the Great defeated a million Persians and it's like well he defeated a shit ton of Persians, <laughs> probably not a million Persians. A lot of you know? Persians. It's probably not a million. Like, the same way that, like, in the Bible, every time you see the number, like, 144,000 or whatever. Or, like, okay. They, that that well, just means, like, a shit ton. <laughs> I, I know that cit- one of those cities, the uh, maybe the capital, um, when uh, the Spanish came over and conquered, was, like, the third or fourth biggest city in the planet. It was, it was like, half a million people or something. No, it was more. It was, it was the third or fourth biggest uh, city on the planet at the time. Is that they the city? population uh, density? It was like on an island, and it was uh, the population density of modern modern day New York. Ugh. Where I believe uh, in South America. That when uh, is it Cortez? Was he the one doing it all when the Spanish came over and conquered? He's Mexico to me, but I'm not sure. Yeah, Cortez conquered that. What were you saying, John? Uh, so I believe originally the Spaniards before they got. Uh, well, what people believe for the population size is actually 10 times bigger back then. I guess what happened when the Spaniards went over, they did bring over disease and they just kind of like killed them all by accident. And yeah. which is why when people came back, though, there wasn't so many cities anymore. It's just because the disease went rampant. 
Yeah. Did it yeah, ever work the uh, other way? Because without cities, they just didn't build immunities and sickness. Is that because like I why think, is it when Europe comes to America or South America, they bring tons of disease, but they don't get any. So they the reason tons. is is apparently because well there there are some diseases they get, but uh, I, what I've read and who knows how true it is is that because the Europeans had been uh, breeding and raising like animals and shit for so long, like being around pigs and cows and chickens and all that stuff has a bunch of disease that you're exposed to all the time, and if you're not raising pigs and animal husbandry and shit like some of those guys weren't when they showed up in south america they weren't used to all those pathogens that you got just being around chickens well, and cows well also what you got to keep in mind is like smallpox is very deadly and and a yeah. lot of these people would have already had smallpox and survived it and that means you're immune to smallpox but it doesn't mean you're not they had tons of animals with those fleas on them with the fucking small no that's not how smallpox is spread Oh, what do you mean? No, but that it was, is how smallpox is inoculated. That's how the right? plague There's something spread. about cows giving you a non-deadly version. Is it smallpox smallpox? basically like chicken pox? Yeah, it's Ma, just like it's way more, deadly, more severe. Yeah. 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 yeah, and scarring. Like I, I think they um I remember. I think that's watching... what it was. It was smallpox for South America. There's there's mm -hmm. a couple of documentaries that talks about that. Yeah, but I just yeah. don't know how it spreads. How does smallpox does it do you call skin contact? Cough, right? Skin contact. Really? Skin I remember watching the easiest way to avoid a disease. I can't remember what I watched not too long mm, ago. I think it was the John boring. Adams documentary, <laughs> but they were showing how they inoculated for smallpox back then. They the doctor rolled up in front of these rich people's house with a dying boy who had smallpox in a wagon and cut open one of his sores. He's like, "It's easy, boy. One last time," and like cuts open his sore and takes the the pus out and then goes in with like a pus covered mirror. And like scratches it with a needle and starts stabbing everybody in the family in the oh. arm repeatedly, giving them little pus injections. And and like he told that. her he's like, and, and because they were doing it like that and not whatever modern methods we have of weakening the the virus or whatever or bacterium whatever, um, one of the girls got just got smallpox. <laughs> he's like. It may be light or it may be heavy. It's like this isn't a period, motherfucker. This is smallpox, yeah. and the one kid's in bed. But by the time they find out, sores. I'm two towns away, freaking some other family with my. As fucking Kyle was telling that story, I had no idea where it was going. He's like, they take the boy from place to place, they pierce it, they get the schmear, and I'm like, is this going on crackers? What? What's coming next? Are we having peanut butter no, jelly and crackers. smallpox? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be disgusting. You have to it's like, uh, you know what? I'm not looking the sore juice. I'll just take my chances. <laughs> I watched uh, that, that Graham Hancock guy, the, the guy I like from Joe Rogan, um, the one who theorizes about the last I, Ice Age. Um, is he the Gugepli Techie or something? Yeah, yeah he is. Um, he's got, they, they gave him a Netflix show. Look at that, and I haven't listened to any of those. Dude, the Joe Rogan, <laughs> the Joe Rogan power is strong. Like, like it got that guy a Netflix show. He's got a big deal Netflix uh, series. Um, it's like, I don't know, four, five, six e um, episodes. There's a lot of archaeologists already just shitting on it and being like, this is blasphemy. I and mean, it's <laughs> so funny because right off the bat in his, in his show, he, he, in his show on Netflix, he's like talking about how archaeology tries to shut him down left and right, talking about how like they don't want, like mainstream archaeology hates us at every step. They tried to befoul us <laughs> or whatever nonsense he says. And uh, he's, he's intersplicing these clips of the Joe Rogan experience and him talking to Joe Rogan, like in the episode of this show. But it's pretty good. I only watched the first episode. They went to, um, I don't know, some dirty uh, jungle. And there was this uh, this like step pyramid thing made out of these sort of hexagonal uh rocks Ooh. that are volcanic in nature but they must have hauled them 500 miles or something um seemed like a bunch of horse shit to me but i was thinking that maybe the future episodes might have some more likely uh um ancient that seems fun and you know what like in the field of archaeology like if some guy was like yeah i'm a mathematician and everybody's doing it wrong i'd be like <laughs> obviously you're a goof because all these other people have their their maths in a field like archaeology I'm I'm willing to believe this. Like this guy's at least right on a thing or two. Like they're archaeologists. Get real. There's so much shit you haven't found. You don't know the right timing. There was a story that came out a couple weeks ago where like a formerly like debunked Roman emperor who was a total myth. They found coins with his face on it, and they were like, okay, he was real. 
Like, <laughs> okay, this guy was a real Roman emperor. We just found coins with his face on it. Like, it was previously thought to be a myth. Now, like, to think we know, like, anything, like, every everything, I guess I would say. Like, that's crazy. Of course, there's stuff we don't know. There's probably I really whole, like the idea of those of those civilizations that predate, like... Uh, that is cool. You know, the Ice Age. They, they go back to, like... I, I like the idea of, I don't know, people living in giant pyramids with uh, infrastructure and technology with like mammoths pulling their sleds and like worrying about saber tooth tigers and shit. Like, like, like I, I, I like that world. That's a cool yeah. world. There was a, I've mentioned it before, but there's that awful movie, 10,000 BC. And that's the whole premise. It's like apocalypto, but time but shifted bad. to 10,000 BC. Yeah. If you want to watch a great movie though, of, that Mel Gibson's apocalypto is always, always the, just the tip of my tongue when I'm recommending things to people. Hmm. It's a good movie. I haven't seen Apocalypto like I think I saw it in theaters and then that was the most recent time I've seen it. Maybe I remember liking it, thinking it was really cool. Yeah, it's so, fun. It's really violent. Mel Gibson's, isn't it like uh, it's about like the Mayans, the Incas? I get the Mayans and the Aztecs, Aztecs mixed up. But yeah, it's about those uh, South American brown people and uh, and how like yeah, the, the narrative is that these guys are in like a small tribe and they're getting kidnapped and their village is getting ransacked by the people who live in like the big city where they, mm. you know, sacrifice people to the gods and have those giant pyramids and everything. And so they have to go out in the jungle to the little tribes and grab people for those sacrifices. And you see not through language because I don't, there's no English. It's all in some ancient dialect, but I don't think there's subtitles, but you kind of just visually learn through the visual storytelling. Cause Mel Gibson is an amazing director that this mm. is a failing culture there is famine, there's disease, and the reason that they're out here hauling all of these people up to be sacrificed is to try to stop it. They're trying to stop the the rot that's that's consuming them from the within. And then you see it at the end that the I'll call him the wizard, but you know the the, the head priest, the uh, the astronomer, um, probably a slash astrologer, is has been able to predict that the there's going to be an eclipse. And he's like giving the king the nod so that he can like pretend like he's the one making the sun disappear. And you can mm-hmm. just imagine the power that that would create for your your leader. If you showed up because the boss said he was going to flock the sun from the sky today and you're like, bullshit, we'll show up, do it. And he went, oh, <laughs> and the sun disappeared. Oh, yeah. You, I mean, I'm you got to do boss. what that guy says. You got to do what that hmm. guy says. Like if, if you can, like Jesus, what could he do to me? Yeah. Don't say, Je- don't say anything about Jesus. He hates that. He hates that. <laughs> he does not care for it one bit. Yeah. The, the Aztecs, like the, uh, like, obviously it's like up in the air, but like the amount of people they purportedly sacrificed is like insane. Like thousands of people a year are some of like the lower estimates. Like, Really? So ma- they said sa- human sacrifice. They were like, it was just another Wednesday. Dang, busted. Like they killed another Wednesday. So they just sacrificed <laughs> so many people in their, I guess, to their gods or whatever. I don't, I don't know anything about like the Aztec religion. Like, well, maybe mythology. that's why things went so well for them, Taylor. Yeah, yeah. Mm, well, uh, what Grant Hancock? Didn't. Always... But you may, but you may not know this, Woody. It didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, it, you may not know this. I think if I think Spain pushed their shit in. <laughs> like I think, uh-huh. <laughs> I think Spain showed up and was like, "Oh, like you guys are in Dark Age." Oh my God! That like you know like we've had gunpowder for like a real long time. Like Aztecs are like, man, we, we shouldn't have killed all the time. adventures. Yeah, we should. <laughs> yeah, we shouldn't have killed that guy who came up with that really mysterious shining bulb. Like <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> he, he could have helped. Yeah, like that. That was like a poor guy in history. The 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 Aztec Ben Franklin. It's like, guys, well, great news. <laughs> then it just cuts to his head bouncing down stone steps. <laughs> well, it's no, interesting. Like, like, like the Romans had little steam powered toys, but they had no concept to industrialize steam power. You know what I mean? Like, like, and then there's been a lot of discussion. There's a whole YouTube channels that go on about it for hours about could the Romans have been on the verge of an industrial revolution a thousand years before the real one? You That's know, could, totally realistic. Like, like, yeah. Well, they break happen. down a lot of reasons why the empire would, wouldn't have been able to support such a thing. Something uh, about raw materials. No, but like if they and, had stayed, if they hadn't been like invaded by Germanic tribes and and all of that. Well, I mean, eventually, yeah. But but they, you know, they already like what was to stop them from doing it 
then and there was the sort of the the question if they if they already understand steam power and the power of steam to because they had they they had these toys and basically like you put water under it and this little thing like walks around and spins and shit and it's mm-hmm. like if you can do that you make a steam drill to mine with and like any number of like locomotive type inventions yeah uh, you know thousands of years or a thousand years before Am I we did? messing up my empires? But didn't the Romans like go into Europe and maybe have the resources they'd need? Uh, it was less about like access to the resources and more about the way their economy was set up. I think, and uh, the, the like the the way things, the way that an entrepreneur would not be um, rewarded for you know coming up with a new thing hmm. that didn't fit the mold of the empire. Uh, you know, it, it's like oh, you got a new way of make yeah look everyone does it this way they'd have been slow to change and or it would have been a difficult change i can't remember exactly how he made sense of it but it was it took him an hour and a half and he called himself an historian so i believed him <laughs> oh trust me hour and a half that's a lot of time that's what was a lot of time a lot of ad sounds like a here. motherfucker who can't explain how to rob a jewelry store yeah <laughs> <laughs> we're like larry tell us about the jewelry store he's like let me say let me tell you something about the incas <laughs> the human sacrifice that was going on there makes my crimes look mild and it's like what are you what talking is- about like, <laughs> so succinct to the point and full of rich detail though when you talk about like ancient oh, yeah. Mesopotamia <laughs> and their farming and agricultural techniques it's just it just a silk boys the silk from the nile river delta you gotta understand you've got 20 million square <laughs> hectares being condensed there when it all dries up, it's the richest farmland on this planet. The fertile like, like crescent, breaks, they call it. The fertile crescent. <laughs> yeah. Between Dude, the Tigris and the Euphrates, the birthplace you've got of civilization. Me, my, Taylor, I crossed the Mississippi River today. That shit oh. is like dried up. There's a huge beach. It's like 30 feet lower than it's supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. We've had like a couple days of like sprinkly, gloomy shit, but we have not had big rain in a while, which is unusual around here usually we get more even so. though we're do you need rain or do you, does it rain in like minnesota or something and that's where it comes from don't the don't, mountains f- like melt and feed it like i don't think rain is the problem well the mississippi is isn't coming from mountains i don't think like at least in the u.s from? you know it's that's a, that's a fun it's actually a mystery doesn't it if comes, <laughs> like, like, is, there a, is there a water i don't know if i should believe Taylor no it's right actually now. it's actually unknown yeah the hole in the sky right below canada they, they kept water. trying to follow it back to the source but they get distracted they get lost, <laughs> <laughs> they get lost. um all right, well so let boring. me guess yeah, where the mississippi comes from and i'm gonna say it's the great lakes um, i bet that has something to do with it yeah i would guess so we gotta under, we gotta figure out where did the great lakes go Maybe we can solve this. <laughs> when's the last time you saw? When's the last time either of you saw one of the Great Lakes? I've it's been never a minute confirmed. For me. Uh, actually, that's not true. I've been to Detroit, Chicago, and, and to, Chicago, yeah, Chicago. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I've that's been, the coldest. That's one of the cold like things I've ever felt was like the hey, wind wait. blowing up that fucking lake in Chicago. Lake Atosca. I think I was right. Like... It does seem to originate in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Yeah, so just, maybe once they get more it, snow and it melts, is it like a dwarf woman? Going. Does it just spring out of the ground or like She's like where's the ground? No, it it really though. Like I followed it up on Google Maps to oh, God about damn it. Minneapolis, <laughs> and it goes to the St. Croix Falls and kind of just starts there. I guess. Well, don't, don't just know. use a map. Ask somebody. On no, the it says that lake. <laughs> no, you're right, Kyle. It's from a or you're both right. It's from a glacial lake in Minnesota called Lake Itasca. Oh. And well, it's we need to pump some water in Lake Atasca. You know what? I bet it is anywhere. It's near fine. It's such Michigan. an ugly river. Mississippi's fine. Just like, pump some water into the. <laughs> like, yeah, just <laughs> we need the to get this water up. Moving. If you're low on water, just pump water from the place. Yeah, just <laughs> just like, push. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard those people in Flint, Michigan, say that they don't have water. All I hear them say is they don't like the water they have. So I say, if you don't like it, ingrates. I hear some, there's some people in Lake Wanaconca who could use a little water, and maybe we'll yeah. take some of that Flint, Michigan water. And look, the way nature you know, works, who else? It'll yeah, really like it'll water. filter the Nazis. It'll filter that dirty water <laughs> out. It'll clean that water by the time it gets to Mississippi. It'll be clean. It all that Flint filth will have washed out of it. Probably yeah, sooner than yeah. that. It could could be true. I mean, the the Mississippi River is disgusting. Lake Titicaca. That's not a real but wait, place. If it melts from glaciers, we could just put more glaciers there. 
Yeah, but oh. I think that's a, a too big to do. Easy enough. Eh. Ice machine, dude. Have you seen? We like, steal snow? a glacier from Canada. But, they couldn't stop us. Oh, can you just? <laughs> Why don't they hook up to icebergs ever and like haul them in like rich guy style and have a good time with them? I would. If I was like a billionaire, I'd do shitty stuff like that. Like, like, oh, you don't <laughs> you, you think my private jet's bad for the environment? I'm I'm gonna hook up to the biggest iceberg I can fucking find, fly it to drag it across the planet to Tahiti, and we're gonna chip the fucking thing off in our drinks while we while we like, sit on the beach. you know what i would do if i was like a big old billionaire i'd be like all right I'll, i'm prepared to put billions towards environmental safety cleaning lakes getting plastic and shit out of the oceans but we're gonna meet out my money and it's gonna depend on cumulative u.s bmi levels if i'm doing my part to to help eliminate this consumption problem we all have to reduce consumption. So as soon as average BMI gets down to 30, boom, we're saving penguins. Also, I'm playing hardball. Every day it doesn't get below 30. I'm fucking killing some some penguins. <laughs> also, let people know penguins that you're, you're playing for real. Yeah. Peng- well, I mean, I'm just, I, I picked a, a likable animal. Like, no one would can be upset if it's babies? like, I'm going to, you, you can, well, you'd have to take their baby's house, but you can c- control them with an iron fist. I like uh, that. Yeah, you know, they get good. real upset when you, I've seen like people would get upset, like, but think of how many lives I would be say I'd no, be the, the biggest lifesaver on earth. No, I've and seen, I would like, be the, the only one exempt from the BMI thing. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, you get bigger. I don't and bigger. think any of us. <laughs> bigger and bigger. I don't think that calculator works for any of us. I, I, they, I, I no, I've seen where like a shitty penguin will like fuck up and like break their egg or kill their baby or something, and they'll run and kidnap somebody else's baby, but then they'll fucking get bored of it and they'll abandon it. <laughs> And the and the yeah. original parent is can't find him now because you know it's not like they left him at at the at the Seven Eleven. They the same. Maybe there's something to it being hard to survive in an area that helps them technologically advance. You know, like like you can't survive a whatever Finland winter unless you've got your heating figured out, your housing figured out. You're like you've got you, you've got to have a bit of a civilization. You need to store food. Mm-hmm. If you can hang a hammock and fucking coconuts falling next to you all day long then maybe you're not incentivized to advance your society in the same way that's true like it's like about winter like if you have to plan for winter it'd be like you have to like save up food and resources and stuff so it seems like about winter does that meanwhile you've got in south america where it's nice and cool like temperate climate where you just grab stuff out of the rainforest and eat it as long as you control the panthers that are trying to eat you i guess that's they're inventing they're inventing astronomy and calendars and predicting south america did what's... that of course yeah they invented astronomy yeah well they, they didn't in... invent astronomy. did they invent this how do you know i oh maybe, maybe they, they, little. they did they arrived <laughs> at it on their I, own you mean like they were not the first people to you I, know discover like astronomy and all that I, I, wasn't I that like, like the middle east i don't think we know who someone the in europe navigated were. by the stars yeah or... like every every culture used the stars to navigate but I mean, like, I'm sure they about, figured it out at different times. Well, I was just talking about like the Mayan calendar and how far back that went, and and that's okay. They're, they're utilizing the stars and the and the and stuff to do that, yeah. you know. And the the the, sure. the, the sun um, at its uh, like zenith or whatever on from either side, right? They like, built those uh, pyramids to to like show things at certain days of the year with the shadows. Those pyramids are pretty new. I I, I was just watching. Ed March, C90 Adventures. He rides a tiny motorcycle. And he went from like Alaska, across Canada, across America, then to Argentina. Right? Can you? Yeah, oh my God! Ride? Yeah. Right. That so sucked. along the way, he visits like this Aztec or Mayan temple. It's like a pyramid, and uh, then he finds out the thing is like 150 years old, and he's British. So he's like, oh. Yeah, actually, my my bedroom is older than this pyramid. All right, yeah, so, it's like really because so, Oxford's been a university since the year nine hundred. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he may have have found some pyramid they made for fucking tourists one hundred fifty years ago, but 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 those pyramids go back thousands of years. Like, Which like, one? Like, not um, according to a YouTuber I saw. Yeah, maybe I'm not trust the one what YouTuber. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> Colin's doubting my historians. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, you watched the Mel Gibson movie. Oh uh, yeah, Apocalypto. That was a good movie. Yeah, 
Yeah. Oh, I was go. like pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> this makes sense. That's Mad so Max. <laughs> Mad Max. <laughs> Mad Max. <laughs> that classic film. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, like the Japanese. Isn't it like like Japan's full of mountains and difficult weather and ter- difficult terrain? What, weren't they? They've been fucking with China for a very long time. Always trying to invade China. Always Chinese always invented them. Chinese invented paper, gunpowder, and maybe and the game writing. Start with sailing, I think. Maybe writing. We probably don't yeah. know who invented writing. Like I feel well, like all the time think, they I find feel some like, older thing. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. If they invented paper, were they wiping their ass with it? Probably not first. They're probably yeah. writing on it. So I think Chinese did all those things. And then, uh, you know, they did. Our, our poor ignorant ancestors were, were over there being pale and cold. <laughs> Very cold. <laughs> Very, Very chilly. Cold. Yeah. That would suck. Just mm. having months out of the year where it's like, it's, well, there's still nothing to do, but now it's cold. I've and I hope completely we have dis. Carded, disregarded all your contrary evidence, and I'm sticking with my view anyway. <laughs> that <laughs> <the> harsh <laughs> environments make for advanced civilizations. I think that, I think that's for hard it. people. Um, I, I think that that um, what, what's that whole thing where like um, you know the e- even necessity, the you necessity is the mother of invention. I think True. that if someone, I think that if someone has a cold climate, that they will come up with a good way to deal with cold climates. I think if someone has a, 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 a like like a megafauna in their area, like big giant animals that are hard to deal with, they'll learn hunting tactics to like deal with that. But I don't think it necessarily makes them the best and brightest at all things. I don't think that the people who live in the cold, hard to live in place are going to be the best scientists because they because it's hard there. I think that well, there's maybe more some, there's more difficult places to live than just cold like, places. I think but, a moderate place where not only can we uh, do we are we challenged, so we have to get out of our hammocks and stop eating the coconuts, but we can also relax once we figure this shit out a little bit and start calculating and looking at the stars and making lenses and figuring yeah, out. Yeah, you things. do have to be able to get on top of it. It can't be straight up desert or arctic. Yeah. The Mayans that you brought up as your example of an advanced technological civilization, didn't they get shot by the Spaniards and just beaten? Smallpox. They did get beaten pretty badly. S- smallpox. Smallpox. Come on. Like, you know what? I was. Yeah. I, what, you know what? You, know, you always go to the smallpox. I, I yeah. think muskets were part of it. Guns and horses were a big part of it. And 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 smallpox. It it, it decimated them. It was, well, they didn't it, have vaccines. They didn't. You know what? Here's what. Here's what I always wondered though. Um. So we, we always talk about like how the white people brought the smallpox over um to to the west and would wipe out these indigenous peoples. Why didn't they have any diseases to like fuck up the white people? They probably did. I bet like because there's going to be diseases everywhere, right? Like there must have been shit that that like all the Europeans started getting. If they, did, I guess not happened. as intense. Maybe it was like a milder sh- shit, but like no, it would have happened if they did, right? We would have gotten. Oh, we got the. It, it, I mean, yeah, it, right. Don't go to Mexico, go, Montezuma's revenge. It, we'd go somewhere and they'd be like, oh yeah, there's yellow fever down there, but it's not like the Brits went back home with yellow fever and wiped out London. Like, I'm just curious why. Uh, yeah, I have no idea. Yeah, no, no clue. Maybe, maybe the pathogen died on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> well, Taylor solved it here. <laughs> <laughs> They're very seasick pathogens. <laughs> oh, they got. But, oh, no drama mean in that time for no, the pathogens. No, don't care for it. Mm. I don't want that. Okay. Yeah, no, I don't know. You're what? What is? I, I, it would be so tight if they found one of those like super ancient civilizations, way older than like Egypt or you know ancient China. Because well, like, they don't know like, how go, old Egypt is. Like, uh, what is it called? You've brought it up, Ge- Gekli Tepe. Uh, go Blecky Tepe, that place yes. in uh, in Turkey, that that site they discovered that's well over twelve thousand five hundred. That's years really old. cool stuff. That like has this fast that that has those carvings and the, those enormous monolithic blocks that would have required not only someone who knew how to make monolithic blocks, but you have to keep in mind there has to be a system around um, the kind of person who is a craftsman and makes blocks like that. Uglug doesn't go out there, beat something with his club, and eat it, and then go back to the mm. mine that day. Uglug is a mine. This this requires a miner who mines all day as a profession, and a craftsman who crafts all day as a profession, and a and, and like a religious society who's like, yes, we must have these things to please the gods, and mm-hmm. little peons who are like, certainly do, right? All those things required a civilization uh, of of some like level is required to make those things happen, and we don't know anything about those people. And Egypt too, like the the word that Egyptians use for the pyramid builders is not Egyptian. They call them by a different name as a different people. Hmm. Interesting. 
So yeah, they, they don't some know people, how old do that some people is. think that that like pyramid predates the Egyptians? Like, yeah, the really old by one? many thousands of years. And then, and then like the um, the uh, the Sphinx, like they don't know how old that stuff is. Yeah, you talked about the Sphinx recently, which I didn't know the Sphinx was older than some of the pyramids. That's, they don't have, nobody knows how old it is. If you took someone from one of those ancient civilizations, right, and, and granted them immortality, right? So now this guy is 12,000 years old. I wonder what he'd be like, right? So biologically, let's assume he's the same, that humans haven't evolved in 12,000 years. He's working mm -hmm. with basically the same, you know, wetware that we are. Cool. Would he be a genius having learned things for the last 12,000 years? Would he be a dumbass like me, still stuck on some outdated food pyramid that he learned in yeah. fourth grade? <laughs> He's still <laughs> eating his 12 servings of grain a day. <laughs> yeah, just, bread is part of the foundation of this whole fucking thing. <laughs> like, like, would he be stuck on these old belief systems? Would he be a genius? Like, I, I wonder what this guy would be like if he lived 12. I bet he'd be rich. Oh, I yeah. bet Please tell me you figured out you can just dollar cost average into the S and P. Anyone, it's easy, easy to get rich. It's hard to get rich while you still have enough life left. Mm -hmm. But if you're gonna live twelve thousand <clears throat> years, God, you can spend a hundred years getting rich. It's no big yeah. deal. He could have been the first guy in the stock market. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like the first. That's like <laughs> all right. Market's open. We're trying this new thing, and he's like first guy in line. <laughs> but I imagine someone like that would be unbelievably depressed. Like you. 12,000 years of meeting people and everyone you know dying like that would that'd be horrible yeah is there a person i just wonder that can help you with that like would the right narcissist just not care about anyone but themselves and okay, have, so a, it, have a dandy of a time for 12,000 years all right so he's a 12,000 year old psychopath who <laughs> has, has no, nothing so, but resentment for the rest of humanity <laughs> you just looking forward to the day that we implode so I that that's a that that um that movie I just linked is kind of the exact thing you're describing um and and these guys are sitting around discussing it with some really good actors that I, I like all those actors. The Man from Earth. Yeah, it's um that one of them is claiming to be many thousands of years old and he and they're having a discussion about it. <clears throat> really, is the whole movie the discussion? I haven't seen it yet. I've only seen that preview. Then it intrigued oh. me. I added it to a watch list. And then when you can you show it that because I think people are going to be curious about what we're talking about. But it, it's from 2007, which I like. I'm, I'm glad it's not from like 1992. Um, this looks cool. Huh. I, I I'm kind of curious. Familiar, I saw but... I saw a little bit of the dialogue the other day somewhere, and it and it uh, it was really intriguing, well written stuff. Um, because they were talking. One of them was like, "Our brains had essentially been the same as they were for." Uh, over half a million years and that sort of man he would he would learn as he went he would grow as he went but he would also be damaged would he not and then they're like having this this mm -hmm. really interesting discussion uh it's the doctor from uh, uh star trek enterprise they, they had him a bunch of shit on his face but uh he's a good actor oh this is Wait, the, the, all the doctor from or... star trek enterprise beverly crusher um that's star trek the next generation you're right yeah i'm talking about the scott bacula star trek oh i don't is the doctor a um a, you want me to sing the intro music? It's been yes. a long way getting from there to here. And I'm not gonna let them hold me back. No, I'm not gonna that one. I go straight. Oh, to this the doctor flopped. <laughs> it's it's like, man, how how much technology would it have taken for one of those ancient races to come up with this? Like they had silk in China, right? Like, why couldn't they come up with a some sort of a wing that would let them like like take advantage right. of some air currents and and do some stuff. I thought I'm not talking that, about fly, too. but like if, if you ever put yourself in olden times and you're like, dude, mm. I'd be a genius because actually I just know how to use a phone. I don't know how to make yeah. one. I know how to use a battery. I don't know how to make one. I can drive, yeah. but I can't. Y'all got a, a 350 car. small block needs rebuilding? <laughs> no, you, you'd just be like a shitty Confucius, Shit. where you'd be like. One day something like this is going to happen. And they're like, really? <laughs> and like, how? Tell us, future one. And you're like, oh, <laughs> I, you know, yeah. I, I can tell you more about like uh, hockey stats. That's I saw a, sport a video that's going to be around. Like, <laughs> I saw a video today. It was anyway. called How a Computer Works. It was 42 minutes long. Okay. okay. It's boring. You think I'm going to be able to explain it to Neanderthal men or some shit and it make anything happen at all? No. No, yeah. no. Oh, they see the logic and the uh, the fucking binary. And oh, come on, give me that sharp stick. I'll show you how to. Gotta Dude, if you brought a this. phone, that's all I if got. You brought a, if you brought a phone back with you with a magic 
English to Latin translator or whatever, ancient Greek yeah. translator, and you showed sure. them the video, they would be pulling your teeth and nails out before you finished as like a witch. There's no way you the, could you no, could smooth I think the that Greeks, over. I think the Greeks would have been more Okay, chill. the Greeks, maybe they, they would think it was cool. Let's go Mesopotamia, way further back. Fertile Crescent. Hammurabi's yeah, I, still on the town. Hammurabi seemed fa like a fair man. You know, I read a little bit of that cuneiform code, and it seemed like an eye for an eye makes a lot of sense. I think the Bible ripped off a lot of that. But I think <laughs> wherever you go, you're going to have a hard time communicating and we're just not going to look right. Like, like we're going to be too clean. Like we're going to be so clean that they'll look at us and be like, what, who doused you with water, boy? That's the first question. <laughs> and then like, why is your beard like that or your hair like that? Or why are you walking like that? Why are you shod like that? Like they're all wearing medieval fucking shoes or whatever. You got mm -hmm. Nikes on. They're going to you're going to cause a lot of problems right away. I would imagine they'll probably bully out, like, you. They'll think you're. I, I feel like in ancient yeah, times they were six, always two. at war. Would he not be a massive, I, strong? I think no, I would they just bring out Mo Agrius big... and beat his ass. Well, I'm not saying they'd be intimidated by like a guy's five inches taller. Like three of them would just stab me with forky sticks, right? And I'd be gutted in a, in the street. But like, I think that they would notice right away that we we would stand out for for all the reasons I named. And then they'd be like, oh, depending on the time period, right? I bet he's a Mongolian spy. I bet he's a French spy. I bet he's a Germanic spy. I bet he's a barbarian spy. Whoever their enemy at the time yeah. was, the bad guy that they fuck the the warlords like you. That's why I need the money to keep the barbar. Whoever the bad guy is that's, that's allowing him to extort his people and and rule his people, mm -hmm. you'd be one of them and you'd be dead in the street. I you 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 start fucking talking into a phone and it's talking back to them. Ooh, that's gonna end poorly. One sure way you're or another. Hate service. They're going to hate that. They'll worship the phone and burn you. It's the one giving all the orders. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that's true. They won't understand the concept of battery Who life. Who now will be the carrier of the god? <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you've stolen their soul in that selfie you just took. Jesus yeah. Christ, yeah. Uh, I, mean, I, I do have this part of me that wants to go find those on blow their goddamn minds and don't even break out the technology just right away pull just pull handkerchiefs out of your mouth until you're yeah. their god yeah the little the little <laughs> like red ball thing and yeah do I like to put a real scare into them right away and let them know that not only can i kill but i can't be killed so i'm thinking i show them some movies of like maybe i show them some videos of me blowing up some cars first right because mm, that's gonna mm -hmm. fuck whoa they're gonna be scared yeah. they don't even and know what a then, car is They'll think it's a tank el hippo or something, and and yeah. then if they think I'm all powerful like that, I think that'll go a long ways into you know harnessing them for the sweatshop. I think you have to go into it <laughs> leading with a lot of gifts because yes, you need carrot over stick, huge amount of carrot, enormous amount of carrot. Because if you've seen some videos of these uncontacted tribes, sometimes a guy just shows up with gifts. And they're just shooting arrows with like dart frog poison at him immediately. And so you need yeah. to put in their head like when this guy shows up, good things happen. Like have an airdrop with a big crate of fucking Pringles or whatever you find out that they like. At the same time, you show up every time they start to draw a little connection. When this guy shows up, the crate full of good things comes and you, you have to give them more and more good shit because otherwise they're no, going to think this guy's coming to, to, to try and be the new chief. And we're not you know, going to let him be the sense. new chief. All that makes sense, and I can understand why you would think that that would work. Yeah. But I, I, I actually, I think it might have been that guy I showed you with the python earlier the, that bit him. Uh, the guy was telling a story about uncontacted tribes in South America and how this one guy had a knack for, like, they wouldn't run away from him. They'd look at him, and they'd sort of, like, if he lifted his foot, they'd lift their foot sort of thing. And he kept bringing them food. He'd make a big pile of bananas, literally. And then he'd leave the pile of bananas. They'd come, the bananas would be gone when he came back. They saw him put them down. He looks at them. He's like, hey, bananas. And he leaves. And they have this going on for a long time, years. They found him one day, full of arrows. Full of mm -hmm. arrows. They shoot these right. seven-foot-long arrows, these crazy the long arrows. Yeah, right out of bananas. Them, like a porcupine. Yeah. <laughs> bad, no, bad. Okay, so, the, so the guy bringing bananas for years eventually got got. And you yes. think you're going to show up with an iPhone and firecrackers I'm gonna and startle them into submission? I can have guns in South America, Taylor. I show up with an AR, right? I waste anyone with a weapon. First day. They're, I bet they're, they're pretty fucking good with those bows. I, but I feel like you could put on something that would protect you from bows. Are you kidding me? Yeah, like a sweater. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a sweater. I, I think my motorcycle yeah, outfit might protect I, me from I, a bow and arrow. If not, yeah. it's close. Yeah, they're not compound bows. They're it's not shooting that hard. It's for their own hard. good. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I feel like that would probably it's end fun. like that last scene in 300 yeah. where it's just like arrows just blotting out the sky yeah. coming down. Like, yeah, that would. Yeah, that that is what would happen, honestly. That Especially that, is it Sentinel Island? where where yes. That's the, what it is, yes. Those yeah. are the islanders that'll fucking just smoke you. And the, if you try to land, they're like shooting the arrows like at you actively. Like, yeah, come a little closer so we can hit you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah good, that, good, good for them. It's hard to yeah, even get to the gift guy. giving stage because they're shooting yeah. at you before you reach sand. That's yeah, why that you missionary do the guy job. tried to land there a couple what years if you had ago that... and did not go well. Yeah, I heard about that missionary guy where he like had in his head he was like, "I'm going to reach these people and talk about whatever uh, God, what whatever, yeah, God," and he didn't last very long. Apparently, you know he thought it? like he thought that they trusted him. He thought that they had a good thing going, and then he just showed up one day for like the second time, and they he never was found. T shirt well, like the... right. Oh yeah, there you, you go. T-shirt can. Yeah, I'm not going to put the t-shirt can. Is it a t-shirt? t-shirt? I'm going to be. I'm going to be. You know, fucking can of soda or or like some baked beans one day or a bunch of potatoes. You're going to fire things. cans of baked beans at them through a t-shirt. <laughs> I hit the chief's son right away. They can't open it. All right, we're going plan yeah, yeah, B. Yeah, Lock yeah. and load. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'll tell you so what. You know, in vein, in, or, or, like, or like you're about to get it and you shoot like the Dr. Pepper over there and the guy like opens it and sprays him in the face yeah. and now it's war, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It burns, now they're burns. pissed, yeah. During this whole conversation, <laughs> at one point, Taylor mentioned Pringles and I haven't thought of anything better yet. Pringles are going to be wildly popular in this place. They're going to love Pringles. They would love like simple stuff, like can, anything you could grab afterwards. at a gas station. They're going to oh, love yeah. Beef jerky at a gas station. Why do gas stations have like thirty-seven different kinds of Reese's peanut butter cups at this point? It's out. They're just they're just put different shapes, different sizes, different configurations. Yeah, the they put cookies the in there, must crackers, just be reconfigurable, so they can just. Do it. It, it, there's no. It's like yeah. you want to do uh, yeah. brownies in there. Why yeah. the fuck not? You Coca know that Coca Cola freestyle machine? Someone yeah. made one for Reese's peanut butter cups, and they're just it, mixing and matching bullshit all the time. It's like so. Mexican food. There's not that much to it. Like, it's, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, if you go if you go to a convenience store yes. somewhere in Scandinavia, like you know, like Denmark, Sweden, Finland, something okay. like that. Ninety percent of the candy is black licorice in some form. It's salted. Oh. It's sweetened. It's lemon. It's black licorice in almost everything. But, you know, but bring up the Pringles That's in this in this tribe. Oh yeah. But bringing up the Pringles in this tribe thing raises a good point. You know, like, I've been all over the world, and I have eaten some weird shit. I mean, I've had whale, I've had dog, I've had scorpions and horse and, you know, squid ink and half-hatched sparrows and bugs and all kind of crazy stuff. But to 99% of the world, like, we are the ones that eat weird stuff. Because whether it's an egg or a bug or a weird part of an animal, like, they still know where that came from. But, like, what is really weird to most people in the world is, like, a Hot Pocket or a Pringles. They're like, what in the hell is this made out of? Or, like, what goes, like, what is in this pastry pocket, like, Hot Pocket thing? Like, we eat so much stuff that is not Mm -hmm. identifiable as to where it came from. Everybody else in the world thinks that is really weird. Like, eating a horse is, or a whale, like, that's, they know exactly where that thing came from. But you try to give them a Pop-Tart, and they're like, what is this, like, what is it like what is this yeah that we eat the weird stuff compared to most of the people in the world for sure for sure yeah, makes oh, sense. i had so like, be like oh where's that horse come okay. from oh the horse comes from that field where we killed the horse it's like oh where does that ingredient from a hot pocket come from it's like well it starts by emulsifying a petroleum <laughs> runoff waste <laughs> exactly, and, exactly. and spinning it in a centrifuge adding you know the acid until it becomes kind of edible and it's like yeah but it tastes good Kyle and Taylor, exactly. have you guys had bugs, like prepared bugs, grasshoppers or larvae no. or whatever? No, no, I, no I think not I at all. Bugs. It's not it bad. was oh, zero percent surprising. Somehow, no, they're not. Christopher, you're lying to my audience. And I won't they, they, are <laughs> they are good. <laughs> crickets, bugs. crickets, and mealworms kind of taste like sesame sticks. Like, like bugs are kind of nutty tasting, except ants are like bugs that bite and are a little tart a bit. But like, what'll really blow your mind is like a big, like a spider, like a tarantula or a scorpion vaguely taste kind of like crab like they're kind of arachnid style so like mm. i get to burn the hairs off of them but they've got a vaguely kind of sweet kind of crab taste to them they're actually not do that you, weird do you burn the hairs off wrap it in like palm leaves or something and, and steam it over a fire uh, the ones i had had been like burned off and dried and they had them on sticks and they were roasting them over like coals yeah so they mm. would kind of burn the hair off with the fire kind of burn them off and then they become like naked and then they would just how much- roast it and 
We know crab legs are ex- are expensive, Taylor. I, I, Very I, much. How much tarantula legs cost? I guarantee they don't stack up to a what's nice snow crab leg. What's a, I, what's market I would price pay on? to never have to try one. That's my market. Really? Value. You wouldn't want to try a tarantula leg if it was on the menu. They're, they're kinda, they're I don't like crunchy. spiders. I, mean, I don't want to be around them. I don't want to look at them. I don't want to eat them. I don't want to <laughs> feel it's fucking it's it's because not all, not every bit of the hair is going to burn off. You're going to feel a little like prick here and there of hair on the it, it sounds awful. I don't know. When I ordered the grasshoppers, they seemed to be unprepared. They tasted exactly like I expected grasshoppers to taste. I thought they would be masked by like cinnamon or something. But that's <laughs> not how they made grasshoppers at all. They just put them uh, on a plate. Before I ordered the grasshoppers, and you guys know this because I was on WhatsApp texting you yeah. at the time from Mexico, I ordered ant larvae. And they were out of ant larva, I guess. So Chase is like, did they check under the trash cans out back? Which was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> and I got the grasshoppers and they were just tasted like regular. They were like cooked, but they didn't seem to be seasoned or anything. They were just grasshoppers. I couldn't finish my plate. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would imagine the whole wow. point of like, or it seems like you, you like countered or found out the counter to that, but. How on earth could you just eat bugs regularly without dousing it in cayenne or something to make you forget you're eating bugs? Right. Like it's yeah, but it, but to most people in the world though, eating bugs is just normal. You know, like it's not any weirder than us eating a Kit Kat or a Reese's cup. You know, it's just something normal. It's a little weirder. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I mean, no weirder than like you know cutting random bits off of a pig or a chicken or something. Well, well, see, but we, but we we pick we, the we, parts we want. Yeah, (laughs) because, you know, if you showed up to a bug eating country and you were like, everyone, you want bugs today or pork chops? They're going to be like, oh, pork chops are available. Oh, Oh, then they'll make you want bugs. Like, whereas here, if they were like, hey, you got those pork chops. I got a big bowl of maggots. It's like, no, no, you're not going to swindle me. You're not going to swindle me. You know, you buy bug protein powder. It's it's made of bugs. I didn't yeah, know. it's super high in protein. I mean, they are from a nutritional standpoint, bugs are, are pretty good. So in Rome, there's a character, his name's Octavius, and he's really smart. It's kind of his whole thing. He's the smartest guy in every room. Even when he's like a young teenager, he's smarter than the adults. And they're teaching him to sword fight so that he can be a man. And uh He's not really taking to it, but the guy teaching him polio is really cool and he's like patient with him. And he's like, no, no, you'll get it. You just need to practice more. What he's saying is that you do this more, you'll get stronger and in shape and and improve at it. And this is what he said. You know, at best, all I could ever be is a middling sword fighter. And it's better not to be a sword fighter than a middling sword fighter. And I was like, graveyards are full of middling sword fighters. Did he say that too? I missed that part. And uh, it, I don't know, somehow that it's better to be not a fighter than a middling one. I'm like, oh, that's some fucking wisdom right there. He's onto something. That's true. That's that's Caesar Octavius. Mm -hmm. That that he was a very smart guy. You know, he he spent his childhood reading about you know the stuff the Greeks had had written, and just I I loved his character. Uh, even uh, later on when they recast him uh, with what's his name? I can't think of that actor's name. Uh, I don't know if you've got you watched it all, right? All of uh, not all of it, but I have made it to the next actor. You can spoil it. Okay. It's ancient Rome. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's Roman history. I was just wondering if he'd seen that actor yet when that they recast him. I think it's really good. It's another one of those things like um, Deadwood that also got canceled because they just came out a little bit before the golden age of TV, or at least before mm. we were ready for 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 what that was. Uh, because those are just really well produced, great stories, and they're historical dramas too, which I like. I like when you take something that happened, make it a little bit fancier. Tell me, all right, tell me about a, a whore who existed back then too. She's there. She's running around getting getting dick at her. It's like so- sauce up the story, make it a little mm-hmm. better for me. Gladiator is a great example of that, right? Like those are real Romans and real shit that happened. Mostly, Commodus was a, was was really a Roman emperor. All that happened, but you know. You, you beef it up and make it amazing. That's yeah. what that's what Ridley Scott's doing again. I don't got that dog. Let me shut the dog up. <laughs> um, Ridley Scott is yeah. I don't, I don't know my know history that well, so I just assume it's all true. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am enjoying the show. It's a blast. It, the first season, Kyle told me that the show ends a little early, so they have to rush and sort of you know put a bow on the storyline. Yeah. What happens at the the first season ends how I expected the whole storyline to end. I'm like, where are they even going from here? And now I'm learning. So. Yeah, it's 
it's frustrating to watch. Like I almost don't want to rewatch that show because it has so much Rome? potential. Yeah. I saw it many years ago and I remember it being sick, like awesome, but they just sprint to the finish. Like there, there's, you're like mad as it's going. Cause you're like, Oh no, you're not going to flesh that out. It's just going to, Oh, the I next the scene first is, season was a sprint. The first season is fast. And then the second season is like, Oh, between scenes, nine years passed. <laughs> like, that, like literally shit like that it's it's okay. absurd when you're watching like god i wish they could have fleshed that out more with whatever that main actor is uh the really dark haired guy i don't know what his yeah. name is but he's great like it, in the first season caesar travels back to rome okay big spoiler uh <laughs> you might be surprised rome yeah caesar goes to rome and uh but like i was like if this was game of thrones they would take one or two years to sort of define the landscape, the players, the travel from here to there, you know, the, the war with the Gauls and the people in his army, they would be building that up here by like episode three or so. He's defeated an entire uh, enemy race and now he's home again. He's yeah, he's conquered all of the Germanic and Celtic peoples. Like that's the part you'd love to see, right? Just nothing but war and big battle scenes. Yeah. But you could tell they didn't have money for that. They didn't have any money for any of the battle scenes. Oh, you're um, right. Sometimes I forget about like the why. So expensive. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's so expensive to do a battle scene because you can, you don't want to do a shitty one. You'd rather do something sort of like they did a shitty one. A big battle that happened. I forget which battle scene it was, but like there's basically like foggy photos where there's a guy like and then the other guy ah uh, and then like whatever tall dude won and you're like ah uh, you just robbed me of an entire war now yeah. imagine a war <laughs> <laughs> close your eyes with us <laughs> it's incredible huge feats of strength and heroism are happening all around you as the camera pans through the the turmoil Okay, are you going to show us any of this? Here's the blurry screen, blurry screen. Sword shield, sword shield. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. they do that. That's what early uh, Game of Thrones was like, too, though, if you remember the Whispering Woods. We didn't see shit. That's a huge yeah. battle where Jamie Lannister cuts down some of uh, the best swordsmen in the North by himself. We didn't see any of that shit. We saw a little part where they hit him in the head and they catch him at the end. Um, and then the battle where the big naval battle where they're their King's Landing, mm -hmm. they cut to Tyrion's face and show him react. To the shit that's happening so they didn't have the money there that shit's so expensive when, the, when you get into that cgi yeah. they blew so all their money on the wildfire explosion i'll so i was gonna say before my, my my dog went crazy um ridley scott who made gladiator is has now made napoleon with joaquin phoenix as napoleon it's like three and a half four hours long or something uh mm -hmm. and it'll be on I'm, I'm sure they'll put it in theaters but then it'll be on apple tv some sometime thereafter uh the trailer looks awesome just huge epic scale um napoleonic era battles in egypt russia you know, the, the, the entire and there's this the, the the trailer i saw he's like i have conquered the world i have got i went to the frozen north of russia and they cut to a scene of him in russia like shooting cannons on people on the eyes to the plains of the west to the sands of the far you know it's, and it's great because Joaquin Phoenix is doing kind of a French accent and he's good at that. I'm super hyped for that movie. Mm -hmm. That and sounds I, sweet. I, I love those really. Oh, I love that he's not making any more alien shit. Ridley Scott's done enough of that. Um, and what else has he this. done that I might know? I've seen a gladiator gladiator um, black. I think he did black hawk down um, and I'm spacing out on some oh. of the other stuff. He, he well, did th those alien. two are good enough. Those are excellent movies. I love those movies. Alien, um, and um, I think he did Prometheus and uh, the um, the other Alien sequel. Prometheus was kind of man. yeah. He's he's real into the backstory of the aliens, and I feel and and I I don't. And care. I'm not. Yeah, it, that should be like a left a mystery, but that's neither here nor there. But I am really uh, pumped for uh, for that Joaquin Phoenix movie. When's I like him out? a lot. I think next month. I think November. Pretty sure. I, I haven't seen a movie in theaters in years, and so maybe I'll make that one that I see. Yeah, I've like thought was, on on multiple occasions over the past couple of years, like I want to go see a movie. Like that sounds like fun, and then I Google what movies are on, and I'm like, well, I'm not gonna force myself to go to the movies to watch something I'm not interested. You in. You know what? That's part of it is part of it is is it, it is so nice to watch at home. I, I you know uh, on a on a good TV for free. 
Um, but I keep every now and then on Reddit, they're like, this guy tried to get into the seats he reserved. Here's what happened. And he's just getting assaulted by three or four people in a movie theater because <laughs> he wanted to what sit. What kind in his- of people? <laughs> The kind who sit in your reserved fucking seats and then and then think that they're being singled out when you ask them politely if they would please not sit in the seats that you paid special for and have reserved here on your phone. See the little thing here? It means I sit there. Ah, yeah. why are you killing me? I colonialist, what? You know, I, <laughs> <laughs> it's like see how see how on my phone seats 16 and 17 are blue and the rest yeah. of the seats are gray. Wait, if don't you get off me. the phone call. You could look at yours and tell that <laughs> <laughs> tell that your seat's down there somewhere. I, yeah, I mean, the um, last like I feel like not many people go to the movies anymore. The last one I went to was Joker, probably four years ago when that came out, and I saw it pretty close to the release date. I feel, and even <laughs> that was like, yeah, that was the last movie I saw. I was in like theaters. a young man when that stupid fucking movie came. Out. I, think, I think it was 2019. I haven't been out of the game That's too an long. Excellent movie. Know? The sequel. Yeah, it was a good movie, but that even that theater was not full. Overrated movie. Oh, I Zach, thought it was what's really the Rotten good. Tomatoes of Joker with Joaquin Phoenix. I bet. Um, it's the gonna go the in sequel your favor, comes out soon. It's, it's a. I'm Why so was it terrible? For the sequel. Well, it was long and droning. It was like there was one scene played over and over again. It was one note uh, is a better description. Just played for. Was that movie four and a half hours long? I don't know. It felt uh, felt like five and a half hours. It was ridiculous. I would, Ooh, uh, a little lower than I expected. Two hours and two minutes. Yeah, 88 what? on 50 That was only ratings. two hours? That yeah. movie felt like... I, I honestly thought it was going to be closer to three. Yeah, no. Not no. four, like You I didn't said. enjoy how they, like, built the tension throughout it of, like, you're seeing him crack. Like, he's starting off in he's a off very the bad place. And then he, like, almost the vibration of it increases, increases, increases to the really cool culmination when he's, like... Time. How about another joke, Murray? Murray, <laughs> Murray. What do you get when you cross it? And like he fucking blows De Niro's head off. That was awesome. Like that was such a good. Like I, I like slow burn movies though, and I the I, I enjoyed that. Do <laughs> you remember that? There's a speech at the end of uh, Julius Caesar where uh, I think it's I think it's Mark Antony. He, he's up there and and he keeps saying an awful thing that that Brutus and Gaius has done. You know. And look how they rent noble Caesar's body here. Look at the wound there where Cassius's blade stabbed and where Brutus's the uh, like wound fell. And he's like showing, mm-hmm. but these, but these are noble men who can deny that these are noble men. He keeps going back to that. That's his, that's his fucking chorus for the fucking mm-hmm. song of deception. He's singing. It's beautiful. It's mm-hmm. one of my favorite things. I don't know Shakespeare, but I know that speech. I love it. I relish it every, I play it all the time. Uh, Is it Charles in the, Preston, the TV show? Uh, so they, they don't do the speech itself, but what you get, and I actually like this is they have common folk in a bar describing having heard the speech. They're like, Mm. fucking Brutus go up there and he's all blah, 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 economy, numbers, money, this and that. And Mark Antony got up there. Eh, everybody likes Mark, you know, Mm -hmm. he's at first he was saying how what they'd done was good. And then I started thinking maybe it wasn't. And it's like, it's his slow witted, like brain. Mm. Like he's explaining how he was duped mm-hmm. by the slickest guy in, in, in Rome. Cause Shakespeare's writing him um, to, to just completely win the crowd over and turn a crowd that was there to be like, yeah, down with the dictatorship to one that was like, get those motherfuckers that mm-hmm. fucked up Caesar at the very end. The crowd is incensed. They're roiling. They're they're ready to get somebody and burn a fucking house and get their wives too. And he's like, "Wait, wait, noble friends, you have forgotten the will of Caesar that you would bid me read. Give me a moment. Let me read what Caesar has left unto you. To each and every man, a hundred dinar." And everybody's ah, oh, <laughs> Caesar's so generous. And he has left unto every Roman man to walk in his orchards and his parks and his gardens of leisure. For all time, they are given to the Roman people. Oh, mighty mm-hmm. Caesar. Oh. And then it's just, he's got them boiling by the end of it. I love that fucking That's scene. Cool. I don't think public executions are going to solve anything. Although I do want them. I've talked, how many years have I been <laughs> wanting that running man scenario? 
where we just throw them into like a, you know, some sort of a game show that we all watch. No, no, we crucify them from Boston to New York. That's a warning, like the Roman Empire. Do you remember when they used not well, you obviously don't remember, nor do I, but they used to do that. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. I yeah, remember. back in the day, we used to get a little wild. <laughs> <laughs> no, I bet I bet that I bet criminals had a lot to think about and smell, like on that road. So you do that with serial killer? Do we I don't think we have enough serial killers for that. Wasn't that I don't think it's that big Spartacus? of a game. Are you talking about the movie Spartacus? I may uh, that did happen though, I think. I think that's historically accurate. To it is. Extent, there there right? were it's three a... slave revolts, and in each of the, the second slave revolt was the Spartacus one. I think it did was they the, do the bit with the I, I I'm doubtful about that. They did that crucify they... him. Uh, yeah, they crucified them all. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, they cru they did crucify them up and down the road as like a warning to to other like slaves who wanted to get out and 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 try their luck. Yeah. Yeah, none of the slave revolts did did too well in the end. <laughs> but the you wouldn't know that by the shows. Like in the shows, it's like, oh man, like they're kind of valiantly losing, but no, <laughs> they were they were tortured severely. Why did they lose? Like you would think that a bunch of gladiators would be pretty effective at. Rebellion. Uh, they're they just like, well, the the Rome was so vast and so enormous, and Rome, like part of Rome's power was the permanent standing army. That also meant that they were very well trained and and very segmented, and so when they they could go into towns and ransack them for resources. And that's what they did. They kind of were acted as raiders. And mm -hmm. then like once the Roman legions got there, they they crushed them. They 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 met in battle a few times and they didn't do well. And then in the end, I think they, they lost like everything. So mm -hmm. but hey, in the end, who's remembered? The Spartacus. Gladiators. Yeah. For losing. Russell Crowe. <laughs> Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe. Oh, I, I was doing the TV series. What is the TV series? It's Spartacus. 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 Yeah, that was yeah. that was a wonderful series until the main guy died of cancer. What was that disease he had? Was it? Oh, I thought he had cancer. I thought he had cancer too. You don't? Yeah, think but it was, it was like a specific kind that's got like a like a. Yeah. It's like one of those three name cancers. Like, like it's one of those, uh, <laughs> you know, see if they hang on to that thing for eight seconds. You explain to them what a second is first because they don't know, and then you they know, use metric digital, time. Yeah. No, they don't use time at all. They have no way of measuring time. <laughs> metric time. This should yeah. be a metric time. Oh, it's been time. one kilosecond. The, yeah. the, the seconds are shorter, but they're very precise. We That's should do right. metric time. We should have like 100 hours in a day. We should have, or 10, and, you know, 10 hour, ten minutes in an hour, or whatever it is. 100 is probably better. I think we should go 10-day weeks, three weeks a month, four weekends. Four days of weekend. Oh, I don't want to discuss this again. I thing. sent you both a YouTube <laughs> channel that explains why it's perfect the way it is. Time? It's, 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 yeah. Yeah. No, it's not. Well, how to explain leap years then? The Jesuits. <sighs> Did the Jesuits the, do that? Because, the, hold on. Hold on. I want I mean, Wendy to explain to me what the Jesuits have to do with. The, the Jesuits are the ones who built the calendar into like the years, how it currently works. And they're the ones who like reform. I mean, it came off of like the Caesarean calendar, but they're the one that refined it. Um, so as they were doing that, they were charting like, you know, solar constellations, mm -hmm. how time moves and stuff like that. And the way they were tracking it was by the stars, you know, full rotations and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, and found that there is a discrepancy of about a quarter of a day every year. So every 365 days after one quarter day or, or like after 365 days, the stars had moved a quarter further within 24 hours than they should have. Mm -hmm. So they backtracked that through all of humanity's history and said, okay, well, if we factor that in that every four years, there's another day, then this is what the timeline looks like. So they were the ones who figured all that out and put it in the. I calendar. didn't know that. That's why uh, the calendar as we know it is entirely built around Christianity, AD, after death, and Domini, year of our Lord and all that, because the Jesuits were, Je Jesuit means follower of Jesus. So that's why it's all Christian based, because they were the Christians living in a monastery, effectively. It's why it's built out that way. This is one of my new favorite YouTube channels. It's called Be Smart, and they've got a six minute video called, I don't know. The brief history of keeping time. Yeah, and it's like nails exactly what we're discussing in six. Does minutes. it explain why there's 24 hours in a day? Yeah. It does all a, well, all right. So there's 24. Why they break it down into segments of 24, I guess is what you mean. 
Yeah. Yes, yes. That's that's my focus. I, I feel like there could be a metric styled time. I think the visibility do... of 24 is a big part of it. And, and and the way all those numbers come really close to making everything work in a in a full I'll watch year the video calendar. After the show. But um but yeah, I love that channel. He has a he, he's um I don't know, it's called Be Smart for a reason. They try to give you little factoids every every uh every video. It's really fun. So you uh, think that our Jesuit calendar is perfect? I think it's as I think it's right. as good as it's gonna get. <laughs> I don't think it's perfect. It's it, it clearly could be perfect. Well, you you're always somewhere. raving about this Jesuit calendar. <laughs> Every <laughs> time I see Kyle. Every <laughs> fucking day I'm <laughs> getting texts about this calendar. <laughs> Our chat is filled with how great the second is, the minutes. Well, originally <laughs> when the calendar was first set up, it was only ten months, which goes back to like the divisibility thing, but then they added uh they added july for julius caesar and august for caesar augustus in honor of what they did so it was broken up to accommodate that the months made a bit shorter and went up to 12 in honor of rome i don't have a big problem with the year right we the earth spins about 365 times Mm -hmm. every time it orbits the sun so Mm -hmm. there's gonna be 365 days in a year roughly it's yeah, true. yeah. That you know, that, that's just what you're working with. Boom. But I don't get why every day has to be 24 hours. Why it can't be something like 50 shorter hours or 100 shorter hours. I remember, yeah. I remember having it explained why it's 24, but I forgot, and I'll just assume mm. Kyle's right with whatever length yeah, he, he was is. talking about. Yeah. Why yeah. is it 24, <laughs> Kyle? I'm too high to remember. You have to watch the <laughs> minute video. You have to watch the six minute video. Um, I, I genuinely don't Give know. Give me your best up until- guess. <laughs> okay. All right. My there. best guess is we're measuring time based on the rotation of a circle, which, you know, a sphere. That's so what it was. It, yep. It's, um, yep. it's that you, it breaks down perfectly into quadrants of, of 24. That's it. Know. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. 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 That it, would- it, it, it's about the math of a 360 degree sphere like as it moves throughout the day and how to time it. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Because you've got multiple spheres. Good job. Hi, Kyle. <laughs> Thanks. I'll do the best I can with what I've got. You know, imagine if I were on Adderall over here. Taking notes. <laughs> taking notes. Like two hours from um, now, wanting to get in a huge argument about it. Like, <laughs> like, a, like, like, like your, your like fucking flowers for Algeron or whatever, which is a movie I've never seen, but apparently it's where they give the guy medication, makes him super smart. I have seen that it's always sunny in Philadelphia like episode. Where Charlie gets the 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 same, he parodies it, but really he's just an asshole. Flowers for Algernon was the first book I read that I loved. I like mm. every school assigned book I had read previous to that was a chore that I endured, and Flowers for Algernon was just a page turner that I couldn't get enough of. What? Why are you recommending books? Well, I, I I always recommend. Well, I was a kid. People. I don't know if it's yeah. High school or middle school? Like what age? Middle. Group? Okay, middle. Right, never, never mind. I had a theory, but mm. continue. Yeah, I've never read that one. How long is it? Like, like <laughs> it was literally like forty-five years ago. No, forty <laughs> years ago. <laughs> like, I don't know. Woody, how long was the book you read in nineteen eighty-five? I remember. Uh, like, like, it's it's easy to remember the books that I read as a kid because back then, you know, it was like, oh, it's like this fucking thick. Can you believe they're making me read this thick? I'm gonna book? look it up, but I'm gonna yeah. guess two hundred and seventy-five pages. Oh, that's, and then every that's once in a while in school, you got a book that was like, oh, we're reading Anne Frank's diary. Fucking, <laughs> whoop, fucking 58 pages. Those baby. Germans are efficient. <laughs> Firing through this. And I don't even have to read the whole thing. I just have to read the beginning, something in the middle, and then the end to make sure yeah. to, to, you know, write the little essay they want. Just look at uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, you know. I don't know what he's up right, to now. Silence, What's though. he doing? Yeah, I Rogan like once every you two know, months. I don't, I don't care know. for him. I, I don't like, the only thing I know I about like, that guy is he apparently was part of the team that decided that Pluto doesn't get to be a planet anymore, mm. which is absurd. Mm. Absurd. Why, is that absurd. why don't, why don't we get to about? have nine even planets? My childhood was a lie. I was told yeah. there were all it, these planets. Well, because because we've got like lots and lots of other moons and, and asteroids in the solar system that are bigger than Pluto. It was a size this? thing. Wasn't would you rather have nine? Or would, you rather, would you rather have eight planets or like, <laughs> like fifty? There's hundreds. If if you if, if you if you get to name anything a planet you want, no, we, we'll. I accept Kyle. your terms, Any, Kyle. Anything, More planets. Anything larger. <laughs> Pluto. Okay. How about this? How about this, Mister DeGrasse Tyson? Any. We already yes. have Pluto set in stone. That's a planet. Anything Pluto size or bigger gets to be a planet. 
Mm. And now we've like, got a I much like more. No, we've I got like a much that. more impressive solar system I, I now. I now when the aliens show up, they're gonna go. This is a fucking sixty planet solar system having you know fucking yeah. shit. Jupiter alone. They're gonna they're gonna go. This was in the Americans, wasn't it? Fuck. Yeah, this is the to orbit the sun. Fuck. The planet should they orbit the sun. They needed a hundred goddamn planets. Planet. There's lots of objects. Planet that do Big Gulp. Like remember, yeah. um, you'll know these objects from that show we love so much. The fucking Expanse. You know, like I think it's Ceres Station is the big space station they're at in the in the asteroid belt. That's a real asteroid called Ceres. I think C-E-R-E-S. It's huge. I think it's bigger than Pluto. And it's just floating around out there. We're not putting it on any little kid's fucking styrofoam ball. No. There's no hmm. it's nonsense. We're gonna have some update Merv jump. Are you okay with that, Taylor? I'm fine with it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, never mind then. I didn't know that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm reasonable. Like I'm, I, uh, I'm just trying to get us more planets. I like black science, mm. man, because his jo- he can be a little full of himself <laughs> and it can be annoying sometimes when he's on Twitter. He's like, actually, it's like, dude, we're, tra- we're having fun over here talking about aliens. Le- leave us alone. But yeah. I do. There's like nothing special about down. the date of Christmas. It's like, shut the fuck up, dude. Shut up. He's People really are trying good to have at a dumbing good time. down. He's really good at dumbing down stuff that is difficult for bright people to wrap their head around. Well, I liked when he when he uh, when he muscled around James Cameron and James Cameron changed changed the movie. I liked that. That was what he do. Hmm. I like that too. He said that the, the stars were stars. wrong in fucking ti- at the end of Titanic, and James Cameron got all insecure and re-edited the movie with the right stars. I like that's that. Pretty, that that's like pretty it. funny. Yeah. That is, un- yeah, you know, you- he's winning me back over with something that <laughs> petty and pedantic. Like to- yeah. <laughs> so that that ties into my thoughts on him. I like Neil deGrasse Neil deGrasse Tyson when. He's sticking to his lane, his subject matter expertise. Stars in Titanic, I can buy that he knows all about stars. That's kind of his thing. When he starts telling me, I don't know, uh, social issues or Christmas not being a special date or whatever, now I'm like, ah, stay in your lane, man. You don't know any more about Christmas (laughs) than a regular job. Oh, no, no, no. He's good on that. Well, what he was saying is they they just arbitrarily pick the day. So, like, and it is good for everybody to know. Well, like, hey, y'all know that probably. nobody says that that's when Jesus was born, right? Like, not no one says that. Which just the day we celebrate it, and that was sort of a Millie, don't Christians don't Christians say that? that, the that I think Christians did with tons of people who say that. Yeah, they, no, 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 no. There are individuals on the street who say. I say I'm it. saying it's no one. <laughs> I say it too, Woody. I lie. Yeah. yeah that's, <laughs> Y'all say all kinds yeah. of things. What I'm saying is it's no one's belief. It's part yeah, of no, no one's true. belief system. Yeah, I don't stick like to the Catholic Church. I'm pretty sure it's right. someone's belief system. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we it's can't a couple million people's belief I don't system. think, I think yeah. everyone should know if they thought a little harder that it's when we celebrate his birthday. And I think that's, that's all he's letting them know that they just picked a day. That's all he's saying. I it's about really it every Christmas. Christmas. Well, people need to know about the winter solstice, Taylor. It was no, a big don't. deal for the last half a million years. It's only in the last Wasn't, 50 that, that we care 20, so much about this Christmas 25th? free shit. Is Christmas 25th. the winter yeah. solstice? Wait, Christmas, Christmas is, is 50 the years old. I think old. it's the 22nd yeah. is the winter solstice. Like, right? uh, maybe it was my birth we're celebrating. I mean, he, he just did the thing where it's like the winter solstice was traditionally uh, is when they worshipped Ra and Ramses and Osiris <laughs> and all that stuff. And it's like, just let people fucking have Christmas, man. It's when they <laughs> worship everything. So the winter solstice was was a huge religious know. holiday for every religion that ever learned to recognize it because it it's the shortest day of the year. And many of them probably interpreted that as our time is getting short. The days are getting shorter. This is the big day, though, where we all have the big celebration and the prayer and the feast and whatever God they believe in say, all right, more time you shall have. And the days start getting longer again. It's like this indication you can predict every year. Like, look, he's taking our time away. God is taking Did you our think days about this away in prison? little by little. I just made it up just now, but, but it makes a, sense, though, right? I, this seems Kyle like a prison thought. thinking about what Christmas <laughs> means to me. I like your and you know what I landed on? This is what Christmas is for me. Christmas comes around every year. I have to spend thousands of dollars on <laughs> presents. In exchange, I get like a couple sweaters, which I also buy. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas to me. I recommend you gotta Judaism. lean into the Jesus Sean side Will. of it because you're Mr. Gift Giver. You know, like no one, no one's gonna outdo your gift giving. So you gotta, <laughs> you gotta find some other happiness there. Just lean into the food. I don't, I don't celebrate like any real ho- holidays really, or, or any days actually. You know, I just try to have a good time every day. I don't, I don't need anybody to tell me that <laughs> there's a special day coming up. We should get the ham yeah. out. Fuck you. Dude, sometimes I, I roll to my my grandma's house on like July 3rd, and I'm like, where are the presents? <laughs> 
I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I, like I give gifts is all it, year long. Is it Christmas I, already? Yes, <laughs> going back. I, yeah. I fool my grandparents. <laughs> every, I'm like, oh, it's so grandma, I come in like I come December. in like absolutely really? boiling hot in the parka, and I'm like, oh, don't even look out there. Like, it's, it's an absolute in a nightmare. way, like <laughs> as our as it seems our, like Christmas is coming every three weeks now. <laughs> <laughs> as a, well, as our I'll elders get older, you know, it'd be nice to have a couple extra holidays with them, and if they're forgetful, why not? Mm. We've act of kind of really. I'm thinking about starting yeah. to celebrate Steal on Grandpa's the Jewish TV. holidays just to get my numbers up. Because the Jews, if a they parent have a lot of ever gets dementia, I'm going to make sure every day is their birthday. That's how it, we're oh, doing speaking it. Of That's the how we're doing this. That is the sweet. primary Jewish holiday. Is it Yom Kippur? Or something? The primary, I mean, is Jewish New Year is Rosh Hashanah, and then a week after that is Yom Kippur, which is the atonement. That's where you apologize. Are they fun? And, Are there any for your sins? Rosh Hashanah is fun. It's like anyone else's New Year. Okay. Uh, Yom yeah. Kippur is the not fun one. That's the mm. that's the one where you don't you fast for a day and you pray nah. and shit. I don't. Yeah, do, I won't I be celebrating. By the way, I don't do week. any of this shit. Uh, I don't do any of this stuff. Um, the, Me too. The, uh, the fun one, I think Purim is the fun one, which is like the the fall harvest celebration. That one's mm -hmm. pretty fun. You eat a lot, basically. Yeah. Um, is the only then, present based one Hanukkah? The only present-based one is Hanukkah, and then Purim and Passover are the food-based ones. Yeah. Passover is all right if you don't take the ceremony shit too seriously and cut straight to the food. That's what yeah. Passover is. <laughs> I like the ceremony as a freed, freed the slaves. I like the way the you The ceremony is so fucking cool. Oh, oh, that's a nice way of putting it. Yeah, the Passover is when they freed the slaves. Not oh, they, really? Well, they freed the slaves. Fucked off. How did they? How did they manage they that? No one got freed. The <laughs> they freed themselves. Um, <laughs> they ran, I watched. They ran away. Got, I, got, got freed them through the desert. Everyone's forty years in the desert. Was fine. Yes. And I watched. <laughs> <laughs> The I watched a Netflix totally documentary cool today. today. You heard about this missing YouTuber? No. Some missing YouTuber is like doing like some tourism stuff. I think uh, Mutahar made a video about it, but he apparently got kidnapped in Afghanistan is where they, they're thinking he is. I did mm. see something about that. Like his name's uh, Miles. He, uh, yeah, yeah, it's Miles. That's the, the person. But I was just thinking like, I, I can't imagine putting myself into that situation. I put myself into some dumb situations, but I, I don't know about like going to some of the places this guy has gone to. I mean, it seems like he's doing it for the right reasons. You know, what, what was he doing? I think it was just like trying to show people the way the world is and the way the oh, people well, live. Well, uh, and yeah, you got what like that. Jesus. Really? Says, I go to the most. <laughs> this is just this is just from his Twitter profile. I go to the most dangerous places on Earth for fun. Afghanistan, oh. Taliban takeover, South Sudan, Ukraine oh. war. And I don't know if this is real, but this looks like the Taliban PR posted like a photo of him with some Taliban people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is with great sorrow to announce that we have lost contact with our beloved brother at Real Lord Miles. His last known oh. sighting was in eastern Afghanistan on the 6th of March. We are doing all we it's can to locate him. The foreign ministry has informed the UK embassy Islamabad. Is this the guy that I've seen the video of having tea with the Taliban? So Maybe I saw I a video where that. I saw a video and it's and, and and where a white man is like in his car and he stopped by like some Taliban guys and he's so scared. He's like trying to make sure that everybody is OK. He's like, you're happy I'm here because I'm happy to be here. Is everyone happy? And they're all like, yes, we are all happy. <laughs> and like, hmm. OK, they're like, we would like you to drink tea with us. Is that a happy thing? Would you, would would you would you like me to? We're all friends, right? Like he's he's so scared that they're just gonna take him behind the building and shoot him. And yeah. like he's he he basically goes and has has nervous afternoon tea with them. <laughs> <laughs> nervous afternoon tea. Yeah, Dude, Zach Zach, pull up that one I linked. It's a different Taliban PR statement that I guess they put up before this one when people were saying that the Taliban captured and killed him. No, I, look, the Taliban get a bad rap. No. Yeah, they look at what look at what they won against. Yeah, look at that. They posted our beloved brother Miles Rutledge is oh, doing fine. The, the Islamic family. Emirates of Afghanistan will never hurt their guests. Rumor of his arrests are being circulated by state enemies in order to harm tourism in our magnificent nation. <laughs> tourism. Holy shit! Can are, would they like us to go? I'll go to Afghanistan with you. You want to go? It, like, like here's the thing. The only thing that's keeping me go. from not the, the only thing stopping me is I didn't think they wanted me. If no, I knew that that group of guys right there with the beards and the hats, like 
like genuinely wanted to take me out and show me a good time in their country and like expose me to their culture and be like, this is my family and this is why I do this. I'd love that. I'd go to Afghanistan. I'd go. Those guys, I'd give it, I'll say yeah. this, that video I watched, like, like, like those guys seem chill. You know, the ones he had tea with or whatever. You could teach them like proper form lat pull downs and stuff. Cause they were bound to hurt themselves oh, yeah. in the gym the way they Dude, were messing I around would, with it. I, that see, you can't train the enemy though. Like I, I'm not sure. As soon as we, as soon as we're like, <laughs> they're, they're going to train okay, either way. You may as well help them avoid injuries. I, did you see Steven Seagal is literally teaching Aikido to the Russian troops for use in Ukraine? I'm not making a word of that up. I believe that someone in Russia led him to believe he's doing that. He is on the ground training Russian troops in Aikido in Russia right there is now. No Taylor, way. There's like before, an actual. Wait, 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 wait Taylor. Choose your words carefully before you disrespect the Sifu, Okay. What's he gonna do? Say? <laughs> he's gonna come fucking beat me up with his giant fist and his soy sauce hair. <laughs> fucking magic marker I, rob schneider tells the story about him like walking off, uh, they're like wait 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 and he he's ignoring them and he like walks off the boat into the water or some shit when he comes back his all, all his hair is like all magic marker his whole hairline is so it's like running into his face and shit everybody hates that guy he's a, he's a real deplorable fucker. dude he's but, been but, a russian citizen since 2016 it says what yeah they love him over there like his movies are huge over there he makes a bunch of movies over there yeah dude i saw a, a, i saw a clip on a, a, in a youtube video of him doing a full fight scene while sitting in an office chair and even i thought even i thought i'm not that fucking lazy oh come on you can relate <laughs> i mean if like, I, yeah. I would if i could maybe yeah. right but like shit stand up a little <laughs> it's not his, he has two, lazy boy yeah he's uh there's whole youtubers who do nothing but dog on <clears throat> steven seagal movies because he makes like 10 a year or something right now and he'll be in like 10 minutes of a 90 minute movie uh and then he'll he'll sit in the chair for a lot of it uh, like he doesn't like getting up hmm. i love spooky supernatural stuff and, oh. or or just hallucinations you know all right all right and, if you if you do then like i, I mentioned a minute ago but wendigoon like like um, he's, uh, I watched his video about like sea mysteries and maybe I was just in the right mood and the lighting in the room was right. It was like two in the morning when I watched too. It was creeping me out. I was getting like the chills a little bit. Like, mm. like, like I was getting a little uncomfortable. You were getting with, those, like, those goosebumps. Pulling the blanket up a little bit. Yeah. Cause he, cause he's talking, he's, he's telling a story of like this turn of the century, uh, boat going from America to Europe. And the captain brings his his wife and his new and his like young child. He he crews the ship with fifteen good men, like m half of which are close friends and confidants, all experienced sailing men carrying a thousand barrels of barrels of ethanol to uh to 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 Europe. And the ship is found about a few hundred miles off the coast of Europe, completely empty, and with no signs of struggle. Food is on the tables. Ink and parchment is out on the table, so the ship couldn't have rocked very much. Um, there's a little water in the hole, but that's who, uh, kind of standard who, for those ships of the of that found age. It? And one, um, I'll get to that. And and uh, one of the lifeboats, the, the ropes have been cut and it's missing. So hmm. like you know, you, he met, Wendigan makes the point that like in that time you wouldn't cut your rope as a sailor at sea on a cross Atlantic voyage. Yeah, you yeah. Cut. you have so much rope, and then you have no rope. And rope is a your rigging is your life out there because your sail is your life. You need it, yeah. It, it, they need that rope. They, you wouldn't cut the rope except in an emergency. We need it now. There's no time to like untie a knot. There's no there, ten seconds doesn't exist here. We mm -hmm. need and so the the people who find yeah. it, um, another experienced captain who takes the ship in to get the salvage rights. So then there's a court proceeding to determine if everything's legit because you have a and and so like. They investigated this thing thoroughly and came up with every conceivable theory. And in the end, no one has any idea what happened to the captain, his family, his 12 or 15 crew. They can't come up with a scenario that makes sense mm. yeah. for, for them to abandon their ship like that. Or, and the other thing, the and valuable was, cargo. Was there anything stolen from the ship? No, that's what I was no. going to say. The valuable cargo is there. The captain's sword is in his quarters. You'd think that, you know, if, if, if things got rough, he'd have the sword, you know, not under his bed. Pretty not, logical. Yeah. You know? So um, what, I, what what was the conclusion of it? Like, that's the, they have every, no idea? So he tells like five or six stories about the sea in this one video. And the end of every story is, who knows? 
<laughs> like like no one knows and um that all the cargo is intact a thousand barrels of ethanol which i suppose is like reasonably valuable at the time certainly not um a small amount of money yeah it's uh ethanol? Those, for some reason those creep me out it, it's it's alcohol it be, yeah yeah it's, so it's just al it it's alcohol it's alcohol for industrial use oh okay. you, you know it's not ghosts right it's not bullshit it's no not so why did the why would people leave the ship quickly if you think the ship's going to go down, you leave the ship. If you if the ship is like in a position where you think she's going down and the life bo boat is a more reasonable choice than staying on board. Mm -hmm. So so you got to think of like all the scenarios in which that thought occurs to you. Fleeing from pirates, weirdly. You, well, pirates Maybe. would rob you, right? They take yeah, you up you and think. all you think. Um, so like in my mind, I have to get so convoluted. I'm like, all right, maybe pirates come. But it goes bad, and the captain's family is killed, and the pirate one pirate turns on the other pirate, and he kills that pirate because he doesn't like that a family's been killed. He's there for the money, not for all this craziness. And then everybody has to go, but no, that doesn't work. It doesn't no make any blood. sense. There's no blood. There's no mm -hmm. like sign of struggle. I want to say that the actually, I want to say that the uh, the 300 pound block that they put the compass in. I don't know what those are called. It's some not nautical term for the thing the compass goes in on a sailboat. It's a big thing that was knocked over. Which was odd, because it's heavy. And so, so in, in uh, I'm assuming in all these examples, ev everybody who jumped ship and like got on the lifeboat, they died before they got to shore. So there was never any. They never to found be a like, body. Oh, never... the the SS um, Ulysses. I was on that. What happened was X Y Z. No, Just... no. This is a, this is like 15 men who were never seen from again. Another one was more modern. This was that because the first one's 100 years ago. The second one was three mm -hmm. guys on what looked like a. Um, um a catamaran like like maybe like fishing vessel type thing yeah and uh like like all three of them somehow they found the boat um with the sail ripped empty and the food was laid out on the table again um you know the the engine was in neutral and uh there's a fishing pole out on the deck and the uh the fishing line is the, the hook is in the rigging under the boat these are all the clues we have. And so they had to do another one of these like coroner's report things in a situation like this. And the coroner has to write the most plausible thing for what he, what he thinks happened. And his is that guy gets his fishing line stuck, falls in the water. The other guy says, oh, no, I'll save you. He jumps in the water. Third guy throws the boat in neutral because two of his friends are in the water. And the mast swings around and hits him three stooges style, knocking him into the water and the boat cruises off, leaving them all. This, to die. this doesn't make any sense. That's what Wendigo said. He's like, so it needs to be like some sort of slapstick comedy. Style you need, thing. you need Mo and Curly to make that work. <laughs> Clean out the whole ship. They're all gone. Yeah. Uh, what about a methane gas bubble? But that would probably sink the ship too. So, th so if something like that happens, then, then maybe that could explain people abandoning a, sh a ship though. Right. Like, like, yeah. Like, like, but, but that wasn't the case. You know, the, the boat didn't have water in it. And like, right. in the, in the case of, um, in one of the instances, um, the records were so meticulous that you could tell the hour that it had happened. It was like, all right, it happened between 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. on August the 3rd. Something happened. And because, because there's a, there's an account from 8 a.m. 8 a.m. to 9 p 9 a.m. And then 9 a.m. to 10 never happens. Hmm. That is bizarre. It is, and these make for very creepy stories. <laughs> yeah, he's got so that can be you stories. He's got so you could go on a boat with your friends and just disappear. You don't. Dude, know. The ocean is so fucking scary, and, and it's that, the that was... scariest. Like demons are arguably the least scary thing out there because I don't know if demons can swim. Sharks can, <laughs> octopus <laughs> can, everything in there that wants to eat you can. Like, the ocean's like a big murder factory. Like if Aquaman could hear, he would just hear constant screaming of everything eating everything else constantly. In yeah. The ocean. Have, have, have you hmm. never like read those like excerpts or vignettes from soldiers who were part of like a, like a destroyer in the Pacific that got sank in World War II? And they're just like hanging out, bobbing for hours and hours Sharks waiting for rescue. In. And there's like they have people writing journals like some of the soldiers like, yeah, and every you know, every so often someone just gets torn down and it's like Shit. you're just waiting for yourself to be that I don't person. know how many shocks they were maybe 500 maybe nose eye, dark eyes like a nose eyes yeah yeah fucked up shit it's very interesting though That's oh and drifter transitioning seamlessly to the standing desk 
<laughs> I, I, I usually mute and try to do it less noticeably. The the that's motor our... can be a little loud. No, we didn't hear a thing. No, we didn't hear a thing. That's, the, uh, that's the USS Indianapolis, right? The uh, the World War II bomb bomb transporting ship. That, it might uh, before, be. That I don't know many of the U.S. I think they surrendered on the USS Missouri. There was a USS Connecticut or something that got sank during the war. I, I don't know the USSs. So I don't know if I'm making a joke or not, but is the, I I'm, don't talking about the, the, I'm talking about the the boat from the Jaws story. That's a true story, you know, about the boat going oh. down and and the men in the water with the sharks. That happened. Well, I'm I'm sure it happened a lot of Wait, times throughout history Jaws where a boat a goes down story? and there's sharks. No, no, no. The story, well, the spooky actually, story Jaws, they tell the night before in Jaws. Jaws is based on that bull shark or whatever that swam up the Jersey River and and, and like attacked a few th th a few people in that brackish water inland. Um, and they loosely based it on that. But um, the story that <clears throat> Quint tells in, uh, mm -hmm. you know, they're down below deck drinking, showing off scars, yeah. right? right. And laughing it up. You see this one? No, uh, she broke my heart. She broke my heart. And they all laugh <laughs> it up. And he's like, what about that one? What about that one? And it gets, he gets real sober and quiet. And he's like, ah, that's, all, that's all tattoo I had removed. Uh, what did it say? Mom. It said uh, USS Indianapolis. <laughs> he's like, you were on the Indianapolis? Yeah. <laughs> Roy Schneider's like, oh, what happened? Tell me the story. And it's just like not a happy story. They they were transporting the fucking bomb. Uh, and, and the mi mission was so secret that they never radioed that their boat had been torpedoed because their boat wasn't supposed to be there. So like 1,500 men or something go into the water, burnt badly in oil slicks that are still burning in some cases, covered in oil, shit, blood, and death. As the, as the ship sinks and no one's going to be coming looking for them it's for insane. a week or something like that. And they're bobbing up and down and the sharks show up and it's the Pacific fucking ocean. So there's a lot of them and they ate hundreds of men. You Do know. you guys it, ever it's arguable how many sharks ate and how Did many you... sharks killed? But it was a lot of men who were eaten <laughs> and that Tony Stewart had killed a man on the track. And I was like, yeah, I remember that. that like, no, no, no. Dude. He like straight up killed him on purpose. And I was like, guys, come on. They're driving race cars. These things have thousands of horsepower. You know, it happens. People die. It's a dangerous sport. Nobody says that so and so killed Dale Earnhardt. I remember him going into that turn. He bumped somebody. Nobody mm -hmm. talks about that. It's like, no, no, no. Watch. And then I watched Tony Stewart murder a man on the track. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. Who knows what I was watching? I couldn't tell who was who. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that, like, right before he gets to him, you hear the engine just roar. Like, he's going around the turn, and the engine's going, but it's like, rrr, rrr, and then he mows the guy down. Like, that's murder. But it's yeah. hard to feel bad for someone who's, like, walking into an active racetrack going, you, you. And it's like. Common thing. Is that common in racing? That My father has done it. Be. <laughs> Your father <laughs> has done that. Yeah, the guy. I, I talked about this in the hangout. When you're like an amateur race car driver, there's no team paying for that fucking car. That's your goddamn car. And he just cost you thousands, maybe tens of thousands. And who, guess who? Oh yeah, I'll get the, the guys in the garage will fix it up. No, you will. Yeah, but you he's and in your a car. garage, Taylor. So, it's yeah. only reason. So he's like, Lamar fuck you, you piece of shit. Car. He's like throwing. Of his, course, he threw his helmet. Hit the guy's car with his helmet. Oh, that, that doesn't cost him a six hundred dollar helmet. That's exactly right. Yeah. What a life <laughs> insult to injury. <laughs> so was that was that a big story in the racing world back in the day, or was was were most people like ridiculous? They're trying to blame him for hitting someone who walked onto an active track. It was a big. When did it did happen? It was. It's been a long. Looks like it was like two thousand seven, like fifteen or eight, years right? ago. Yeah, like it, fifteen years ago. Um, I I. I watched it twice and it's like, man, why does he hit the accelerator? Why does he hit the accelerator? Why is he doing it? Is he trying to like scare him and then things went wrong? Or yeah. did he steer? Dude, you I was I was tell. having fun in the hangout being like, no, I don't think it doesn't seem like he tried to hit him. Like just <laughs> <laughs> trying to Taylor, it watch. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't hear it. I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. His body Obviously, um, he's in a race suit. <laughs> he's in a race suit, you know, so it's like overalls and they're they're very sturdy. But you can tell his body isn't all put together right. But it's being held together yeah. by the race. Ass backwards. He, his his legs. He, he's much longer from tip heels. of foot to to to, to tip yeah. of finger now than he was before mm -hmm. because things are disconnected and broken. Um, yeah, Tony Stewart smoked that guy. I, I'm pretty sure he did it on purpose too. Yeah. Um, well, Tony Stewart's still racing, as far as I know. He well, I mean, he's pretty he retired now, but okay, yeah. Well, then he, he continued to race many years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, uh, did, Taylor I mean, he the race racing as far as Taylor knows. <laughs> yeah, as far as I know, <laughs> yeah. as far as I know a... all sorts of movies win Oscars and. <laughs> <laughs>
Like that's the real intent. Like, did Dale Earnhardt never killed anybody? They they called him the Intimidator. They called his Tony Stewart's Stewart. the fucking Intimidator. Mm, true. Is that really what they call him? That year, a few races later, he, do you stop racing? I mean, oh, they call him the Intimidator before or after he killed that guy. Well, 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 they, they called call, oh, they called Earnhardt. The yes. Yeah, oh, they didn't call the murderer the intimidator. intimidator. No. Although the murderer would really one up the other. That really would. Who, keep who's the uh, who's the biggest that. heel in the racing world? Who's the guy? Jeff if it's anything Gordon. like fighting, like that, they love to hate. They do Jeff hate Gordon? Jeff Gordon. Yeah. Back in the day, it was Jeff Gordon. Like, why? Well, I love the guy Gordon. I know of. I love Jeff Gordon because I guess he was the rainbow warrior. He wasn't as tough as all the other good old boys. And he kicked their asses race after race after race. He was head and shoulders above all these dumb rednecks that looked down on him for not being a dumb redneck. I was all about it. I was always a, Deller, uh, a Jeff Gordon fan. Uh, I liked the look of the car. I love the DuPont car. Like, like everybody else's cars look, looked kind of plain. And like I recognized them, but his had its own fucking thing going on. It makes sense. DuPont is automotive paint. And uh, I like Jeff Gordon's look. I, like he was the California guy who knew how to turn right. Every time they go to a road course, he showed it. Oh, and, uh, and I liked yep. him. Yeah. Yep. I interviewed him for a bit at uh, Amelia Island a couple of weeks ago. And uh, super great guy. You know, he's uh, he's a proper car guy. You know, he's uh, and uh, he's lovely. What's a proper to. car guy? Well, uh, somebody who could uh, uh, that t- that Taylor wouldn't mind talking to. That it doesn't have to be all about cars. You know, they oh, okay. there there can be some overlap, and he can be a pleasant person to actually talk to. And he's not nerding out on stuff that nobody else cares about. Over, he's not over. autistically automotive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, precisely. Just a normal guy you can talk about Magic the Gathering yeah. with. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where the conversation what, went. Just you know, whenever <laughs> whenever you get into a hobby, I like to like steep myself in it and like seek out the people who are good at it and the people mm-hmm. who got good at it and sort of like learn from them and sometimes you meet those people and it's like oh you didn't arrive uh here at, at tennis because you were collecting talents like me you've just you're just an autistic ta- tennis man who's been doing nothing but tennis your whole life and you're obsessed yeah. with it like you there's plenty of those people you meet along the way and they're great to learn from because all they do is that thing all they do is that thing oh yeah that's who you want to learn from. You don't want if I'm learning a sport on YouTube, I don't want to go to a channel called General Sports Knowledge. <laughs> if I'm learning tennis, I want to go to the tennis fiend and a That's guy it. who's like, hey, third upload of the day. We're playing fucking tennis. I love tennis. <laughs> like, Dude, this guy, this guy's gonna teach me how to play tennis. Same with Pickle Magic Together. Are- you yes. you 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 watch a video of a guy teaching you a Magic the Gathering strategy, you immediately know how good he is at the game by his inability to make eye contact with his webcam. Yep. <laughs> I yep. go, this guy cannot make eye contact with this cam right now. He knows a good blue counter strategy I can learn. All like, I'm saying is that easy. black is really strong in the current meta, that's all. Definitely. Definitely <laughs> the strongest. <laughs> <laughs> Dustin Hoffman there. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, re- he's also Rain, man. They're 37, 37. <laughs> 37. 20 life points. You have 18 <laughs> mana left. 18 mana. 18 mana. Gotta spend it. <laughs> it's the, the trial of um, Adolf Eichmann. Uh, mm. I, and they have the real footage from the trial. There's Adolf Eichmann sitting in his glass box. And it was. Is he a Nazi? He, a Nazi? Yeah, that, I, he was, that was the a main Nazi. Nazi. He was the architect. Does he of the sound Final like Solution. a Nazi? I'm always positive that he wasn't the main one. <laughs> yeah, the main one I think of is a different Adolf. Yeah, yeah. Goebbels. Yeah. No, a- not Adolf. No. No. He's the going. main one. Keep Hitler. going. He's got a. Yeah. Oh, 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 no, no, no. Okay, I know about Hitler. I'm saying that Adolf Eichmann <laughs> knew was, about him. For the listener, Hitler was the leader of Nazi Germany. <laughs> yeah. Starting well, in the right wrong place. <laughs> <and this, laughs> <who Hitler again? laughs> no, so, so Hitler did a lot of things. I'm not trying to, by the way, I'm not trying to take any like onus off of Hitler here, but Adolf Eichmann was the guy who's like, it said it on his plaque. I was not trying to take any you know what I mean? From. Like, like on his door. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Oh. Far be it from him. <laughs> Big ups to Hitler, but <laughs> no, Adolf Eichmann. Jesus Christ. No, so they got him in that fuck it's what they did. This, this happened in 1960, many years after the war, obviously. Uh, they, they caught his ass, the Mossad did, kidnapped him out of South America, injected him with something, threw him in a uniform, drug him through the airport, and was like, ah, we've got a sick man here, faking Spanish accents, got him on the plane, he wakes up in Tel Aviv. Guess what? 
that uh, that thing you signed while we were slapping you around for three days at, in that in that building, that says you're going on trial in Israel. And you agreed to it. They throw him in the glass box and they put him on trial and the documents are piled sky high. They bring a witness from every country that he killed Jews in, an eye, eyeball witness. They've got the documents there of everyone who came into Auschwitz for like a couple years and the numbers match the numbers that everybody's fucking tatted up with so they know it's a real document. And they've got quotes from him. The, the, the prosecutor has a fucking number on his arm, by the way. That was interesting. And he and he's going through the. That doesn't the, look good um, for that guy. Then yeah. <laughs> it doesn't look good for anybody. Are you saying it's um, personal? I'm it was he, he, he so was personal. Very personal. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I, I was fascinated by this thing because he's def- he defended himself eighty percent of the way through the trial, saying like, "No, no, that, that's not true. I was following orders in Hungary. I was following orders in Poland. I didn't say this. I didn't say." That. And they're like, "Here's some quotes from you," and they read this. It's just very incriminating quote from him. And all I- Eichmann's like, maybe I'd been drinking, or <laughs> or maybe I maybe I didn't say that. I don't remember saying that. And it's like, dude, you're done. It doesn't really come across yeah. as as well as I'm doing it because there's German being translated to mm, Hebrew, yeah. and there's a, a delay. That's, that's a very funny happened. thing to like focus on in like a Holocaust trial, though. It's is like, like we're going to mention now something pretty mean you said. It's like, <laughs> no, 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 you know, no, no. I don't, I think you're, I think you're, I think you're burying the lead here, Mr. Attorney. I think you, well, I think you should lead off stronger. You know, there's hurt the feelings quote, in so many countries. Him <laughs> yes. and it's him, it's him talking oh, about Zach his just true posted one of the quotes. A, it's fucked up. It's him letting you know that he's a real Nazi and someone who, 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 who is a real Nazi does their, does their job with like joy in their heart. Jesus the way Christ. he kills the Jew, you know, he's like, he's really wow. laying it on thick about being a Nazi. This it's quote is outrageous. Out. I'm scared to read it for fear that yeah, it will be like a crazy, I will leap right? into my fun. grave laughing because the feeling that I have five million human beings on my conscience is for me a source of extraordinary satisfaction. Yeah, yeah. that's a good quote. Doesn't play well in court. I don't think you'd the imagine. jury's going like that. Can you, yeah. like, if you saw that in a movie, you'd be like, Come on, I need a realistic yeah. bad guy. I need someone with a little nuance in the mix. It's, it's yeah. like if Tony Soprano was like, and another thing, all yeah. the Jews got to go. It's like, it's like, <laughs> all right, all right, Tony. How about you? How about you handle New York first? <laughs> yeah. you can get Tony always it. liked the Jews. He did. Uh, yeah, the documentary is very cool. I didn't watch the last ten minute, minutes of it. I'm sure they're gonna fucking kill him or something like that. I had to come do this. Yeah, it doesn't go but, well. Uh, Eichmann. Let's I think it ends poorly for Eichmann. Hanged or, or shot. I think or he something. escapes at the end. I think. I think it turns out Hitler was alive the whole time. Sneaks Goes him to out. Argentina. But no, dark side of the moon, iron sky, mm, baby. Of course, no, idiots. It's in Antarctica. <laughs> yeah, that's where Hitler I, yeah. went. Have you seen Argentina? Is uh, Rogan not getting jokes? Like <laughs> no, over his head? dude. He's look. I like Joe's show. And and Joe knows more about comedy than me, and he's funnier than me. Blah, 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 all that, all those things. But God, he doesn't get a joke. There was he's having this discussion <laughs> with this with this lady, and um, they're talking about the Nazis or something. And and she does this really good wordplay about how ah, you know, you could defend anything that they've done. And Joe's like, what about the Nazis? Did they have a right? And she's like, they did, the third right. And he yeah. doesn't get the little wordplay joke oh. that he's making. Mm-hmm. He goes, I think it's, I don't think it's right. I think it's, I think it's Reich. Jamie, what is a Reich? You know, <laughs> oh, what is Joe. a Reich? And it, like, he doesn't know what a Reich, Reich means. Empire. He doesn't know what a yeah. Reich is, and it's and and she's sitting there like, like really awkward. So the first Reich would have been, <laughs> I guess, the Roman Catholic Empire or yeah. whatever, and the second Reich would have the been second the is the Ottoman Empire. Yeah, and then Hitler creating the Third Reich in the forties, and then you often hear the uh, Fourth Reich from neo Nazis and such, and. And uh, so, yeah, that's it. There's, oh, really? I would have, people there's only now? so much. Well, we're hoping we're hoping to staunch that down. And keep, no. keep does does right. Reich necessarily mean bad? No, because it, no, like, it just in America be a it right. Just, be it's like like right? that Charlie Chaplin mustache. Not necessarily bad. Bad today. Michael Jack or Michael Jordan. <laughs> the meaning has changed over time. But but Hitler meant it as empire and we mean it as empire. And you got to go back to a little bit before. I don't know if the Dude, that's a terrible track record of Reichs. Like the first Reich, you said it was the Roman Empire. Roman Cat. Yeah. I would have the been like the Roman wildly Catholic successful. Empire. The, the, the yeah. wildly yeah. successful. And then and then the Ottoman Empire. The church. Not as successful, but wildly successful. Huge drop off. 
on that. I was third waiting line. for Taylor's How third, many? right? I was, I was, <laughs> Did you see it? Yeah. The like, we got the first one, <laughs> we got the this second, second one. one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that's pretty well, embarrassing. Well, they're not like, like aspiring to empires. That, where he's, those no, are the he, Germanic empires. Yeah, like yeah. Those were the Germanic level. empires in particular. Like, like that's what he's, he's aspiring to be the third hmm. Germanic empire. The, not just the third in succession, because there's many families that ruled in them yeah. and it changed hands many times over those hundreds of years. But he's talking about a new thing. Um, right. Didn't work out, luckily. Didn't they? Good for everybody else. Didn't work out so much. Yeah, not good luckily. Thanks else. to the sacrifice of like millions yeah. and millions but of a hundred million European men. Oh, is that correct? The Weim the Weimar Republic was the Second Reich, not the Ottoman Empire. That was the that was the ruling party that Hitler overthrew. Yes. Yeah, that was in the. the that was post twenty one twenties and thirties, yeah. yeah. Post the, the weekend, the, the weekend Eastern revolution. I think. I think it ended in the twenties right. or maybe even nineteen twenty flat, but it goes back to the the eighteen hundreds, right? Yeah, yeah. If you had to no, go live in a, any that's empire, that's a really good documentary, though. I highly recommend it. It's fun to see empire. Empire. Yeah, any empire before the year one thousand. Ooh, huh? so it's got to be a good while ago. You can't just pick okay. up something super recent. Wrong question. question: Do I seems... get to be Genghis Khan? <laughs> No, if but so, you get how about this? Mongolia. <laughs> you get you're not you're not you're not Genghis Khan. You're not even a super high ranking general, but you're like a lieutenant he respects. You're in a good place. Okay. All right. Ooh. I mean, Peak Rome was probably kind of awesome, actually. That's what I, I was mean, going for. Yeah. Peak Rome was pretty fucking sweet, I think, for, yeah. for a lot of folks. Or maybe Peak Athens. Peak Athens was probably all right too. I'm going to be cool. 100 percent uh, Yeah, Rome 100%. has got to be it. Like nobody got else. Toilets. Even, yeah, they've got toilets, dude. Like, like, yeah, like running like, water. You can't say that about everyone. They had hot running water if you're rich. But I think Good you could wine, just be a soldier. Olive I think oil. you could sign up for the army and and eat and and you know have a job. It seems yeah. like Rome. W seems like Rome was a much better place than say 500 sure. years ago. Yeah. Fucking United Kingdom. You, you want to be like Rome in the year like three. Yeah. Not like not like yeah. four thirty three. Like I like, base this yeah. entirely like, on the TV show Spartacus, but I think I'd like to own gladiators. Mm. I bet that would be a stressful, <laughs> stressful <laughs> job. Yeah, Based I mean, on what Badiatis had to, to do, like, you got to specify. You know, wh white ones. Uh, <laughs> yes. But like, uh, uh, no, just, they would be from every uh, corner of the kingdom. There was a Woody lot of sex in that show, and everyone was a fucking fitness influencer. So, but, but <laughs> would you want to have sex with gladiators, like people who are trained to kill? You're judging me now, and that's you could not find cool. sexy whores to have sex with who like don't know how to kill you, all and don't the, spend um, all day training to do so. Every the, I was really talking about the he's female he's staff. A, there were like orgies, and all those girls were tens. That that one, you know what? I would do crazy torpedo tits. If I were a big like, if I were the <laughs> what what was Badiatis called in Spartacus? What is the name of the 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 guy who owns all the gladiators, the glad gladiatorium or some shit. Yeah, I would want to be the guy like, who's uh, like Proximo in Gladiator, like the Prox promoter. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, like yeah, that yeah. guy. I would want yeah. to like be known for something. Like, you know, those guys with the big nets and the tridents. Like, I wouldn't mm -hmm. just yeah. be a gladiator trainer. It'd be like, we got to go to uh, Tayloratus's, uh, you know, whatever, in order to <laughs> get the school. finest <laughs> uh, net throwers in all of Rome. Like, he's known for that. Like, that would that would be fun. Actually, it, it probably wouldn't also be fun because you'd have a bunch of dangerous. It should be men. all smoke and near mirrors. Like you should be the the spear master. And you're like, just poke him. <laughs> <You're just gonna, laughs> man, he's the best gladiator be trainer. His trick is he gives them the longest spears in the kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's not want to be like a sword maker or some shit. You know, like someone who was like so good at his craft that you could charge oh like God. a boatload of money for it. You yeah. know, but like you're kind of cool, like. Whether you're a soldier or a gladiator or whatever, oh, like you gotta I have, you gotta have a Maticus uh, fucking blade, dude. You gotta have a Ferodicus oh, yeah. blade. Yeah, I like bl You'd be Maticus Ferodicus is huge. great. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm on board. Steel. <laughs> yeah, that would be sweet. Living in Rome, I, but like so quickly, you'd be like, oh. This is worse running water. <laughs> like this is like oh, for sure. Ah, ah, they have bathrooms and like everybody else is like, isn't this great? We all get to sit in this room and like sit shit next to each other with no dividers. Like this is so much Hadn't better than everywhere sponge, else Taylor. on the planet. Yeah. And they, they didn't be tell like, me the oh, running water like here was downstream of the latrines. Yeah, <laughs> at least the, the Chinese latrines. don't you own it. Wipe your ass with like a sponge on a stick. 
That's like, yeah, <laughs> not me. I mean, I'm great. Come on. I mean, maybe you don't. But <laughs> I just, uh, everybody well, loves dogs. Good. Everybody who's no, normal yeah. loves dogs. Well, and some people who aren't normal. Hitler had dogs. Hitler loved dogs. <laughs> That's what you know? I was thinking. He was all about German shepherds. I don't know if all you know. I don't know if it was a German shepherd thing or a dog thing because I don't think I've ever seen him admiring. I've other seen video types of him of playing dogs. with it. I've seen video of him playing with his dog. Uh, Blondie, I mean, other dogs. Blondie, yeah. That's yeah, I remember that. Remarkable that you know that. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Oh, I've I've seen the History Channel. And it's always sunny in Philadelphia. And it's and always sunny. And, and you combine those together, and you've got it pretty well wrapped up. The Eagle's Nest, the, the Third Reich, Hitler. The See, Blondie. I was trying to say I learned it from a documentary, but you're more right about it's always sunny. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> learned that. I, I don't know how I feel about him poisoning the dog in the end. They say it was to test the potency of his cyanide capsules that he gave the the dog the uh, the cyanide. But what? I always, and I guess it is because I could imagine putting the dog down. Because the you know the Russians are coming, like I'm not gonna let the Russians get Blondie, but who knows what they'll do? They're dirty fucking Slavic hands. I mean, we raped our way across Eastern Europe all the way to fucking Stalingrad. They're gonna they're gonna want they're some gonna payback on dog. Blondie. Yeah, yeah. They're gonna so, rape the you know, dog. You think they they may yeah. rape? It, 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 oh they may indeed rape Blondie, and and I wouldn't want that. So I probably put the leave dog the down. dog alone and steal the washing machine, just based on what I'm looking at. <laughs> and uh, I think that uh, I, he did test the cyanide capsule on the dog, though. He ended up taking the cyanide and then shooting himself, which is an interesting. Let's bet. Let's make double. Why would you kinda... do two? Like, and how do you not trust cyanide? Isn't like I, my understanding of a cyanide pill wasn't like, and that's the exact amount to hmm. end your life. I thought it was like, this is a chunk of poison. It will kill you. Like it, you're, you're going to die. It could kill all the eight people if we all split this. Maybe I'm no. Wrong. Sometimes that sometimes people survive it, and sometimes they're scarred by it. I guess. Uh, remember that was the whole deal with that James Bond villain, is he had bitten his. Obviously, it's James Bond, but he had yeah. bitten the James the, the capsule, and it had fucked his whole face up because he survived it. And then was that the guy who was captured like, and tortured? Don't, don't don't put it in your pocket. Yeah, like, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Different movie, but yeah, that's Javier Bardem. No, it's the same movie. It's the same <laughs> you, film. <laughs> just, just, just imagine Mr. Bond, don't put that in your pocket or it will become just a magical orb. I've never seen that movie. I don't know what it's about. That's how he looks at it. He's like, Ooh. Hmm. And then he'll he hit, ah, yeah, yeah, you nailed it. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. That was a fun event. I want to shoot an MP40 again. Oh, he's, yeah, he's got to have some crazy dudes that one. come up to him. I don't think you can just buy one. You got a semi automatic one, yeah. The yeah, MP40 I, I, was a hit there, by the, the way. The way the internet works, yeah, like everybody liked I, the MP40. I guarantee somebody out there makes like an MP40 semi-automatic things that you could, you know, fuck or, fuck around with and then stick on the wall. For it sure, was better right? than the Tommy I gun. I just like that at the, at that shooting range, everyone was shooting the MP40 and loving it. Everyone putting it down was like, "Damn, those guys were onto something with this." Dude, those no guys, one is. Those ever, guys were on to something. There's a lot of reasons to shit on the Nazis, but nobody ever goes after like the engineering part of it. 1937, the, they made the this? Are you kidding yeah. me? They're never like those damn Nazis and their math and engineering idiots. They're like, no, it was it was the other stuff that people thought. It was like. the other stuff. Yeah, it was yeah. the other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> they loved the rockets. I think I, I went through my era of going in really deep on all of that. And uh psh, man. I think ja Japanese was, make way meaner Nazis. I, I think <laughs> like, the Iran, they were, uh, were much like meaner. What, what was the uh, Kyle will know 730, this? 731, is that it? Like mm -hmm. that? Where they would do like vivisection. Like yeah, the most, all sorts they of were like, take this people. baby out of this person, inject this disease, put the baby back in that person, and sew that person's arms onto the person, and let's see what happens. Oh, and sure. by the way, fuck that person on your lunch break too, and yeah. like that's literally, and it's, and oh, I write it all down in these documents. Oh, they're yeah, trying to the the people just do it. Like the Japanese were, were absolutely worse than the Nazis, maybe not on scale, but uh, of of you know, actually, when you when you throw China in, yeah. The scale's probably like this, very similar with what, what they did in, in China and Nanking, especially. You know, babies on bayonets. You know, fetuses being torn out of women's wombs while they're raped to death. Um, the vivisection, which is when you dissect a human being alive without anesthetic. Um, tons of experiments that, unfortunately, the Allies would later reap the benefits of. Things like um, they would want to see expose someone to cold, right? Like freeze someone's mm -hmm. arm, frostbite it. 
And then let's find the best way to save those fingers. Well, if you can freeze people every day and test a new thing and like, oh, freeze them a little longer or, or like thaw them out slowly or quickly or inject this into them first or they would do horrible experiments like that. And then, you know, by the time it was over, we've got this data like it's been done now. Here's the we can use this. And it was, you know, just the same way we used the Nazis rocket tech and Werner von Braun. No, apparently with the, mm. all the stuff that they got from the Japanese, they were like, yeah, you're going to want all the things that we've done everything like that and uh you know just cut some deals to the u.s and the u.s like you know don't tell anyone else about this and then they did it and they got the book and they're like this is just a timetable of who's fucking the prisoners none of there's like apparently the Rough. the useful factor of it was so low in terms uh. of what they traded off that they were like oh this is not this is there's information here but how much of it is like scientifically that we're going to believe was done mm -hmm. in a, a certain way. They're just like, this was just like fucked up people having you know, fun masquerading it's as scientists. Not even any fucked good up stuff. shit. And, and, and to be fair, though, like, I feel like we got them. Like, like, like we went in there and straight that out. Yeah. Like, like they're still embarrassed about that stuff. I saw a video the other day of some Japanese. Oh, he's old, a thousand years old. And he's like crying and apologizing for what he did in the war. Like, I feel like they feel sorry about it now. Yeah, is that what you want? Uh, I don't, and they're looking. They're looking pretty yeah. good. They're looking, uh, the country's looking pretty good. Yeah, they are came, they? They is Japan doing? I, 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 I always think imagine I look, that I look at it. Good. I look at. I look at Germany and I look at Japan, and I'm like, oh, okay. So the U.S. Oh. Uh, they can fix a couple problems here and there. Yeah. Okay. USA, yeah. baby. Yeah, let's get the same. <laughs> well, all it requires is 115 U.S. Army installations in the country. Be great. If I had to It'll live totally in be great. <laughs> any Asian country, it would be Japan, right? Like, is there even a close? Okay, close I think second, there's one that South might. Korea. There, there might be one uh, that likes fucking white people more. I don't think they're down to uh, fuck us, you and I. I think the South Koreans are too full of themselves. We've let them uh, advance a little too far. Um, but the but the Japanese they're going for that culture it. they're going for that civ like civ five cultural victory right now yeah. with K pop and uh, oh and America television. already won the cultural victory we it's are still going on it's final hour there's a lot a lot of moves are happening right now Korea South Korea is doing big stuff you got are kids they? out there dressed like black pink watching fucking One Piece reading the manga <laughs> like they're not uh, they're not watching WWE like they used to. <laughs> NFL's not uh, doing the most NFL's right now. Not, not Football's doing becoming numbers. soccer everywhere. He, he very well may. I would run from a raccoon. They're feisty little fucks. They'll scratch you. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have your flamethrower handy. <laughs> you don't, don't yeah. You don't want to get in a fight with a raccoon. A little animal that's going to be biting you with its rabies mouth, tearing little scratches all over you. You're going to take a few before you put oh, down a raccoon. Oh, let me hey. read this. I, I sent this the other night. It's uh, the thing about utilizing the raccoon. <laughs> what? Oh. <laughs> yeah, we should do that, Woody. Let me... Um, and another game. Let me read this to you. Okay, uh -huh. so game I time. think that this is a... Um, I think this is a police report or something like that. So here we go. September 15th, male Navy enlisted first class petty officer exited a bar intoxicated in an attempt to drive a... Uh, a vehicle equipped with a breathalyzer interlock system. That's the system so that you have to breathe into a, a tube, and if you've been drinking, it will not start. Uh, the suspect was too intoxicated to successfully start the vehicle, so he went into the park where he captured a raccoon <laughs> rummaging in a trash receptacle. The individual <laughs> utilized the raccoon to blow into the interlock system successfully, but the raccoon became unconscious, unconscious from being squeezed and was discarded on the floorboard of the vehicle until a short time later when the raccoon regained consciousness and began to attack the suspect while driving. Causing the vehicle to crash into a residential fence, the vehicle came to a complete stop in an in-ground swimming pool. The suspect <laughs> sustained numerous scratches and bite marks on, the, on his hands, face, stomach, and arms. I'm going to say it's a bullshit story. Because Very it's resourceful. Here. I don't he think that's a legit story. Because Was he a Marine? Because Marines those, are known to uh, improvise. <laughs> those those breathalyzer things you got to do them every fifteen minutes. Well, the, wait, you do? The yeah, yeah like, I, I, I know a guy that actually has one in his Ford Ranger. You got to blow in it, and like every ten to fifteen minutes, a light will come back on. You got to blow in it again to make sure 
the person driving isn't intoxicated. That keeps people from like passing it on to somebody else at the bar. Be like, here, blow on this so I can start my truck. It could be a short mm. drive. Like, you know. Yeah, it's very creative. You you have got to be stone cold drunk to be like, God, I can't even start my I, truck. I, I just, I just see the guy sobering up like, trying to catch a raccoon. You've got to be pretty awesome to like utilize a raccoon to make like, you know, you catch him by the trash cans, play him like an accordion until you pass the thing and then toss him in the passenger side and drive. I'm pretty drunk to just leave it in there like, ah, well, who knows? Might need to use him again in 15 minutes. He'll be my raccoon by buddy. Taco Bell. Yeah. <laughs> why, why not just ask a person to blow into it? Like, hey, dude, blow in this for me. Why not use most, a device? Most people would just be like, uh, no, no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, fuck you. you. You'd be surprised what people would do. It seems like you could keep a, um, a billow, you know, the thing that like, kind of accordion like they used to uh, blow on a fire mm -hmm. and just put, you know, shh, fill the tube for a bit. You get a nice blow on there and you're putting fresh air in it. I'm sure that it, there, it, there has to be some kind of chemical or like bio material that it has to register instead otherwise people would just get like one of those handheld fans hold it up to it and wait i don't know what the system it, is but i bet it's foolproof one way or another yeah. unless you got a raccoon handy yeah <laughs> i know they hey, charge 300 dollars a month to have one so those people obviously went down uh exploring for the titanic this week and yeah. died. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and what i was most surprised by like the internet's always a dark place there's always going to be like some people who, who make some uh mean jokes about it but everybody seems to think it's real funny that some billionaires like died this week. And it's like, ha the billionaires suffered and died. Why didn't you Every... pull yourself up out of the water with your bootstraps? Yeah. Yeah. I don't get it. Like, like why do people actually hate billionaires? Like, like I... Maybe there's <sighs> one billionaire in particular you don't like, like, Oh, I don't like Elon Musk. I don't like what he does. Or I don't like fucking Donald Trump, whatever. But Mr. Anyone with money. We, we, we hate Mr. Beast could like, cure cancer but if he had a hot dog earlier someone would point out he has mustard on his shirt and he's a piece of shit probably yeah they, like, he get, <laughs> he I don't, get so I don't much hate it. they're like mr beast is a bastard look yeah. at him sadistically curing deafness in children <laughs> for views it's it's, it's like, all yeah, ego is, it's it all is ego. for views you're brilliant you mean mm -hmm. he was making youtube content to reach the widest audience possible <laughs> You really cracked the case here. What a piece yeah. of shit. What a scumbag. Like, it's all it's all ego that like it's it's if you're doing too well or if you're doing really bad, people will either kick you. People will kick you on both ends of the spectrum, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I try to just stay in the middle. So this is why I'll never be a billionaire. Yeah, the I, reason I just, that like people. That's were making, why I've that, avoided that trap as well. Yeah. Like, I, yeah, I, I, that, that's like when people are like, "I don't want. I'll go to the gym, but I don't want to get too big." It's like, yeah, 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 I'll work hard, but I don't want to be a billionaire. Like, I don't want to be too good looking or too rich. People will hate on me. Yeah, I'm gonna wake up one morning and these abs are gonna be offensively large. Okay? <laughs> it's gonna be out of nowhere. And I'm gonna I, have to eat pizzas to correct it. I saw um, the bathroom in the submarine was two bottles and that's some generous. Ziploc bags. Ooh. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, by that logic, oh. I have a bathroom right under my utensil drawer <laughs> yeah. in my kitchen. There's bags and all sorts of. Things I have a bathroom there. right next to me. If that's the case, yeah. I saw that uh, the American subs only go 1,500 feet down. It was like 1,550, and that surprised me because this thing was like 12,000 feet down. Does that sound right? Yeah. Damn, yeah. it's really deep. Yeah. Did you yeah. see uh, the? There's only like like all window. subs only go like that 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 comparatively short distance down. The the only other vessel that can go down that deep apparently is owned by Gabe, like Newell, who who invented steam. Uh, oh, he has wow. like okay. it's it's got a cool name he, he also, and it's it's yeah. like the deep Wait. sea explorer, and he has the world record for for deepest descends in all five oceans. Yeah, it's oh, called like God. the Triton or something. I was I mean, you so see lost. A... Yeah. Owned by Gabe, and then you said his last name, which I didn't Newell? gather, and then you said he invented steam. Yeah, <laughs> like. Wasn't that invented like a really long time oh, ago? You mean Archimedes? <laughs> no, he was the first to harness it. <laughs> I'm like, how, it. how does a man invent steam? He, you know what's he, fun? Like the Gabe Newell yeah. like sub. I saw exactly what you're talking about, Kyle. Yeah. And when you see a picture of Gabe Newell's sub, Triton or whatever it's called, it you can tell it's a real submarine. Like it's like, oh, that's no, none of that was from Home Depot. That was from like we make subs.org. Like the yeah. all the pieces were special ordered. Like you can see the picture here. Yeah. Oh like, wow. Looks real and secure. There's a million cameras and, and things. 
when I saw, I watched a 20 minute video of, of course, on YouTube, there's everything. There's a guy with like 150,000 subs who's like, I'm the sub man. <laughs> and he's a, he's a sub expert. And I watched a 20 minute video of him from like three days ago. And literally, he was like, these people are dead. Like, there is a lot of discussion about air being left and how that would work, but they are dead. Like the window was rated for 1500 meters and they are 12,000 feet down. They were crushed instantly. The idea they're rationing air is silly. Like, mm, like okay. it's they like, and at the end of that video, I was kind of like, yeah, well, this guy, he, he is the submarine man. And it does make sense that like, what was it just hanging out down there? Thousands of feet. Sounds past like he was right about for? everything. Yeah. It seems, you know, like, they found the wreckage, right? Like you're up yeah. to speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are they sure it's the wreckage? The other pieces of it, like it's a, like the the standing gear and stuff. Yeah, I, apparently I, it, it imploded, and mm -hmm. uh, the people died instantly. The they're just done. Then they said they died instantly. I, yeah, they would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's we'll it's it's sad to see all the uh, the backlash because it's like, would for one, it takes a certain amount of bravery to do that. I yeah. think like I wouldn't fucking do it. You know? No, not that. So I don't know. It's just armchair people like Twitter's just fucking cancer. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's so analogous to the action. And I mean, this is not a novel take. I've seen so many people talking about it. Like it's so similar to the Titanic itself. Like the, the guy in charge of it was told like, this is not safe. Like this is going to kill you. And they, mm. they fired that guy and settled outside of court. And like he he knew like apparently the first test they did they just lost communication at like 3000 feet or whatever 3000 meters whatever it was like that's like and then just getting back in and going and doing again like i it i couldn't wrap my mind around the video i watched where he's like and it's a bluetooth controller and i'm like i know nothing about <laughs> subs but this is a bad idea sir and he <laughs> the the ceo he was like like we know it's a logitech dog shit two star on amazon device and the guy's <laughs> like this is something that's made to be beaten around by 16 year olds and he like lightly throws it to show how durable it is and he's like we got multiple <laughs> other other controllers here just in case and it's like oh okay i got mad that's, that's where you want to have a bluetooth pairing issue is at the bottom of the sea like are, i this, had no uh, problem with the controller i don't get why people have an issue with it i have seen xbox controllers in billion dollar multi-billion dollar pieces of united states military equipment it's wired it's what we use everything it's, they don't do wireless shit for like submarines they don't like things well are look wired. i don't know about if it's wireless that seems like a an it's oversight insane. i'd want to let's plug that bitch in and make sure yeah <laughs> let's, 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 <laughs> come on but 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 Did all the same batteries <laughs> oh my god if you <laughs> batteries low we'll be fine <laughs> we're gonna be down there for two hours don't worry it's it's, it's on red but we're fine i'll lick them <laughs> does anybody have a walkman perhaps <laughs> <laughs> like, i could borrow your jersey i need though. 18 AAA batteries yeah, <laughs> so uh, so the official statement like Jeez. did they did they at a certain point did they know they were dying or did they just fucking implode randomly implode, I, you're just dead mike mm. i'm just guessing here but that's how they make movies that on its way down, it was just sinking, sinking. They all knew they were in trouble, and then mm. implode dead. Yeah. Okay. So that's it's not that bad. like so. like if it implodes, and it's carbon fiber, like they said, that makes it just absolutely instant because it shatters, mm. and so well, it's like I, I, just powderized. Well, if the window broke, it just immediately threw them under. If I oh, at twelve thousand feet, it's probably six thousand psi. So. I mean that an oxygen cylinder that we play paintball with, like the scary carbon fiber wrap ones, are three thousand psi. They're like double that at yeah. that depth. And so, so they just—I don't know what happens to a human body, but we have seen um, that. I think there's a video. There's definitely images of those. There's two or three of those submersion divers, um, the the ones who do like uh, they they live at that deep depth depth where they're doing the welding and stuff, and someone operated the um the airlock improperly like like they, they might they would have had to have ignored like two or three warnings but they opened the pressure seal and everybody was pressured to i don't know a couple thousand psi and just they just explode they just hmm. like apparently what happens like this far down chunks i i was reading and who knows if this is true or not but because i'd never considered it apparently like 
it's so much PSI that it like compresses the air so violently Ooh. that it like is an explosion down there. And so like your body would just be gooified, like just your, it, it's just like an explosion. You're just not I bet, I think of all it's, the little critters on the bottom of the ocean eating them. Probably. It's yeah. still There's better than like 95% of the deaths that people get. Like, yeah, I think dying in general sucks. Yeah. These guys got an instant one like that. And it's uh, cool. I mean, they did something like very brave. It cool. is cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think yeah. that people are overlooking that. Uh, people are just shitty. Like, yeah. yeah. You're hundred percent right about that. I'd rather go to space. Whole, like, why would people want to go down? It's like, yeah, that's not my area of interest, but if you're an explorer, it makes a hundred percent sense. People climb Mount Everest. The, yeah. People climb. Why do people and, climb and, mountains? Why do you I, go to the bottom of the, cause they're adventurers. I saw this fucking, uh, it was really cool. This video of, uh, it was Everest and it's this woman kind of freaking out. And some guys like telling her to, you know, like stop freaking out. But then, um, it, they're climbing Everest and like someone sliding down, because they've like passed out and they're, they're sliding down the mountain. Like um, I saw that video a couple months ago, I think on Twitter, but uh, yeah, so people dead, die climbing. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. There, there, there was one guy up there that uh, I think they just called him like green boots or something because he yeah. froze to death oh. and he's mm -hmm. just, they can't get him off. He's frozen to the mountain. Oh, um, yes. I mean, nobody wants him either. Yeah. He two apparently two green boots is an important landmark. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Everyone so like people nice. people want to challenge themselves people want to explore it, it i mean if they die they die so. that seems like I, a i don't buy that you can't get the bodies or clean if you wanted to like i feel like not. people are always like ah, i got other things to do i'm <laughs> i'm trying to, to climb everest sherpas. Like, like you don't even have to do it you just have to show up there with enough money to pay sherpas to instead of hauling 200 pounds of gear take a trash can with you and come back with it full mm -hmm. yes yeah there are people who do that for a living and or burn that shit don't Why care very much it? Take take twenty gallons of fuel up there, pile that shit up, and melt it. I think I don't think there's gonna be an environmental impact. Let's just melt it down right up there. Uh, go up I, next, I just it's close to the you're on Mount Everest. It's gonna make snow. stars instantly. That all right? Why, that's a solid point. Why do we want the bodies removed? Like I, it's kind of a good reminder. Of I was thinking doing, more right? the garbage. <laughs> yeah, a lot it's of, a good just yeah. skulls everywhere as you yeah. get up there. It makes Everest. it not even skulls, just like frozen, dead-eyed, glassy faces. Just. Mm -hmm. Like some guy, like in mid screen. Oh yeah, I guess there wouldn't like, be skulls. I just all... passed the screaming child. We're almost to the top. <laughs> I wonder what their bodies look like up there. I bet they're pretty. I, well they're preserved. very preserved. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think. I think. Yeah. yeah, there wouldn't even be skulls. I don't think. Well, It'd freezer burn, but yeah. yeah, they get that thing where it's like the skin's still there, but it's like mm -hmm. like the it's lips like, are like black and like burned and like freezer burned. It yeah. probably looked like wax, I imagine, but I've never seen a frozen dead body, so. Yeah, I've only seen frozen dead bodies. I went on a big like looking at one right now. YouTube rabbit hole where I just was like reading lists and like reading everyone who's died on Everest mm -hmm. and like the pictures of them. And then some of them are like, that's Orange Belt. <laughs> we don't know who Orange Belt is. And <laughs> no one's ever turned him over. So, so we're never going to mm. know who Orange Belt is. These bodies are not as attractive as I expected. No, no not sexy attractive. at all, huh? Dead. Well, I mean, I'd do them, but. It's hard. Gross. <laughs> It'd be tough. Freezing. <laughs> It'd be one of my tougher, tougher <laughs> <laughs> Like, I, but, dude, that that sub. I've been thinking so much about that sub thing of like, I, I know me that I wouldn't have got on that craft to go no way. fifty no way. feet down. Like, I. And like, I'm not saying that I'm t I'm terrified of like the idea of it. If it was Gabe Newell's one, and I saw that. I'd be like, I, I'm comfortable with this. Oh, there's a there's YouTube videos I can find of this thing doing what we're about to do successfully. Like, okay, let's do that. This That's other thing, track, yeah, yeah. Like, I'd go down a little bit and look, so I don't want to go all the way down. What if this guy had a YouTube speed. video? Like, like he probably did, right? But this wasn't the maiden voyage, voyage, was it? It they had never had a successful voyage this far. I like, thought they've they been going up and down for for years. Not that All down yeah. Reddit said he had done it a few times and they lost communication every time he did it. But I mean, it's the guy on Reddit. I don't know. Yeah, it's also <laughs> it's the guy, on they don't yeah. know. It's the guy yeah. who found the Boston bomber. Well, I would much rather go to like space than than I, all the quarter million dollars that go down the mm -hmm. Titanic is a lot different than what was it know. to, to fly up on the, the Soyuz back in the day? The Russians were charging 20 million, I think. 20, Ooh, 10 20 million something like that yeah to go up in uh there's, the international space to see in space like at least going yeah. down in the ocean you're gonna see 
like all the cool or hopefully you'll see cool deep fish and stuff you don't see otherwise i'm on the other uh, team taylor i think in the ocean your visibility is like six feet even with good light i was gonna say and i think i think space has heck? aliens too man like and aliens in space your there. visibility is like yeah a million miles but yeah. what else can you look at up there aliens the earth you know, look at the other stars planets the, moon, stars. the earth and then you go man <laughs> that's nice what else <laughs> we got up here? And you're like shit <laughs> Three minutes in, and he's asking what else we have. You know? <laughs> I saw this from my parents. You already clogged the shitter. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, the photoshopped pictures NASA posts on Twitter are way better. This looks mm. like shit. Like getting mad that it's, yeah. it's not as good as the photoshopped <laughs> NASA pictures. You brought your binoculars, Woody. Now you can see yeah. 35 times larger than before. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's only a trillion miles away. <laughs> Great. Yeah, you stare into the blackness of space. Wow. Neat. <laughs> I wouldn't say I've almost died exploring, but I did go on a really remote like wilderness hike to this mm -hmm. uh, big, big waterfall and uh, brought my my camera with me like a you know professional deal and um, nearly dropped it. And in my haste to grab the camera because it's fucking expensive, I slipped. The camera's fine, but I slipped and fell and like fell on a rock like just, you know, feet went out from under me, back mm -hmm. hit the rock. And I was like this close from hitting my head. You know, pretty close. Uh, slip fell into the 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 waterfall, like you know, ravine or whatever, and started like floating down the river. And I'm like, oh shit, this is not good. <laughs> uh, but I could, you know, I'm out there alone, nothing out there, um, nobody for miles. So it yeah, you would have been, been on really first bad. 48. Yeah. And after that, I'm like, well, I'm gonna. I shouldn't be alive. Yeah. So I should be afraid. alive. I was that close that if I knocked myself out, could have drowned, you know? Like yeah. that would have been such a thing. terrible way to die. Yeah. What if like, I, so, oh, I I just mean I don't mean like the experience of dying that way. I mean like falling down and dying in such a meaningless way. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't think a lot of us get to have some go out with a bang Marvel movie ending, you know. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. I mean you could range that. You could head over to Ukraine, like like you could you make that happen now. I'm going to build a wildly unsafe submarine when I'm like 80. Mm. <laughs> That's how I'm going to go. It's just what are you going rocket. to be exploring, though? Like, like, what's the gimmick? What are you going down uh, there to look for? I'm going to explore the wreckage of the Titan. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a chain of people dying over and over i'm gonna like, explore wow, the wreckage that explored the titan it's like, it's like but I you're not a billionaire one. so one rowboat we with can't a find, the sub. We to find the sub we sit in to find the sub <laughs> i've got a hefty bag over the windows like it's like someone's car without insurance <laughs> taylor just goes no it's okay i'm the, I'm the sub guy just I'm, the sub sub guy. Guy. I'm the sub I guy i watched a youtube video and this is the strongest pvc they sell <laughs> in the for sale aisle oh, what is <laughs> The, <laughs> how strong does pvc hold up against PVC? i mean it's a strong, couple hundred not pounds enough for, yeah not enough it's, for it's, itself. It's, it's, it's i did some plumbing i mean, I mean water's regularly like 150 psi in places like hmm. so way beyond that. all right i'm gonna guess uh 800 psi for um like one inch pvc 600 is my guess Ooh, 300 to 600 yeah there you go Facts. <laughs> Facts. Now I know. For what about yeah. CPVC? <laughs> yeah, what about it? What are, no, don't look it up. <laughs> it's the same thing, but for heat. I don't know if it's stronger or not. That's what CPVC is, right? Well, we'll for get heat. to the bottom of it. <laughs> All right. I have a yeah, they do that like twist it, bop it, squeeze it game, and they're so goddamn. <laughs> they're, I can do like six levels in. Oh, they're going man. 12 deep. The, like, the <laughs> internet has chimps at third. I'm going to make a sub that you control third? bop it. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Twist it. Sink it. No. Sink it. <laughs> Bump it. Twist it. Pull it. Everybody's just freaking out. Bop it as a summary control is my favorite joke. Doctor. Of the day. Captain, you're sinking too quickly. Pop it. Pull it. Twist it. <laughs> Says the 19 year old passenger on the submersible um, didn't want to go and was oh. terrified. But agreed to do it for his dad on Father's Day. No, oh, dude, ooh. that is that is sincerely heartbreaking. That's that's shitty. Yeah, that's yeah. horrible. Well, yeah. What mm. about that one guy though, whose stepdad was down there, and he was like at Blink One Eighty Two, just like, "Hey, I'm all about the Blink. That's all I know." <laughs> like he, what? He, they were like, "Dude, your father's at the bottom of the Atlantic. Why aren't you there?" <sighs> you know, Blink One Eighty Two has been there for me throughout my life through some hard times. I think the best place for me right now is with the blink. 
<laughs> and it's a picture of him giving the most awkward smile at the concert. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's great. He's just a chubby white guy. It's like one of those full body awkward pictures you, that you took in high school. It's it's great. But yeah, dad's at the bo- at stepdad, I guess, at the bottom of the Atlantic. Well, and why was there ever like... Why did everybody agree to pretend these people have been alive this long? Like I thought these that people are, have obviously been dead for days. Uh, Taylor, I wasn't pretending. I I, I, I heard the they... tapping stories and believed yeah. it, and I I definitely the kid, yeah the tapping thing like I, I don't get it, but like turns out it was never true. There's probably some dolphin clicking moment. Yeah, it's some something happening in the sea. Sound carries so far in, in water and all that, like. Who you know knows? how they detected it, but it like the fact the that like I, all all I had to do is watch that one video of the dude talking about it, where he's like, "So the window is rated for fifteen hundred meters," and it's like, "And they were at ten thousand. It's like, oh, they're dead. Like they yeah. they're so far past dead. See, they were. But, eaten but you're assuming already. that that was the problem when it's been down there many times before, and that window that held far. up. Yeah, it's yeah. They've made the trip before with that window, and it's been fine. The the prop it could have easily been like their Bluetooth quit working and we're out of contact and they, they can't like pop their ballast and, and surface or that they got caught in an under their, their fans turned off and the current pulled them down. And now they're at the surface three miles away in their watercolor you know, boat. The thing is they <laughs> locked he was, in there. He was lying about having done that, like all the way down by the Titanic before they had never done that. Like, are you sure? It, Cause I've seen yes. videos of them down there. Who is that? I'm, who's, who's down there? Not in that bullshit little thing. They're in a real awesome submarine when they're down there, and it's got arms and it's it's uh, Gabe Newell's in it. Guys, just wait for the Netflix adaptation. It's You're right. Happen. Yes. You're right. It'll tell us everything we need to know. <laughs> <laughs>